ABC News, good evening. I'm Christian Silva. The US has restricted travel for its embassy personnel in Israel amid continuing fears that Iran may it may retaliate for the destruction of its consulate in Damascus. The BBC's James Landon is in Jerusalem. Israel today is very much in a holding pattern. Iran has promised to retaliate for the attack on the Iranian consulate in Damascus, the Syrian capital, last week. And as a result of that, there are now serious concerns, particularly in the United States, that Iran is serious when it says it will retaliate. And so the Americans and the Israelis are doing everything they can to try to deter that attack. There have been private diplomatic signals sent by the Americans through their allies in the Gulf to Tehran to say, look, there must be restraint. Samantha Murphy's husband has recalled the moment he realised his wife could be missing. The mother disappeared on her regular morning run in regional Victoria two months ago. Police believe she was murdered and have charged a man over her death, although her body hasn't been found. Miss Murphy's husband Mick has told Channel 9 he tried calling his wife on the 4th of February but wasn't able to get through. I give her a call and um, and there was no answer on her phone, went straight to message bank and that's when I thought, that's odd, that's very odd because she has her phone and her watch fully charged before she leaves. Energy experts have defended the long-term costs of renewables amid warnings by energy companies that consumers will be receiving larger bills. Speaking at the National Press Club, CEO of Alinta Energy, Jeff Dimery, said Australians will have to pay more for energy in the future as coal-fired power is phased out and replaced by renewable sources. Associate Professor Roger Dargaville from Monash University says renewable energy is still cheaper in the long term. It's, it's an obvious point that wind and solar doesn't produce power when the wind isn't blowing or the sun isn't shining. So you need additional services like batteries, pumped hydro storage to keep the system going. And so they come with additional costs. But when you add them in, renewables are still cheaper than fossil fuels moving forward. A New South Wales man charged over the fatal shooting of gangland figure Gavin Preston has been remanded in custody. Jesse Thompson reports. Ravi Zahab was escorted off a Qantas flight in handcuffs under police guard at Melbourne's Tullamarine Airport after homicide squad detectives successfully applied to extradite him from New South Wales. The 24-year-old from Sydney southwest is the second man charged with murder over the shooting, which unfolded in broad daylight outside a cafe in Melbourne's northwest last September. In court, Mr Zahab's Sydney-based solicitor appeared by video link. There was no application for bail. The matter will return to court next month. A council in Melbourne South East is calling for more police resources to address community safety. The mayor of the Bayside City Council is asking for the state government's help following burglaries and home invasions in the local community. James Newbury, James Newbury is the Liberal member for Brighton. He's told ABC Radio Melbourne numbers in the police force need to be bolstered. This isn't about taking things away from anybody. It's about growing the pie. I mean, Victoria is getting bigger, but the police force is getting smaller. We need a bigger police force. There's no doubt about that. We don't need to be shrinking it. The White House has commented on the death of O.J. Simpson, calling for people to respect his family's privacy. O.J. Simpson has died of prostate cancer with his death-making news around the world and generating conversation surrounding the trial that came to define his life. White House spokesperson Corinne Jean-Pierre says the administration's thoughts are with his family. I'll say this, our thoughts are with, uh, are with his families during this difficult time, obviously with his family and loved ones. Uh, and I'll say this, I know that they have asked for some privacy, uh, and so we're going to respect that. I'll just leave it there. Australian middle distance runner Peter Boll has won through to the semi-finals of the 800 metres at the National Championships in Adelaide. The Tokyo Olympian is a three-time national title winner and will race in the semis tomorrow. To the weather now, across the state, morning fog tomorrow in the south, dry and sunny in the north. In Melbourne, partly cloudy tomorrow with a slight chance of a shower and a top of 19. Similar on Sunday with a top of 20, Monday partly cloudy and 21. Tuesday showers and 19, Wednesday a possible shower and 18 degrees. You're listening to ABC News. Here's my top footy tip for the season. You can get your games live and ad-free on the ABC Listener. That's 
I know, right? AFL, NRL, men's, women's. Whatever footy you're after, we've got you covered. It's like the he does, he the Every goal, try, mark and tackle. Called by ABC Sports expert commentary team. How did he do it? Game, bingo. This season on the home of 100% pure footy. The ABC Listen app. We begin this broadcast by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which this match will be played today and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. We extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples listening. The moment of truth has arrived. Do you think you have anything other than a split second in this game right now? You're kidding yourself. It's all to play for. Every single bloke has stood up. They are leaving nothing out there. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else on earth. Welcome to ABC Sports coverage of the 2024 AFL Premiership season. From 55, side bottom, launches, go! The Craze Magpies are on top of the AFL world. They win a spellbinding game of footy. Come on, what a premise. This is ABC Sport. The umpire holds the footy up. You want your very best players having the ball in the moments that matter. Take your moment. This is that moment. Something's in the air. Listen to the roar. Feel a different energy. The pressure's certainly gone up. Feel it on your skin. Punches the air with the right hand. Feel the electricity. That's why we love football. Brilliant to watch. Stand by. The arms are outstretched as he pumps his chest out. Fill your lungs, fill your lungs. Are you ready for it? Where AFL Premiership season. From outside 50, goes bang with everything he's got. Former bad boy looking to redeem himself with kicks like that. And Gordon can finish from 35. Oh, Harold. It's there. Superb finish. What a hanger. He joins the party. Walks through the goal. Oh, what a moment. Brilliant, wasn't it? There's nothing this man can't do. Rioli with some magic. The check side finish. He seizes the moment. Stolen. Snapped it over his shoulder. He's kicked an absolute ripper. Spins around and buries it. Lightning speed, Bobby Hill. He's Bobby Thrill. This is just football at its best. Weaves around on the planet and gets a brilliant goal. Gathers, snaps, to bring the house down. Time to steady and pull the trigger. Right foot drop punt is pure. We're not done yet. The 2024 AFL Premiership season on radio. Sport Digital. And take us with you on the ABC listener. Just look for the AFL button. Something big is coming, I know. Friday night footy it brings us to a pair of two and two teams. The feeling that the Western Bulldogs are better than their record suggests, while for Essendon their edge was blunted against Port Adelaide last Friday night in Gather Round. It looks like regression. Are they still trending in the right direction? That is the question ahead of us tonight. The Bulldogs and the Bombers under the Friday night lights in round five. And is so often the case, as much as it will be meritorious for the winner, for the loser, it feels like it's going to be a pretty hot weekend into Monday. So a heap at stake early in the young season. I saw Matt Nabel on Fox Footy during the week describe this as the round after the one before, which feels a little bit like that with Gather Round behind us. We're back in our usual states for uh, for a round of footy to be played across the country this weekend. It's nice to have you with us. My name's Corbin Middlemass. The whole gang's here to call the footy on Friday night. Uh, Kelly Underwood is alongside me, as always, for Friday Night Footy. Hello, Kel. Hi, Corbin. Hangover round, I think we should call it, after <laughs> Gather Round, because um, driving in here this evening in Melbourne, first Friday night with daylight savings, so it's, um, well, the daylight savings for winter. So it's dark already. It's suddenly turned a bit cold. Don't know about you, but uh, time to get the Ugg boots out of the wardrobe this week. And for those that are home, just, you know, throw the put the throw rug over you on the couch, get the glass of red wine. I think some of us behind us had a few glasses of red wine in Adelaide last week and uh, we're back in Melbourne. So um, after the celebrating of Adelaide, it feels like this is genuine footy. It's time to get real now. Absolutely it is. Uh, our usual experts are here. We'll get to one of them in just a moment. He's got the, a new accolade to add to his list of I accomplishments. Know, I know what's... I picked what's new about him as well, so I know what you're talking about. Okay. Yep. I'm, like, what, I'm on to it. Because he's had a haircut. Yes, he's had a haircut. 
Oh. Did have a little trim? Yes. Let's. So something must have happened to him during the work. What, what? <laughs> I don't. I don't. Th- I've ne- in two years, I've never known him to have a haircut. He looks different. And sh- and get the record books out. Yeah. So first of all, the coaching icon Mick Moldhouse is here. The game's record holder. Hello, Mick. Good day, Corby, Kel, Lingy. Little Benny behind me. I'm assuming you're talking about Ben having those red wines. So, uh... <laughs> no, I was looking straight at you, young man. No, I, well, I don't mind a South the same drop. Yeah, I know. But, That's but why I said it. Only this one is very nice. Two is okay. Third, you it's just might as well drink vinegar. So just stop at the second. And how about this man? A All Australian best winner, three time Premiership player, Premiership captain, 245 games in his 12 seasons at Geelong. He's already a Club Hall of Famer. He is now. Being elevated to legend status as just the 28th player in the history of this football club, which joined the competition as the inaugural team way back in 1897. He is going to be a club legend of the Cats. Our very own Cameron Ling. Woo! Congratulations, Hello. Linging. Well Thank done, you. Lingy. Thank you, team. I uh, appreciate that. I, I'm blushing a little bit. Uh, I'm absolutely honoured. I, I found out last weekend that um, um, Steve Hocking surprised me with it. And he got me, too. He got me. <laughs> He's saying all these nice things about me. And I thought, where's this going? It's nowhere near my birthday. Uh, there's nothing else I can possibly think of. And then he laid that on me that I would be at the, uh, the Hall of Fame dinner in June. Um, I would be elevated to legend status of the club that I have barracked for since I was a little kid. I've been a member of since I think I was about five or six years of age and then um, was fortunate enough to play with. Uh, I got quite emotional, Corbs, uh, and Hawk, Hawk realised he'd got me. He said, told me this afterwards. He said, I, I knew I got you because you hugged me twice. <laughs> a, a double hug from you, Lee, that means something. So, oh, <laughs> but, so. um, it was uh, amazing, and um, I'm so thankful. I'm also, I, I went through some of the names that are in there, and I can't believe, and I'm almost a little bit humbled and embarrassed to be alongside some of those names that... They're the names I grew up with, and and Dad would tell stories of Polly Farmer and Billy Goggin, and we knew the legend of Bobby Davis and Reg Hickey, and and then I watched you know Gary Ablett Senior and Gary Hocking play throughout my um, childhood years. Yeah. To be even mentioned with that group um, is ridiculous <laughs> and incredible as well. So. Thank you to the footy club for that. It, it won't at all look out of place, Lingy. Uh, our, our utmost sincerity, so you absolutely deserve Congratulations. it. Congratulations. So when is it and how many tickets do you get? Uh, June 22nd. Mm. Uh, Mum and Dad are going to be away on a holiday. Oh, oh. come on, <laughs> Mum and Dad. And Dad's already rang me. He said, right, oh, what do I need to know? How do we get back? Oh, great. So they're, they're working that out. I think they were very, very chuffed. So it'll all happen in June. and we can, You can all pump me up again in June, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Let's get on to a good game of footy tonight. I'm getting all embarrassed now. Mix. But that he's, he's, he's said that he's hugged Stephen Hawking twice. He hugged Dane Swan 37 times in the <laughs> Grand Final. So, I mean, Hawking's got a bit to go before he... <laughs> Uh, It's great to have you both with us on Friday night. Uh, Tim Hodges is with us, standing by uh, down on the boundary as well. Uh, The Western Bulldogs play Essendon. That's the game in front of us. We're one game into round five already with the Brisbane Lions causing an upset last night. It's a big game for both these teams tonight. The Western Bulldogs selection is always a a little bit of an oddity with the Bulldogs. The VFL was on beforehand. Footscray won that. It was a VFL team which included the likes of Rory Lobb, Caleb Daniel, the All-Australian from 2020, Premiership player James Harms, Ryan Gardner, Alex Keith both played, Caleb Poulter all in the twos. And when the team sheets dropped, Bailey Dale, the All-Australian from 2021, has been named as the tactical sub. So there's no late change for the Dogs. Dale is the sub. And for the Bombers, no late change there. Nick Hind is their sub. So we know that he's left field, Luke Beveridge, and he likes to think outside the box. But can, can you make any... I mean, I was shocked... First of all, Caleb Daniel, we sort of saw the writing on the wall a little bit. He's only 27. He's All-Australian and he's a reigning best and fairest. He's a premiership winner. Uh, I think he's in the leadership group. He's absolutely idolised there. And he's been the sub a couple of times. He was on the outer in a couple of the practice games. And now he's been dropped. So he's reigning best and fairest? Not reigning. No, no, no. He was best and fairest winner. Yeah. Back in 2020, I think it might have been. Yeah. 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 Bailey Dale, who has an incredible record at yeah. this stadium. Yeah. He's a beautiful kick of the footy, has been, terrific player. Has yeah. been named as the sub. Can either of you yeah, make any I, sense of this? Yeah, I can. I can because you, you, the question I would ask of everyone in here would say, where were they going given that they missed the eight last year? OK, it was on the death. It was last game, I think it was. That playing group, was that going to get them into the, into the eight and press for the four. Now, 
Luke Beveridge is a bit different. He's probably looked at the side and thought, some of these players, I'm going to add on to them. Do we need more speed? Do we need whatever? I, I, I'm surprised. I've got to say, there's a couple in there that I, I am absolutely staggered. But but having coached, you know that you, well, you'd like to think you know more about your team than the, what those are from the outside looking in. And, and he sees things the way he wants them to end up, not be. Mm. And that's every coach wants that. You want to be, this is where you want to be. And, uh, or end up, rather. So we look at it and go, Daniel, I mean, he's just such a beautiful exponent. When, when they moved him off the half-back line, I thought he's going in the middle. That's when I reckon he started to become a, 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 a sort of like a pea shooter. Whereas on the half-back line, he set a lot more play up. And, they, and yet they took him away from that role. Yeah. And they, they, then you take Dale away from that role, all of a sudden you've lost your two driving forces on the half-back line. But he must have something in mind what he want, where he wants to see the side end up. Well, Mick, you understand this better than all of us. Is this the type of decision that has to be a club-wide decision? Does Luke Beveridge make this by himself? Or is this Luke Beveridge has sold it to CEO, board, whoever, um, that this is the direction? Because Bailey Dale, Caleb Daniel, and we've already seen Jack McRae um, be out of, of favour a little bit. Yep. Make them a better team now. But I agree with you. It's like they've said, we can get to maybe seventh with this team. We need to come up with a way that we can get back to the very, very top. Is that something that he has to sell to... Well, Matty Egan, right? remember Matty Egan's come in as the GM general of GM of football. Yeah. So it sort of distanced him from Chris Grant because of rumours of a, of a rift between the two of them. Well, at the end of, 90, at the end of 2003, we went 202, 203, and I went to the board and said, this, look, look, fair thing, the side to get there was unbelievable, really, because I don't think we were, we were anywhere near as yep. good as Brisbane, certainly 02. Although we did beat him in 03 in the fi- one of the finals. And I went to the board, uh, Eddie in particular, and said, I'm going to have to cut really deep here. Mm. And, and we may have to start again. This might be our second, a part of a second side. And he said, fine. He said, that's what you've got to do. And after we lost a few games, he called me and said, you sure? But we did uh, tumble very quickly to, to near the bottom for two seasons because I knew what I wanted to keep. Yep. And, I, and, I, and Derek Hine was on then, and I, and I said, Derek, this is what we need. And he said, I can reckon I can supply this to you. There's, there's this draft that will present some of the mids. This next draft that will present some of the tools. As long as we don't sell, you know, sell it, sell it. No. And I'm, I'm all, I was all for the kids yeah. going through. So that, and, and, and I love coaching kids through. And even when I look at, say, the 2010 Premiership side, we took uh, seven kids, we drafted seven kids, five, I think, eight kids, I think six mm. of them played in the grand final, and two missed, one went back to Ireland, the other one dislocated the shoulder and missed out. So yeah. it was a great selection. That's the way you've got to go. But the, the problem is, it, is, though, surely, that the coach and the list boss, whether everybody's lockstep with this, where if, if Beveridge changes his mind in a hurry, which it looks like he's done here on a couple of the players, then all of a sudden they got two million bucks running around in the VFL. They got yeah. huge cap space tied up in the likes of Lob and Daniel and McRae, who's in tonight but hasn't always been in. Dale, who's the sub, and all of a sudden you've got, you know, in a salary cap league where you've only got so much resources, mm. you've got a heap of it playing too. I yeah. think I think Lob was there as as the stopgap fill for Sam Darcy to come through, Certainly. who's had who's had terrible injuries last year, mm. and and it, his future is so bright. Arguably, as we went to some of the footy boys during the week, saying it's a really interesting debate, which is for another time. But the, who's going to be better? The, the King Twins or Sam Darcy's watching mm. the three of them develop many believe Sam Darcy would be but you're right because is this a decision that should have been made over summer when you've got three All-Australians out of favour in McRae Daniel and not out of favour Bailey Dale but starting as the sub it's just a it feels like a complete U-turn well, yeah, has, very late U-turn it, a yeah. late one, but it has to be I, I believe it has to have been a possible plan and a unified decision because this type of U-turn as you're discussing makes it harder for them to win right now in the absolute now but probably possibly makes them better in the long term but you've got to be able to sell that vision and that time frame to Marcus Bontempelli and Tom Liberatore and these players so Bont's 28 Libba's 31 they their performance last week was lights out unbelievable against Geelong. Nearly single-handedly with Adam Trelaw dragged them over the line. So they need to be convinced as well. They need to believe that, OK, I'll keep playing at this level, at this incredible level, and you're going to make sure that this time frame matches with us still playing and playing good football, 
and these young guys being ready. Otherwise, why not Bailey Dale, Caleb Daniel, Jack McRae? Play them back where we were a chance in the last few years. They're two and two, the Bulldogs. have got a pair of wins against the two coasters, the Gold and the West Coast, uh, and their losses have come against Melbourne and Geelong, which is the pointy end of the competition. So I, I get the optimism around them. They, it feels like the footy world thinks they're slightly better than two and two. They get a chance to try and prove it tonight. There's no late change. Bailey Dale, the sub for the Bulldogs. And for the Bombers, it's Nick Hind, Corbin Middlemouse, Kelly Underwood, Mick Moldhouse, Cameron Ling and Tim Hodges with you for Friday Night Footy on ABC Sport. The Essendon side of things. It feels like there's one of three categories have been looked at this week and it feels like everyone's sort of looked at one different part. I've got it down to the three C's. Is it uh, the cattle? Is it the culture? Or is it the coaching? So it, and it feels like everybody's looked at said, hey, it's the culture at Essendon, that's the problem. It's the players that they've got at Essendon and the recruiting hasn't been good enough or it's the way that they're coached. I'm sure it's an element of all three, but is there one area in particular, Mick and Lingy, that you guys look at and you think that's what's wrong with the Bombers? It's always an element of all three, but I'm going to remove the... I, I don't believe it's coaching. No. Um, I, I'm not in that camp at all. You know, there's always half a percent that might be gained in, in one of the three areas, but that one's the least of the ones. The other two are the big questions for me. Now, they need to break out of um, everything that's happened, um, and it has been a tumultuous roller coaster ride since um, they were that incredible team in 2000 and um, they could just beat anyone who showed up against them. Seems like a lifetime ago, was, doesn't it, Cool. I was about to say, I could take a little side street here. I <laughs> flicked on Fox footy today and they were playing the, the great clashes of the two teams from years past and they had the round 21-2000 game on, which is the only one Essendon oh, yes. lost in that a magical year. And just to be able to watch the, the commentary the certain bumps, the way that we spoke about it in terms of, you know, the tribunal stuff compared to today's standards, and then the tactics in the game as well, which is amazing how much it's changed in yeah. 24 yeah. years. Like, Essendon, I think, are five points up with two minutes to go, and Dustin Fletcher kicks the ball straight down the pipe to centre-half back, and you think, why isn't he going wide to the boundary line? Yeah. Where yeah. Like, Just well, milking the clock. It's amazing how much it's changed in, in a quarter of a century. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mind you, I reckon he's, that, that would... That, I think he must have backed himself because I think more so than because your tactics others, are. Others might not do it. Fletch could do it. There's, yeah. only, one, there's only one one true friend on the on, on the football field. That's the boundary line. Yes. <laughs> but to answer your question, the C yeah. at the moment, watching and you and I were there last Friday night, and just they were so disappointing. They were they were horrible. Is the C for cattle? Uh, that that. I think they've got. I think they've drafted well in recent years. I think they have some youth coming through. Yep, yep. Um, the time that midfield though, leave out Zach Merritt, who again was brilliant and, and mm. tried his guts out. It got slaughtered, Fish, yeah. slaughtered. So are you, you know, and and key forwards, key backs, along with them, your midfield is where you spend your big money. Have you allocated just too much money, too many resources to a midfield? that is not going to be able to compete with the, well, yeah. like last week, the Rosie Horn francis Butters combo of so, Willem Drew. And, and Jake Noll wrote about that, the chief footy writer at The Age. To properly review an underwhelming performance, Scott could do worse than invite Essendon's recruiting department into the room and pose the question of where they might locate the players of the calibre of Rosie Horn francis <laughs> and Butters. Right. Which, uh, yeah, I mean, Essendon have, have got more first-round picks than any other team in the league yeah. in the way that sits at the moment. They've got 12 first-rounders, and they've had a... a a, a stack of them recently. I see Archie Perkins yep. can jump into that. Yeah. That not that trio is pretty special, mind yeah. you. But Archie Perkins has the capability to get there. So, so that's it. But that's two, yeah. three years off. I think I said Zach first, Merritt is. Yeah. I think that, I said first rounders. By the way, top ten picks. Top they have ten, twelve okay. top teners. Oh, top teners. Yeah. And how many tonight? And how many that, out there tonight? They haven't had much luck. Um, with injuries, no, the had, young ones, have they? No, but you could also go back to uh, a couple of years ago, they made a decision, and I don't know, I, I, I've got to get myself in trouble here, but they made a decision that they were going to get a bloke who'd been at Hawthorne, because Hawthorne was successful, so we're going to get him. I don't know whether he had a degree in his in his um, makeup. He ended up, um, and, and it's not solely one person's fault, but they just had a absolutely, they were massacred on the tra track, dropping over like flies, got on the match, dropping over. They couldn't put they couldn't. They'll be lucky to put seventy percent of their best side on the ground. So, and that's been consistent. So, so you know, is it is it the ground out there? Is it their, the way they train out there? Is it who's running the, the thing? So, all those questions should be asked. But again, look, I'm, I'm a I'm a Goldstein fan. I think he's fantastic, and, and 
for a side that's sitting second or third on the ladder and you just need a backup ruckman, I'd go, yeah, we'll do that. If I was Essendon, I'd be looking at someone who's 19 or 20, throw him in every now and again, and bring him through, as opposed to a 33-year-old or 34-year-old ruckman. I, I just, I, I don't get, they're, they're, they're not, we can't see them playing off, so so why is he there? Uh, or, or be the fact that he's a he's a fantastic, you know, he's a yeah. good good player. And Nick Bryan, who's their young developing ruck, played in the twos. Yeah, there you go. So I just counted six top ten picks, but one of them is Jai Caldwell, who was pick 11 2018. Well, that's, yeah. that's good enough, though. Yeah. yeah. So there's so no... six yeah. top 11 picks so playing per- tonight. Perkins, Reed, Sardis, Caddy all not playing. So Sardis was held over as the emergency. Caddy played in the VFL. Yeah. Uh, Reed and Perkins are injured, and Reed, unfortunately, has been injured most of the time he's been there. Yeah. That's, that's the other trouble. You, you can pick them, but if they're not... Yep. If they, if they can't play or they can't get consistent games in... So Nick Cox is in his fourth season... And he's, this is game number 38 tonight. Yeah. Harry Jones has been the same. Zach Reed, we, we've barely seen him at all. So uh, you're not even getting, you know, four seasons in and you've got 65 games into one or, one or yeah. two of them. Too many of their group players aren't playing great football consistently. You can hear the beat change in the background. The Western Bulldogs are about to burst through the banner, led out by their captain, Marcus Bontempelli, the man in the conversation for the greatest Bulldog of all time. They've got a certain Mr. Football as part of their history. He might be Master Football as the younger guy that's uh, on his way through, Marcus Bontempelli, five times the best and fairest winner. Only Scott West and Gary Dempsey have won more best and fairest in the history of the Western Bulldogs slash Footscray Football Club. And Bontempelli again leads his team out tonight. Bailey Dale is going to start as their tactical sub. Oh, Dougie Hawkins will be up there. Yep. I don't know how many he had, but he's did his knee at a young age. But just when he was absolutely well in his prime. So the best best player I've seen go around for a long time is Doug Hawkins. Yeah, Marcus Bontepelli is going to have a fair shout, shout out for that one. Come, Absol- come the end of his career. No, no, I agree with it now. Right now, yeah. he, he's the best Amazing. in the league at the moment. Last week, last week going along to the Geelong Bulldogs game, we'd just done the Port Adelaide Essendon one. I thought, oh, hang on a second. Has Connor Rosie just snuck past and become the best? You know, Ooh. recency bias. And then I had a <laughs> nice little reminder from Marcus yeah. Bontepelli just to tone it down a little bit. Uh, just before the Bombers make their way out last night, the Brisbane Lions, uh, right back in the season, they get themselves to two and three, taking down the Red Hot Demons last night at the MCG. They won by 22 points. They really should have won by a lot more. They were in total control of that game. The talking point out of it has been the uh, Noah Answorth sort of mocking of Harrison Petty, and this has become a really bitter rivalry where Harrison Petty was in tears after an on-field incident a few years back. Dane Zorko apologised at the time, and yet there's been two episodes since, one by Link McCarthy, one now by Noah Answorth, where they have, uh, yeah, quite obviously, and through their actions, made fun of Harrison Petty yeah. on-field. Dane Zorko was with us last night on ABC Sport. This is what he had to say about the incident in the aftermath. And Noah Answorth, late in the game, seemed to sort of make a, a crying gesture towards Harrison Petty. I don't know if you saw that. Um, obviously, there's been a rivalry between the two clubs. Is that a statement in which you're comfortable with a, a teammate making on the ground? Oh, I, I wasn't aware he did it. Uh, I'll probably go and have a word to him. Yeah, that's obviously not the way we want to win. But, um, yeah, obviously, heat of the moment, stuff happens. But um, I'm sure he would have fixed it up after the game. That's Matt Clinch with, uh, with Noah Answorth last night on ABC Sport. So the word from the AFL today is that they have informally cautioned Noah Answorth for it. Informally? What, what? I've heard that before. What does that mean, informally? Basically says, hey, we don't think it's a great look. Well, there's not a lot else they can do. No. I'm, not, I'm not usually one to I defend agree. them. But... Well, well, why get involved? Yeah, true. true. Get involved or don't he, get involved. He shouldn't have done it. Do you was ordinary? Is it that shot? <laughs> get on with winning the game, playing good footy. Oh. Stop the rubbing in people's noses in things. Just... Yeah. Charlie Cameron. He'll come back and bite him. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie Cameron was given a one-match ban for his tackle on Jake Lever. So it feels like we've had a few rough conduct tackles slip by, including one involving Toby Green last week. Uh, but he'll have a, a case to answer. So careless, medium and high. He's been offered one game. If he, if he accepts it, he will miss the clash with Geelong next weekend. So that's uh, Charlie Cameron. Uh, and on the injury front, it's been a savage day across the competition. Christian Salem at least four weeks with a right hamstring. Clayton Oliver had surgery on a finger, so he's going to miss. Uh, there's 12 days, though, until they next play, which is the Anzac Eve match, so the bye comes at a good time for him. And Tim Taranto's undergone surgery for a wrist fracture, so he won't be in Perth joins the mounting injury list at Richmond. You can hear the Bombers are out on the ground. The full preview with Mick and Lingy's coming up next on ABC Sport ahead of the Bulldogs and the Bombers.
Do you often feel overwhelmed by the daily news cycle? Too many headlines with too little context? Well, join me, Sam Hawley, for ABC News Daily. You know, there's middlemen involved and you have to make sure that the farmers are getting a good deal. A podcast that walks you through one story per episode to help you with a deeper understanding of the issues affecting your world. All delivered in a comprehensive yet easy to digest 15 minutes. So join me for ABC News Daily. Hear it now on the ABC Listen app. ABC Sport. Welcome to ABC Sports coverage of the 2024 AFL Premiership season. Footy's biggest weekly stage. Friday night footy. Footy back now. Oh, footy back, baby. <laughs> Pulls the trigger on goal and goes bang. Because here it comes, here it comes. This is ABC Sports coverage of the AFL. On ABC Radio. ABC Sport Digital. And on the ABC Listen app. Something big is coming, I know. The Friday Night Lights burn bright this evening. The roof is on at Docklands. The Western Bulldogs and Essendon, a pair of two and two teams. And it's often the case on Friday night. It would be nice to win, but you better not lose. Feels like the winner is going to be in the scope of the AFL media tonight. The Bulldogs two and two. They have a couple of losses to Melbourne and also to Geelong, which are high quality opposition early in the new season. While Essendon mixed results. We heard all about the edge on the back of their victory here at Docklands a fortnight ago. They undid some of their hard work, though, with the trip to Adelaide for Gather Round, a heavy loss to the power last Friday night. My name's Corbin Middlemass. Kelly Underwood's here to call the footy with me. Tim Hodges between the benches, standing by. And our all-star expert team in the second row, the soon-to-be legend of the Geelong Hall of Fame, Cameron Ling, and the coaching icon himself, Mick Moldhouse. We want to hear from you tonight on 0437 774 774. This is Friday Night Footy on ABC Sport. There are no late changes. Bailey Dale is the sub for the Western Bulldogs for 2021 All-Australian, while Caleb Daniel had a run around in the Magoos earlier. And Nick Holland is going to be the sub for the Bombers. We're ready to go. Cameron Ling and Mick Moldhouse. We're about eight minutes away from the bounce. Ling, I'm just going through the leading goal scorers for the Dogs. Where's Norton? Which one? Where, how high up would he be? No, he wouldn't. He's not in the top three. Not in the top five. Not in the top five. Not in the top okay. five. There's there's a key forward. He's gone one two one zero. So he's got four. So someone's kicked more points than him. So that's Riley West has kicked more points. So otherwise he'd be in there. So he's equal. Let's say sixth. Now. You're going to start dropping bikes. I, I, I'm not suggesting. I think it was uh, Luke Beveridge, that is, said this morning, I know he's one of their best players. Play him, play him further up the ground. Play him away where, where he can actually have just a little bit more freedom and let him use his stamina, which he's got. Let him use his pace, which he's got. Let him use his marking power. Let him see, take some wh- marks on the wing where he can get a little bit of freedom and kick the ball into the forward line as opposed to be there. Because at the moment... He doesn't even register in the top five goal kickers, and we're already. I know Melbourne have played six games, but this is the yeah. fourth game for the Dogs or fifth game. Ch- Champion data also produces stat uh, targets inside fifty, so it shows you yeah. how often the players target certain guys. Jamara Yugo Hagen's the most this year with yeah. twenty-seven. The next most drops right off. Cody Waitman eleven. Riley West ten. There you go. Aaron Norton ten. Yeah. So he's been targeted inside fifty as much as Riley West and. Jamari Eaglehagen was the threat last week, last Saturday night, where he, he cleared, they want to kick it to him, and he looked more likely than anyone. And Cody Waitman, clever, small forward, decent in the air, so he can be dangerous. Um, I, I'm with you. Like, play him down back. Even, even play him down back for a few games just to get some, back. some confidence into his game. Yeah. Take a couple of intercept marks, feel the ball in his hands a little bit more, yep. and then you can still throw him forward. It's not... You don't, you don't have to say, OK, from now on, he's a backman, full stop. It can be a way of just building a little bit back. The, the backman, naturally, with sometimes, occasionally, you know, the, the switch kick or the sideways kick just to control some tempo, that feel of that Sharon hitting your fingers yep. uh, 15, 18, maybe 20 times just feels so much better than when you're competing as a forward and you're touching it Five times, and you're the, the hunter. Yeah, the hunter, hunter. Now, my next thing is, Lingy, and I'll throw to you again because this is your cup of tea. Clearances, top three clear, clearing players have, have got 88 for the dogs. Yep. The top so, so three, one and two are pretty comfortable. <laughs> yeah, and the top, yeah, the top <laughs> two, uh, top three for the, the bombers, 64. So there's a, there's 20 odd there. 
in the four games we played. OK, that's not a great sample, but you win and lose games by... I know Geelong, they say, you know, Geelong have been clearing the football, but when they do clear the football, they're forwards mark it and kick goals. That can't be said about Essendon, because they're not marking every going forward, and, and when it goes back, they're actually getting marked upon. So th- th- this could be critical tonight. I, I th- watching the two teams last week, this isn't even a contest tonight. In the they're, middle? Well, across the whole ground, really. The, the Bulldogs were coming. They were storming over Geelong last week, and Geelong just held on. Essendon were hopeless. Now, I'm not expecting that tonight. I'm expecting some sort of response from the Bombers. They have to. They, yeah. they cannot deliver what they delivered last week again. I, I, you, Corbs, you mentioned the fact that the Bombers spoke about the edge and all that. That has blown up in their face massively, oh. hasn't it? Well, po- post that, it was yeah. Peter Wright's suspension. That's not what the edge is. Yeah. And then what they served up last week, they became the butt of everyone's jokes. And surely when you put something out there publicly like that, you got to live it. Yes. you got to live it. Like, yeah, that they fell well short of, of their own expectations last week. And the other thing is that things that have never been the issue for Essendon in the past like ball movement, all of a sudden. That was just paralysis last week. They couldn't move the ball from... They couldn't stop ball movement previously, but they can't do that at the moment, and they also can't move the ball themselves. Ken Hinckley basically went man-to-man yesterday, yep. and you guys, uh, last Friday, and you commented on that, Lingy, working that uh, that call for us. Uh, and basically, after quarter time, just put the clamps on them. They couldn't get the ball at, from defensive 50 up front. And then well, it was turnover, bang, going back the other way with zero chasing, mind yeah. you. Um, that, that could be the test, though, Lingy, too, to see whether... Has Luke Beveridge looked at that and thought this is going to be the way we'll play against yeah. them as well? Because they play a similar role. I, they, they'd have that up their sleeve, wouldn't they? They back oh, in as they do back in their system, but then knowing they could go to that. Um, you, you look at the Western Bulldogs go down last week; they lose that game. But their best players played well, yeah. played well, and and yes, they're well. I thought Sam Darcy was excellent, but some of their younger players, uh, just a little bit inexperienced, maybe got caught out. Uh, a bit. I think Riley Sanders went the wrong way at one stage. That's yes. fine. That's that's youth. That's. I mean, I kicked the ball out in the full from zero metres out in my second game. You do you do that. Nobody ever brings that up, do they? No, never, yeah, so. never. Whereas the Bombers, what I was most critical of last week, again, let's just park Zach Merritt because um, he was wonderful. It was their best players who let them down. So, their so-called best players yeah. that let them down last week. I thought Darcy Parrish was horribly beaten. I thought Andy McGrath was really disappointing yeah. where I want him to take that leap as a, a former number one pick. He's played 138 games now. And generally pretty honest. Yeah. Generally and pretty did, honest. You want an honest performance. That, those guys, Jake Stringer started the game really well but then fell completely away. Their best players let them down, whereas the Dogs, their best players still delivered and they're going to get some cameos and some improvement from the youth. So going into tonight, again, I'm expecting more of a contest. But I know which team I'm drawing the form line through and saying I like the Dogs far more than the Bombers coming into tonight's game. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with that. Essendon, I, I feel for Brad. He's, you know, he's. I, you know, we know all about how he played his football, and and, you, and he wants them to play in his image, but they're just not. I don't know if they're equipped. Tim Hodges is with us again tonight between the benches. Uh, Hodgie, great to have you with us as always on a Friday night. Uh, hello, guys. Nice to be with you. Uh, a win to start the night for Zach Merritt, the Essendon captain, um, winning the toss. The Bombers will kick to the right of screen to the river end. Uh, the roof is shut here at the Docklands. Last time I was here, guys, was a fortnight ago. It was 30 degrees on Good Friday, a low of 12 tonight. So it is pretty chilly. Uh, and, and I tell you what, there are a lot of dew already on the field, so it will be slippery as we've seen the VFL match, which was before this game, and already in the warm-up, so the long stops will be required out there. Uh, the crowd is really good, very close to a sellout. Only some standing room tickets remain for this game. The Dogs are expecting a crowd between 43 and 45,000. The top deck very full already, so well on the way to that figure. Just repeating, no late changes. The sub, which is the surprise for the Dogs, Bailey Dale. For the Bombers, it's Nick Hind. Both clubs two and two. You just feel you don't want to be losing tonight. Uh, it's going to be some sort of savage fallout for whoever doesn't get the chocolates. Good calling. Thanks, Hodgie. Stringer starting on the bench for the Bombers. Oh, hence his old team. He's one of uh, five premiership players out there for the Western Bulldogs. Four still in doggies colours in Bolton Pally, McRae, Liver, and, of course, Joe Hannison, who was best of field that night. As Hodgie said, it certainly feels like it's going to be a hot Saturday, probably right through to Monday and into next weekend for the loser, as is so often the case on Friday night. 
in the spotlight both the Western Bulldogs and the Bombers a pair of two and two teams we best not be losing on Friday night. Here we go, Essendon and the Western Bulldogs on ABC Sport. You're with Kelly Underwood. And Durham goes straight to Bontempelli and they shake hands. It's almost as if to say, nice to meet you. I'm going to be with you for most of tonight. Let's wait and see. Goldstein and English in the ruck. Goldstein palms it down. Parrish is there, scoops it up to Durham. Gives it off to Merrick, who concedes some ground back to McGrath, running off half back, And then he pokes it down the line. Couldn't quite hit the target in Jones. And a free kick will go the way of Essendon. He was taken high in that marking contest, Jones. Richards is the one that gives the free away. So Jones has got it on the city wing, goes back to McGrath. Has a little bit of a run forward, goes long and strong inside 50. So Draper started up forward. Essendon wins the free kick and it's going to go the way of Goldstein. Yeah, just got him a little high, Tim English, in the marking contest. Goldstein did... What he has to do and worked English over, got forward hard, just got that front position, drew the free kick. So they have to work him over so that when Sam Draper then gets a shot at English, English is puffing a bit. Draper's started at full forward. Goldstein on the approach from 35 metres out directly in front. Just what the doctor ordered for the down and out bombers. They draw a first flood under the closed roof here at Docklands. One straight six. To the dogs, yet to score. Well, two free kicks over the shoulder. I'm not convinced of either of there because I think it's, it's part of spoiling the gun, the ball, which it's very hard to keep a hand down. But if it's, if you if you pull the play, player down or hold him down, yes, it's a free kick. But I'm not sure that took place. But nonetheless, Goldstein, as usual, uh, a player that can get around the ground and will test every ruckman because of his stamina. So they've, uh, well, they've kicked a goal already. The Bombers had six disposals. The Bulldogs yet to have a touch and have given away two free kicks. In the early stages here, dream start for the Dons. Back in the middle, English palms it down. Great service to Liberatore. Kicks out of the centre square looking for Darcy. Hands to it, no mark. Laverde throws the boot at it up to the wing. Back with the flight. Merritt, courageous. Taps it out in front of the interchange gates. Follows up his own footy for Essendon. Hand pass too much on it for Parrish. Uh, Jeray intercepts, handball out wide comes to Gallagher, the rising star known from a week ago, he straightens up inside to McRae who takes the mark on the logo of the broadcast wing. And he takes off, he has a dash and he delivers looking for Norton outstretched arms right at the top, Laverde for company, couldn't get anywhere near those fingertips You know Kel, I've seen this now I reckon three times this year he goes in there, he takes the mark, he kicks a goal and then we wait till the last quarter before we go <laughs> No, honestly. Okay. I know, that's fair. He, no, I'm not playing because I, like, I like him. I, okay. like, I like the dogs. Directly in front where pretty much Goldstein was at the other end. 40 out on the left, splits the middle. Norton is on the board. And it's a goal apiece to start this one on Friday night footy. One straight six each. No, I know you're not being silly, Mick, because you're right. Both Aaron Norton and Cody Waitman... Maybe it's the power they've still got in their legs or whatever it might be. Is they are almost more dangerous in that first quarter. Yeah. They then tend to drift out of the games a little bit. I think Waitman's trying to build um, that consistency through the game into into his game. Um, but that's that's the challenge, isn't it, for Norton? Is Absolutely. Get a goal, get a mark early, but then just Stay deliver involved. again and again. Yeah. Um, brilliant play by Taylor Duray down here Absolutely. in front of us. If he hadn't have come forward at that ball then... Essendon possibly are out, and they're having a shot at goal. He came forward, created the turnover, and then it was a nice kick by Jack McRae to Aaron Norton's advantage. Just his fifth goal of the year for Aaron Norton. So on the board early, one straight six apiece as Goldstein wins the hit out back in the middle. Uh, sitting on top of it, English. In the end, he has to whack it out, but straight to Merritt. Does a full 360. Hand pass to Parrish. Ugly kick. Floats down to half forward. Clean balls a couple. Jure, good enough to pick it off for the Bulldogs. Hand pass to Richards. He kicks out wide and finds... Kicks out wide and finds Norton. Isn't that good? That, that is terrific that he's kicked his goal and he's coming up the ground now to present to his half-back line. And Norton just sits it on the head of English. Tough kick. McCry, uh, Mackay, rather, comes across. Spoils it away for Essendon. Sits up for Waitman. Hand pass to Baker. Appropriately in the number 13, but he's run out of space and we'll have a throw in on the wing. That's how you stay in the game, Corby. I'm just wrapped to see him take, his, take the mark, come up the ground and still stay active around the pack. So he hasn't gone that deep, so he can stay active. 
Boundary throw in right in front of the dogs bench on the Dockland side. Goldstein assumes front position, but it's all Bulldogs. Baker handballs over the top. McRae, Trelaw, kicked under pressure and it's going to land in the fifth row. And a mark's been taken by the Doggies fan down oh, there. Great work, great Zach Merritt. To spread defensively away from that stoppage. He's the one who laid the tackle on Trelaw, forced the ball to end up out of bounds on the full. Love seeing that from the skipper to set the standard early. So free kick for the Bombers just inside the defensive 50. Martin goes down the line looking for Heppel. Wins a free. Baker gives it away. Wheels and goes from the defensive side of the wing to the attacking side. Draper was the target at ground level. Jones off to Richards in two minds. Retreats back to Jones. Oldest player on the Bulldogs list is Liam Jones. Superb last week against Hawkins. Interesting looking kick. He's looking for Darcy. In fact, it wasn't an interesting looking kick. It was pinpoint and Sam's off. He goes short. Trelaw sends a hand pass away to Liberatore. Up over halfway. Kicks deep. Waitman the target. Getting back. Hand on it from Martin. Ball hits the deck. Jamara attacks it. Tackled. Lost it. Waitman has a second go. Hand pass close to the behind line. And in the end, Martin and Hugel Hagen bang bodies as the ball goes through for a behind. So... It's a go-ahead score for the Bulldogs. They're 1-1. Essendon one straight. Six minutes in. Friday night footy on ABC Sport. Transfer from back on the four line. Brilliant by the Dogs. Really quick, uh, quick crisp, and almost, almost, almost um, resolved the goal. Cody Whiteman's wearing a LeBron-like style sleeve down there. I'll get to Tim Hodges on that very shortly. In the meantime, Martin brings it in. Kicks to Durham. Gives it off to McGrath. Risky kick out wide. He was looking for and couldn't quite hit up Dersmer. It's spoiled over by Darcy. So it'll be a boundary throw in right in front of you, Hodgie. Yeah, Kel, uh, just watching Jake Stringer. He tried to get Harry Jones off for about two minutes. We've only been going six minutes. I don't think he liked starting on the bench, so he is on the ground for his first run tonight, Jake Stringer. For the boundary throw in, Goldstein's clipped high again by English. You'll get a free kick on the wing for the boundary throw in. That one was there. Yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt about that. Yeah, well, I think he's just making up for the first one. <laughs> Contract year for Jake Stringer. It was quiet last week. Had plenty of mates too against Port Adelaide. Against his old side tonight. Kicks to a contest. Goldstein at half forward. They all compete in the air. O'Donnell flew up for it. Ball hits the deck and Hobbs grabs it and he's tackled. Taken to ground and the ball up 45 out from the Essendon goal. His contract be, what, 50% less? Or... Yeah, the uh, Essendon start of the season saying that we'll wait till the end of the year and See how it goes. Uh, from the restart, Merrick got a hand pass out, but straight to Liver. Hand pass away to Richards. Kicks down the wing. And a tough landing for Norton, but he's got it again. His third touch in the first seven minutes. Bulldogs by a point. Friday night footy, ABC Sports. Sanders wheeling round behind him. He goes to Sanders. Kicks long down the line, looking for Hugo Hagen, who's playing his 50th game tonight, but it's all Essendon. Redmond kicks backwards to Martin. They're in the defensive 50. This is Kelly. Out wide they go, and Cox has it. So they've gone from the uh, dock side to the city side. Cox short to Langford. Got it at half back. This is where they really battled to move the footy. The umpire says play on, and Langford casually pokes it inboard to Durham with a kick. Handballs off to Laverde. Goes short with the kick to Merritt. Now they're going to flick it back the other side. So they're working the angles and a mark taken by Dersma. All short, all uncontested. Dersma needs to be pinpoint, and he is. And marking on his chest is um, Caldwell. Too far out to score. The all-important kick inside 50. Just had a bit too much on it for Stringer. How's his second effort? It's pretty good before Buku Kamas comes in and wraps him up in a tackle. And dump Stringer into the turf. It'll be a ball up 35 metres out from the Doggies goal. Essendon goal, rather. No late change. Bailey Dale starting this to sub for the Bulldogs. Draper grabs it out of the ruck. Took on the tackler court. Holding the ball. Advantage applied as Richards. Hand pass away to Bramble. Gives it to Sanders. He kicks off the back flank down the wing. Hugel Hagen crashes the pack. Can't mark, but follows up. Right on halfway for the Dogs. Looks inboard. Kick just over the head of Trelaw. Bouncing footy. Davey intercepts. Hand pass for Essendon. Misses Hobbs. And there's English for the Bulldogs. Away to Vandermeer. Hand pass over to Trelaw. Back through the middle of Docklands. Gives it to the Bond. Looks inside the forward 50. Hugel Hagen covered a bit of ground. Back badly. Takes a one-hander. And Hugel Hagen wraps it up. In the right bit, he'll go back and have a set shot. 30 out, right half forward. Wow, he just keeps getting better and better, Hugo Hagen. That contest down here in front of us on the wing was super important where he brought the ball to ground. He was out of position, followed up and won the ball. He's the one who kicked the ball into the middle to Trelaw that Trelaw probably should have had a little go at, then worked so hard to get on the end of that and take that terrific mark. 
Great play, Eugle Hagen. If ever there's a blue chip prospect in the game, it's this man, Eugle Hagen, nurses it through. He's in business early in game 50. 2-1-13, the Bulldogs, Essendon, one straight six. Ten minutes played in the opening term. Mick Mouldhouse, Cameron Ling, a Friday night footy on ABC Sport. Well, Lingy, I'll say one thing. He should never teach young players how to sh- shoot for goal. He's taken three steps. He was that close to the man on the mark. He actually, honestly, had brushed through his hair. <laughs> so, but I know it went through, but, oh, you know, look, you've just got to use a bit more room. I, it's interesting you say what you just said about his work ethic. Yeah. I reckon that, that the ball that ended up in Essen's forward line is because of him. Because okay. Essen ran the, the football out, and he was 10 yards behind his man. All he had to do was make up that ground before the Essen player received it, and the ball and his man wouldn't have used it. So I think, I think I'll think i give him three out of four, because yep. there were three great efforts and one poor, but if it ends up in a goal like that, you take it every day of the week. Dogs by seven points. Still early stages. It's Darcy in the ruck now. He gets his hands to it, beats Draper. Clever little flick up by the Bombers. Comes to uh, Durham, and his kick was brilliant to Stringer, who was bursting out at right angles almost on a lead. And he's taken a mark 40, 35 metres out on a 45-degree angle. What a kick. Beautiful. Darren, that was but, special. Uh, for a guy that's played 53 games as a mid-season recruit, they missed him last week yeah. when he wasn't there. That was... He was almost blinded to where that needed to go and still pulled it across his body and went, what, 50-odd metres. So Stringer, in his four games so far this season, he's booted 11-3. Shanks it. (laughs) Out of bounds on the fall. Jake. Goodness me. Well, you get the good, the bad and ugly with Jake Stringer. It's just part of the deal. And no one of the Bombers have said let's put off contract talks for a while because... Goodness knows what this season will produce for him. It is the Doggies, still by seven points. That wasn't too pretty as William Jones brings it in. and Heavy landing for O'Donnell, but he's got it at halfback. He's one of the coach's favourites, James O'Donnell. Whenever he's sort of available, he's in as a, a late recruit in uh, last year's pre-season. Long kick down the wing. There's a whistle on the play here. High tackle and all of that. It's going to Bulldogs way. Sanders takes the advantage. Kicks to Jamara. Marks it. Center half forward. Hand pass inside 50. Gallagher runs straight into Durham. Caught the heavy tackle. Somehow got a hand pass away. Hobbs collects center half back for the Dons. Gives it to Parrish. Away to Cox. Slick hands to Stringer. Running through the middle of the ground. Kicks inside 50. Davey can't get the half volley pick up. And Liam Jones mops it up for the Bulldogs. Gives it to O'Donnell. He kicks out to half back. And the dogs are able to come up with it. A couple of ordinary kicks from Jake Stringerlingy. Oh, really ordinary. And when you have that much of an attacking play, there's a there's a turnover. You've got the whole corridor. You've got the whole run. That has to end up in a goal if you're going to be a really good team. And then Baker for the dogs has put it out on the full with simple sort of kick. So on the city side wing, Essendon now in possession. Heppel's happy to give it back. You know, I saw it early on. I saw Stringer. Um, limping coming off from the back line up into the forward. I was wondering whether he may have got an injury because he's much better than that. To Redmond who drives it long looking for Draper now at ground level. Richards is tackled, gets a little kick away. It's effective on Sanders through traffic. Weaves his way running backwards. That's what he did last week but he did it going the wrong way without knowing it. This time it was effective. Kicks out wide although pouncing on it is McGrath. Sends it inside 50. Awkward half volley. Picked up well by Langford and now a fr- umpire's blown his whistle. Hobbs had it. It's coming back to Langford. He was dumped after he got rid of it I think Kyle Langford and he's within range and he is a sharpshooter. Need to kick it from 50. We're right behind him in the ABC commentary box on the third level here under the closed roof at Docklands. And it's one of those where, as the tackler, your head's down and you don't realise ball's gone. the player's got rid of the ball and he just went on with the tackle a bit long. So nearly 14 minutes pass. They trail by seven points. Langford on the approach. Opens it up a little bit. Oh, that is exquisite off the boot. Textbook, traditional set shot, Kyle Langford. And they draw back with him one point. 2-1-13, the Dogs, Essendon, two straight 12. He's become a, a really important player for them, hasn't he, Mick? Oh, I, for so many years, I just wondered, is he never going to find a position? Is he, he's not, maybe he's not quite a midfielder oh, as a forward. Is he, he's not big enough to be a key forward, quick enough to be a small. 
But he just plays such an important role now. He's a really tough matchup. Oh, two right ears, 192 centimetres. And so if you put someone tall on him, he's just got a little bit more agility. If you yeah. put someone small on him, he's going to outmark them. And, and told, he's a smart player too. If someone told you six years ago he'd be the leading goal kicker in 2023 for the Bombers, you would never have believed no, them. No way. He booted 51 goals last year. Yeah. Runner up in the BNF. Timely goal for the Bombers after the Dogs started to get on top around the ground. Back in the middle. McRae just hacks it off the deck out to the wing. Menzi can't quite scoop it up. Still ball bobbles in front of him in the end. Menzi just soccers it forward. Bouncing footy on the wing. Trelaw, first one there for the Dogs. Hand pass away to McRae, to Williams, and then a hand pass to Richards. He runs clean around Davey. Kicks down the half forward for the Bulldogs. Leaping up Jamara in a tangle with Mackay. Knocked to the boundary line. Norton keeps it alive. Whacks it back in. Waitman left it behind. And the Don's able to mop it up here through McGrath and then Hebel to Liberti. He goes back to Martin. Kicks to halfback. Dangerous one-on-one. Parrish there with Williams. Parrish as he hits the deck. Grabs it. Sanders has got him. And we'll have a ball up 60 metres out. Left half forward for the Bulldogs. Now the Doggies by a point. 2-1 over Essendon. Two straight. Corbin Middlemass, Kelly Underwood, Tim Hodges on the boundary. Mick Moldhouse, Cameron Ling on ABC Sport. All up half forward here for the Dogs. English has given it straight to Gallagher. Center in kick, top of the goal square. Tapped down by the Bombers. Hugo Hagen is there. He goes to ground. Who can keep their feet? Waitman, beautiful to West goal. Waitman scooped it up. Riley West was waiting. Snapped it from the goal square. Dogs got their third. 3 1 19, a seven point lead over the Bombers. Two straight 12 after 16 minutes of play. Nice hands, Cody Waitman. And Waitman's been dangerous in a couple of positions now, just buzzing around. Again, we spoke about the fact he starts the game really well, and he's done that so far. Nice little flick up. And Riley West just doing what you have to do in the forward line when the ball's still alive is he kept coming back to the ball, kept, kept getting around the footy, multiple efforts. And then finally got that little half chance and his teammate flicked it up to him nicely. Doggies by seven points. 17 minutes in, 3-1 to two straight. It'll be Goldstein and English back in the middle. There's a crooked bounce and the umpire says, I'll do it all again. So no late change coming in. Bailey Dale, the son for the Bulldogs and Nick Hind for the Bombers. Caleb Daniel as well having a run around in the twos earlier. After the uh, ball chucked up back in the middle of the ground, Goldstein drops it on the way down. He has to mop it up, uh, hand pass away towards Parrish, gives it to Cordwell, out to Dersma. Ugly kicking motion as he sends a high ball down to half forward. Two dogs compete in the air. Karmas and Dre, but it falls okay. Down to Sanders, to Richards by hand. Away to English, and he gives it to the run and dash of Bramble through the middle of the ground. Links up by hand with Gallagher. Gives it back to Trelaw. Hand pass to centre half forward. Norton trying to measure one more handball. Dre inside 50. Now he's under the pump. Drilled in a heavy tackle by Dersma. Hum says, I'll have it. The ball up. 45 out from the Bulldogs' goal. Gee, a crunching tackle from behind from Xavier Dersma. I'm what, happy with it. What was the ooh uh, for, Lingy? Uh, because he no longer had the football when he was crunched in the tackle. Okay, good. And in the back. I thought it was in the back as well. McGrath. Thomas in a one-on-one -on -one with Stringer on the wing. Takes a strong mark. So Stringer hasn't had a great start to this clash after he started on the bench. Karmas kick too short for Jure, put him under the pump, but he's got White Williams there. He works it to Williams who penetrates long. Oh, into the forward pocket, right forward pocket. West was the one that read it best right at the back, but he couldn't take the mark and his quick kick has been picked off by Merritt. Should give the hand pass, West. Gives that hand pass as a lot more of the ground opens up for his teammate. A couple of big men in front of him flew in the pocket and he waited down and he didn't quite take the mark and then hurried the kick but it was intercepted by the Bombers and now Heppel's got it kick low for Goldstein he was able to get it give it off to the run of Merritt now they bring it down the city wing quick hands they go off to um Jones now Stringer hence the uh, jeers that kick is good Hits up Langford. Langford grubbers it to a one-on-one. -on -one. It's Jones v O'Donnell. Jones picks it up. Handballs over the top to a teammate. Sells him into all sorts of trouble. It was Gresham. And Gresham loses it. It dribbles over the boundary line. It'll be thrown back in 25 metres around from Essendon's goal. Kicking to the southern end in this first turn. About to tick into time on. Dave in the Wimmera. Evening, guys. Just tuned in. Happy Kelly's one of the callers. She makes it so exciting and don't despair. Love Lingy, Corbin and Mick as well, so, <laughs> and, and Hodgie, of course. Thanks, uh, David, for that off the SMS. And the boundary throw-in, big tackle 
uh, from Gresham on McRae. We'll have a ball up left half forward for the Dons. Uh, 0437 774 774 is that SMS number, by the way. Goldstein down to Cordwell, half forward. There's a whistle here. There's a free. It's going Essendon's way, and Cordwell was clipped high. Yeah, the movement created it, Corbs. Cordwell was the one player really getting on the move aggressively, read it off the Ruckman's hands. Just, he just clipped on the way through. It's not, it wasn't much, but it was still high contact. And by season, he's got to pay it. That's uh, English again, so it, it could be two goals from his free kicks. He's, he's given away three already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, free kick count six to one, early stages, Essendon's way. Slightly worse than a 45 degree angle. Cordwell on his way in from about 40 metres out. His right foot of drop punt is pure. Through it goes. And Essendon have got three as well. Three straight to 3-1. They trail the Bulldogs by a point. His back and forth tussle in the opening term continues. 21 minutes in. Friday night footy on ABC Sport. The Bulldogs by a point. And for everything Essendon's doing, they could even help themselves more. Their kicks inside forward 50, Mick, when they've had the game open to them, have been pretty ordinary. But they've still managed to, to scrounge now three goals. You said a couple of those from free kicks and Jai Caldwell's movement there created that one. But they're doing some things really well. It's just that added finish of the, the second most important kick in football. The first is the kick for goal, obviously. Yeah, You've got to kick yep. straight. The second most important to get is, to that, is that kick inside forward 50. And at the moment, that's a big room for improvement for the Bombers. It, it, almost every other stat's the same. Yeah. Inside 50s, tackles, except free kicks. Promised to be a bit of a shootout. That's what we're seeing early stages here. English wins it, gives it to Bontempelli. Off to his vice-captain, Liberatore. Sends it long. Off hands. Who's there? Scurrying is uh, Vandermeer, but he can't quite pick it up under the pressure of Heppel. And all the experience in the world from Dyson. Heppel sees it over. Boundary throw in. Two metres around from the doggies' uh, goals. In fact, right next to the point post in front of the dogs' cheer squad. You'll hear the result of this stoppage if it goes through for a goal. English. Norton went without it. Charging through. West tries to play for the high. The umpire says yes. And there's the cheer squad. Red cheers for the umpire. Because they've picked out the high on the bottom of the pack. It was Riley West. Yeah, no, that's, it's, that's it's, the, it's the same as English is up here. Yep. In fact, it's probably a little bit more. And he stayed a bit longer around his throat, so the free kick there. And it sure. wasn't like he picked up the ball and then dropped it to the knees no, or anything no. like that, which the Essendon players, I think, were trying to argue. That was as he was picking the ball up, he got clipped across the face. Yep. The man on the mark is at the top of the goal square, and that's Dyson Heppel. Socks down, hot pink boots, and offline off the hot pink boot. It's a good. slippery boot, Mick. I thought he would have come around... And did a little curl one. The little curl one. Yeah, the snap one. No, it well, went the traditional approach, and he missed out to the right, so it's the dogs by two. Redman, same footwear provider, long kick with the pink boots up to the wing. Slips out the back of uh, Draper. Now, Langford had a play on it momentarily. Liam Jones through traffic, got it to McRae, hand pass Miss Baker. Out of bounds it goes between wing and half forward for the Bulldogs. Dogs by two points, 3-2 three, to three straight, 23 minutes in. Corbin Middlemass, Kelly Underwood, Tim Hodges on the boundary, Mick Moldhouse, Cameron Ling. Friday night footy. Jack McRae leading two and four with the dogs. We're used to seeing him up the top. It's generally up around 10 to 12 and this sort of stuff. So he has certainly changed his game. Well, Draper wins the hit out of Trelaw off his backside. Got a hand pass out to Liver. He's locked up. But I, I reckon, Mick, that's the Bulldogs are changing their game. Oh. That, they've got Richards and Baker and these quicker players who, when they get it, they're going forward Absolutely. with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. They're not playing ring a ring a rosy with handballs. English flicked it behind him to McRae, who couldn't control it, and then Sam Sanders is gang-tackled either side by Parrish and McGrath. Essendon midfield knows a little bit about that as well. A little ring a ring a rosy. Yeah. Oh, they're good at it. Book. Yep. <laughs> Number three has Another got it right now, knows it. Yes, Parrish had it. Lost it. Bontempelli farms it out. And then another free kick might be played here. Baker was taken high. Well, it's coming back to Bontempelli. Against Parrish. The umpire said, now, hang on, it's got to come back because Bont saw something in light inside 50. Didn't go over the man of the mark, I think. So it's coming back. Bontempelli, he's got it at half forward. Left half forward. There's a player further out wide all by themselves, and he goes there. It was a short kick to Baker. So 
Oscar Baker a couple of steps in from the boundary. On his right, and then he curls that. He tries to flick it back into that left forward pocket. It was too much out of bounds on the four. And Hodgie on the boundary. Uh, Kel, you can just see how wet and dewy it is. It's probably the coldest night in Melbourne this year. It, it is so slippery. Like, even when players fall over, they, when they get picked up off the ground, you can see their clothes are actually wet. So it is like a it's like a wet weather game out there. Lingy might be able to, to tell us more about that having played here. But it, it, these conditions are really difficult. Thanks, Hodgie. Cordwell gets his kick going up to the wing. Hobbs lost it. Liam Jones intercepts for the Bulldogs. Hand pass away to the Bond. Handball back inboard. Goldstein can't trap it. Spills to Merritt, though, on the Bombers. Hooks a kick down to half forward. Harry Jones is there, along with O'Donnell. Jones knocks it inside 50. Chasing along with his namesake. Can't pick it up. Liam Jones does very well. Knocks it out to O'Donnell. He's drilled in a tackle by Langford. Holding the ball. Just tried to shake the would-be tackler, lost his footing, and then O'Donnell was in deep trouble. Langford locks him up, looks corridor, dangerous kick, but it works out. Back in board to Nick Martin, who drifted forward, and he marks true centre-half forward, 40 out. That's exactly what Hodgie was talking about with the slipperiness of the ground. And this ground in particular, when it gets that little bit wet, and whether through dew or if the, if the roof is ever left open during the day, it becomes almost... Skating rink. So, so, so. Yeah, super, super slippery. And that's what happened to O'Donnell there. He just completely lost his footing under the pressure and coughed it up with the holding the ball. He's had a lot of the footy so far this year. Nick Martin. Can he make them count? His right foot a drop punt is good. He puts the Dons out in front. Lead change number two. And Essendon on top now. Four straight. They lead the Bulldogs 3-2. 27 minutes in. The Bombers by four. Friday night footy on ABC Sport. 12-11 inside 50s favouring the dogs. Tackles are around about the same. Nine, well it's nine thirteen, so that's that's a little bit of a lift there. Well, oh, I suppose that free kick come from the tackle. Uh, possession rates pretty much the same. 73, 68. Not a lot of possessions for this time of the quarter. So both teams are endeavouring to, to take go it. long. Yeah. yeah, take take as much distance as they possibly can. Get the ball in the forward line. See what sort of damage you can do up there. When seven goals have been scored, so. It's against the norm of a few games this year. It's fast, it's free-flowing, it's high-scoring, and it's entertaining, and there's a huge crowd in for it, enjoying every moment. Two and a bit minutes to go before the quarter-time siren, and it's the Bombers by four points. They win it out of the centre again. Here's McGrath using uh, his Ruckman over the top to Heppel. Goldstein involved. And then wider still to Dersma. City wing cuts it back in board a little bit. Backwards to Merritt. Merritt strolls past Liberatore, spears the pass. Couldn't quite hit up his team and teammate in Durham. Charging through was Heppel. Stringer comes in to offer a bit of help, but it's too late. And McRae for the dogs pounces on it and delivers beautifully to Sam Darcy. He's got it on centre wing. He reels round, he kicks to his ruck mentor in English, who gives it off to Jason Johannesson. Long looking for Yuval Hagen. And he takes a strong mark right on the edge of the goal square. In his 50th AFL game, he was sandwiched mid-air between Laverde and also Mackay, two bigger players. He's a little slow to get up. But Hugo Hagen now up, paid the mark, and he's going to stroll in top of the goal square. He'll put this through. A quick reply from the Dogs. They're back in front by two points, and Hugo Hagen has two. 4-2-26, Essendon, 4 straight, 24. Ball use, outstanding yep. from that free kick. It's a free kick or mark. And just the ability to move the ball, catch us in. If that wasn't marked, it was a free kick. It would have been head-on, uh, face-on contact, this sort of stuff. But but the, we, we, you're right, Lingy. You know, we, we're so used to the dogs getting 100-plus possessions and maybe scoring two or three goals. They're, they're, at the moment, they've gone 70 nearly 80 possessions with a couple of minutes to go or a minute and a half to go and they scored four goals four goals too and, yeah and, and it's been they generally struggle for their goals these, this is, these have been easy goals good marking yep she was good protecting the drop of the ball by Hugo Hagen that body work was superb you're right it would have been a free kick but by two brilliant 
Lead change number three. Dogs back on top. Lead it by two points as Draper just whacks it with his fist out of the middle. Off the square comes Hobbs for Essendon. Hand pass to Durham. Gives it to Merritt. Parrish slips over. Uncon bounce for Davey. Jure has a fumble. Invites him Bramble. Feeds it back by hand for the Bulldogs to Williams. Hurried kick out of defence. Hetwell didn't get a con bounce over his head. West slick hands to Bramble. Goes darting away. Dashing run. Gives it to McRae. Up over halfway for the Bulldogs. Runs, carries, long left footer. Norton the target. Pushes off Mackay. Free kick. There's a oh, it's not a pushing. That's, that's just that's taken, body work. Taken ground. Oh, my God. Went against Norton in the marking contest. Trying to push off Benny Mackay. And the Bombers racing away. Hobbs on the wing. Hobbs gets his kick away just in time, and it's a good one as well because taking the mark is Jai Menzi, uncontested right in front of the Bombers' bench. Puts plenty of air in this one. He's asking Draper to run and launch, but English, one front position, in the end spills the mark out wide to Stringer, who's capable of the impossible. He was running directly at the boundary line, curls the kick back in board, and hits up little Davy Jr. down low. Yeah, that was better by Stringer. That oh, was beautiful. Kick. Superb kicking board. Uh, 50 metre penalty as well. Not sure what this one is for, but when we usually don't know, it probably involves the something being descent. said. Yes, <laughs> exactly right, Cameron Ling. So, Davey Jr. in the goal square, and he hits back with a pretty simple kick. Bombers back in front. This is an intriguing tug of war. Lead change number four, five straight 30. The dogs food 4 2 20. Seconds left before the quarter time siren. The only thing that makes me doubt whether it was descent was the little bit of a to do back here on the wing in front of us. Uh, after that, there was a fair bit of pushing and shoving. So I don't know if we missed somebody getting perhaps dumped to the ground or something like that well off the ball. Jamari Eugel Hagen was the one. Yeah, just seen the vision. It was Mason. Eugel Hagen dumped Mason Redmond to the to the ground way back on the wing yeah. after Davy Jr. had the ball. So that's why it was then a 50-metre penalty. So a bit of ill-discipline from Eugel Hagen. Praised Durham a little earlier, Lingy. Another handball to set up Stringer yes. off his backside and does all the dirty work for him, Sam Durham. Blue collar. Uh, midfielder introduced to this team midway through uh, a season before last. Back in the middle, Draper. Soccers it forward. Hobbs clean pick up. Is there time for Essendon? Hand pass to Parrish. Kicks inside 50. Langford spills the mark. Chucks it on the boot. Seconds ticking down to the top of the goal square. And that'll do us. The clock is exhausted. At quarter time, it's Essendon by four points. Back and forth affair in this opening term on Friday night. Essendon, five straight 30. They lead the Western Bulldogs 4-2-26. The quarter, which ran over 31 minutes, had four lead changes. And the biggest margin either way was the Dogs leading by seven points on a couple of occasions. The goal kickers, five individual goal kickers for the Bombers. Down the page, we've got Langford, Caldwell, Goldstein, Davey Jr. and Martin, all with one each. Meanwhile, for the Western Bulldogs, Jamari Eugle Hagen's kicked a couple, one for West and one for Norton. Quarter time on Friday Night Footy. Your thoughts up the SMS. The Bombers' back line is barely VFL standard. It's clueless. Gee, strong strong yeah. feedback already on the SMS. So 0437 774 774. We'll get the thoughts of Mick Moldhouse and Cameron Ling in just a moment. This is Friday Night Footy on ABC Sport. The May issue of Gardening Australia is filled with growing goodness. Feast your eyes on gorgeous new release roses. Read about growing proteus and Japanese zelkova. And take a fresh look at chrysanthemums. Visit an artist's garden, give your indoor plants a health check, learn how to maximise your veggie harvest and get tips on easy ways to compost. Available from newsagents and abcmagazines.com.au this is ABC Sports coverage of the 2024 AFL season. Every match on the ABC Listener. Look for the AFL button. Goldstein on the approach from 35 metres out directly in front. Just what the doctor ordered for the down and out bombers. They draw first flood under the closed roof here at Docklands. And he takes off. He has a dash and he delivers looking for Norton. Outstretched arms. Right at the top, Laverde for company. Couldn't get anywhere near those fingertips. 40 out on the left, splits the middle. 
Norton is on the board, and it's a goal apiece to start this one on Friday night footy. Trelaw, back through the middle of Docklands, gives it to the bomb, walks inside the forward 50, Eugle Hagen covered a bit of ground, back Bentley, takes a one-hander. If ever there's a blue chip prospect in the game, it's this man, Eugle Hagen, nurses it through. He's in business early in game 50. He's had a lot of the footy so far this year. Nick Martin, can he make them count? His right foot a drop punt, he's good. He puts the dogs out in front. Google Hagen now up, paid the mark, and he's going to stroll in, top of the goal square. He'll put this through. A quick reply from the dogs. They're back in front by two points, and Eugle Hagen has two. So Davey Jr. in the goal square, and he hits back with a pretty simple kick. Bombers back in front. This is an intriguing tug of war. The 2024 AFL Premiership season. On your radio. ABC Sport Digital. And on the ABC Listen app. Sounds there from the opening term, Essendon by four points at quarter time. Five straight 30 over the Western Bulldogs. 4 to 26. Four lead changes in that opening term. Ahead of McMoldhouse and Cameron Ling, Tim Hodges is on the boundary. Hodgey. Uh, g'day Corbin, uh, just an observation, uh, just how slippery it is out there, which we uh, noted during the quarter, and uh, you can see out there, right now the umpires have the boot bag out there, some have gone off to get their own boots, and all of the umpires are changing their shoes, just to, goes to show how unbelievably slippery it is, so they've all gone for uh, the boots with the spring marks in them, so they can have a bit of traction out there, such as the, the dew that is on uh, the Dockland surface under the roof tonight. Amazing. Wet weather game indoors, as uh, we've seen in the past here at Docklands. Coaches are less... Um, I hesitate to use the word crazy sitting next to a coach about long stops versus short stops, but I do know my incredible coach, I had Mark Thompson, um, was known to have thrown a boot or two around the change rooms at half-time if he disagreed with the player's choice of studs versus the moulded variety. So... <laughs> Do you ever have to duck any flying boots? Or uh, no, a friend of mine had to duck quickly and it hit the wall behind him uh, and made a very loud sound. <laughs> you have to, have to keep your wits about you with, uh, in the Geelong locker room. Uh, it's Essendon by four points at quarter time. The thoughts of Mick Mouldhouse, Cameron Lee. Well, Corby, I'm, I'm just going to ask you to... I don't think anyone in here is equipped to answer this question, so can we get someone to say, with the roof on something like this, I thought dew would come from the atmosphere and fall onto the ground. Yep. Now, there's a roof on this... So for someone out there who will probably know the answer, please let us know how it's dewy like on this when you've got a roof over the arena. I don't get it. Oh, come not, on, you're not answering it. Yeah. The temperature of the air is turning there it gas is. There is. Oh, no. into a liquid form. <laughs> there it is. State they, of matter. That, oh, look at that. No, I didn't think anyone would know. Ooh. He's got us. Oh, that, my God. That, I did year 12 chemistry. I'm racking my brain. But don't worry, someone will text in and tell oh. me I'm complete. Oh, oh, I did year right. 12 chemistry as well, and I can't remember anything. <laughs> I think I, I failed year 10 science, I think. I, I got in that space. Jeez. Well, anyway, about wow. the game. <laughs> about the game. <laughs> about the game. We're, we're seeing a really quick game. It's we're, good, we're, isn't we're, it? Well, we're, we're, I don't know if this guy can't stand big Oh, come on. Be no, positive. I, don't, I like real tough football. Um, <laughs> Bizarrely one ta- I mean, the closest they've come to tackling these sides is when they shook hands before the game. Have a look at me tackles there, buddy. 10 to 15, so oh, 15 for the Bombers. Honestly. So we, we haven't really overdone the tackling, but um, I'll, I'll, the, the, there is a distinct difference with the dogs the way they're playing. I yes. can absolutely categorically say that because of the way they're not 130 possessions for one goal three. So uh, one part of it's working, the other part is they've got to put a a stop to the ease of which Essendon that's, is scoring. That's the one, Mick. You've got a team who's always going to respond to last week's really poor performance. Yep. The best way to stop that is early. Oh. Just harass, chase, tackle. Give them Make nothing. It, give them nothing to keep their confidence at rock bottom. Yep. Right now, some of these Bombers players are thinking, oh, actually, I am a good player. Yeah, I'm last week good was, about myself. Well, forget last week. Yep, yep. Yeah, it was just right. a one-off. They are full of run and confidence and belief now, so it's going to be hard from here on in. For the, uh, for the doggies to wrestle it back. I mean, the scoreboard's the way it is. It's very close. So it's nothing to worry about. But they've got given them some confidence. Crooked bounce to start the second term. Um says play on for a long time. And then in the end, one of his mates intervened and said, we've got to recall that. Uh, Tim Hodges on the boundary. Uh, just an interesting one. Brad Scott uses the uh, race between the two benches to, to come back and forth from the box. He was almost halfway down and then came back and went and uh, just found Jake Stringer, gave him a big hug. Jake Stringer starting the second quarter on the pine as well but uh, yeah just had a special message for him 
Thanks, Hodgie. After the restart, Bonton Pelly to centre clearance. Kicks out to half forward. Darcy, the target, no mark. Falls down the bomber's way. McGrath, away to Martin. Hand pass to Redmond up against the boundary line. Kicks short and finds Sammy Durham. Who marks at half back for Essendon. So let's see how many turnovers there are from these sort of these sort of string the ball together. That, that, that's when you're switched on. Oh, long kick down the wing, carries the pack, and in the end, unexpectedly hits uh, Draper. He wasn't ready for it, and Bontempelli retreats, goes back to Liam Jones for the Bulldogs in defensive 50, and he swings it out to Gallagher. Right back pocket, Bombers by four points, one minute into the second term. Who swings it further wide to Latham Vandermeer. Oh, Essendon got him locked in here really well, Essendon. Trying to work out the best exiting kick. It goes down the line for Eugle Hagen, who played it as if he got a shove in the back, and Laverty did do that, according to the umpire. Essendon had it totally covered on ground and in the air. That's why that's why dogs couldn't move the ball. Eugle Hagen goes backwards to Johannesson, to Richards. JJ kept running and gets it back. Now he's running straight ahead through the corridor, corridor dashing along. His kick, Waitman came out looking for it. Alwyn Davies stood his ground, couldn't mark it. With good second effort, was able to mop up and then deliver wide. So this is Jones, Harry Jones in the blue boots for the red and black team down the line, straight to Buku Kamas. Draper was nowhere near him in the intercepting defender for the dogs. Turns around, kicks short to Richards. He has a dash, he has a bounce, gets himself into a bit of a pickle, handballs to Jeray, who handballs backwards to O'Donnell, who kicks down the line, strong mark by Liberatore. There was pressure coming from Harry Jones. Cuts it back in board to Joe Hennison. Richards kept running. He accepts the handball. He drives it inside 50. Great move. Darcy yeah. barely had to move. He just had to put out his big hands in front of his eyes and took the marks right in front of his face. The, the one player on two occasions who turned a stagnant game into a movement game was Ed Richards. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, no wonder they, they want him. You can see the change. Caleb Daniels moved out yeah. of there. Bailey Dale's a sub tonight. It's They want that run and creativity from Ed Richards. And Superb kick inside forward 50. Six goals, one for Sam Darcy so far this year. The rising star nominee this week directly in front. It shouldn't be a problem, but it is. It's too, too real bad, this is for the dogs. Southern side. Southern end of the stadium. It's a poor miss directly in front. The dogs 4 3 27. Trailing Essendon by three, four, uh, three points, five straight 30. Riley West missing a gettable set shot of the opening term. Nick Martin just pushes it, turns it straight over and Darcy will get a second go. Have another go at it, Sam. Yeah. Kicks it straight to him at centre-half forward. He's going to David Shaw and Vandermeer just marking. Under a little bit of pressure from McGrath, he's closer to home, still at centre-half forward, about 40 out. Yeah. Yeah, probably a good choice because I'm, I'm, I haven't seen him kick over 50 metres young Darcy, so not 100% sure he's really comfortable himself, but that's a very good pass. Saw on Fox Footy during the week, I think it was on 360, David King highlighted the ball use of some of the Bombers this year. Nick Martin actually ranked 143 for ball use in the comp. And Mason Redmond, 151. I reckon that 142 would be dropped tonight. Latham Vanderveer to make the Bombers pay. He threads this through and returns the Bulldogs to the front. The Dogs back on top, 5-3-33. Essendon, 5 straight, 30. The Dogs by three points, four minutes into the second term. Lead change number five, Cameron Ling and Mick Moldhouse on ABC Sport. Well, it's interesting, Lingy, we said about the ball movement, just seems to be a bit different with the Dogs this year. And I'll say it again, it is different. I'm just wondering whether young Darcy straightens him up. Yeah. Because he is an imposing kid. Um, and he stands the way, out. The way they're positioned here is, so he starts... What's that, about 40, 20? Say 25 metres out. Out from way. goal, so yep. to come at that first kick. You've then got Norton and Eugle Hagen both out of the goal. Marking place, yeah. He's come in behind. Eugle Hagen's clearly been more of the target, so yeah. they can go long with confidence. Dogs by three points. Back, bounce down in the centre. Off English's hand. Trelaw's in there fighting hard. Durham gets it, handballs it straight to English. English kick is smothered. Now there's a ball to be won. Durham goes in hard. He's tackled by a couple of dogs. Umpire says, give it to me. Ball up 10 metres from the bullseye. 
Good follow up by English. He gets beaten in the ruck, but he just keeps following the ball up. Beaten again this time by Goldstein. Tried to palm it down. Liberatore got in the way. McRae hands to Bontempelli. Hands now to uh, Williams. Keeps it low. Bailey Williams. Unable to pick it up was Eugle Hagen. Darcy goes to ground. Fires out a handball to Trelaw. He's sitting on it. He flicks it back out looking for Darcy. Coming in and getting involved. Uh, well done there from the Bombers player in Caldwell. And Caldwell makes sure it's not going anywhere. Now the tackle count's really lifted, or starting to lift with the dogs now. They're putting massive pressure in their forward line. Up it goes. English palms it down. Bontempelli quickly boot the ball, bouncing into the pocket. Here's West, grabs it, shakes the Mackay tackle. West kicks back to the top of the goal square. Bontempelli amongst three dons. Tapped it to his own advantage. Hand pass to Baker, trying to get back onto his right side. Swings his kick goal with Darcy. Takes the mark on the behind line. You've got to be impressed with his work rate, oh. Darcy. What, probably two, three efforts down here at ground level. Yeah, and it did onto bon- Bonapelli's. Yeah. So it's, you only need two or three to join him, don't you? Have a look at it. In a crowded forward 50, the dogs never gave up on that footy. No. No, their repeat efforts compared to oh. Essen and all just wanted to have one one effort each. Darcy hooks around and the rising star misses again. Too early. Just didn't give it enough room. Behind for Sam Darcy, he's second in the term. The Bulldogs 5-4, danger signs for Essendon, they're five straight. Dogs by four points, seven minutes into the second term, but in general play, the Bulldogs starting to find their groove. It is a real worry with with Darcy because he's, he's so quick too. McGrath is off. He runs as far as the rule book lets him and then he drives it long. No one can take it in the air. Off uh, ground level is Merritt. Merritt pulls up short. I hope he hasn't injured himself. He handballs it off to Kelly. And then the kick short finds Menzi. In fact, it's Dersma rather. Xavier Dersma kicks down the wing, broadcast side. Two Bulldogs onto one bomber. Not a great option. One of the Bulldogs is Trelaw to Waitman. Keeps it low. Eugle Hagen with the uh, shove on Mackay. Mackay then wins the footy, turns around, gives it to Dersma. Dersma's kick's gone to Williams. Tackle might have been too high. It was. Free kick for the Dogs against Caldwell. Right in front of some Bombers fans that aren't happy with that. Bailey Williams, top of the goal square. Darcy was there, got his hands through it again. Mackay. Gresham under the pump, high ball, Stringer the only one there. Camped at the drop, takes the mark at half back. I think Darcy was really stiff there. He had hands on that, yeah. and he was dra- the arms were dragged down. Stringer puts plenty of air in that. Looking for Draper, strong in front. Out marks Jones, too far out to score. Still a couple of goals out. Just going to put it up in the air and hope Langford can get it, the double grabber. He was surrounded by a hat-trick of Bulldogs. He wanted to play on. The umpire's blown his whistle and said, come back. Come back. Bulldogs fans don't like it. Well, what happened was that one of the, the Bulldogs players was appealing for a touch. So he thought it was going to be called touch. So went to play on. The umpire's given him the benefit of the doubt and said, no, it's, I paid it a mark. You can come back and you can take your set shot. I haven't seen that happen too often. Really. Well... The umpire lets him have that choice. Yeah, yeah. well, he's got a double choice. So it looks like you're going to get caught. So, oh, no, we'll get you, Captain. Go back and have a shot on goal. No, don't worry. Shots 20 metres out. Langford lining up for his second. Really and now they're into it because he missed it. Buku Kamas comes in. Bit of push and shove. And, of course, Libba just there to add his opinion. Dogs by three. What are you guys getting involved there, Mick? Absolutely. Set shot. No good off the boot of Cole Langford and the dogs work it quickly down the wing. Put the at Kel. The city's it's a certainty. Norton on the wing sends it down to Darcy who's starting to take over in his second turn. Down to half forward, slips through his hands. Kelly for the Bombers. Hand pass away towards Laverde and then Goldstein to McGrath to Redmond all by hand. And the hand pass defensive side of the wing to Dersma. He goes back in board to Parrish. Hand pass to McGrath. Kicks for Cordwell. Awkward half volley. Pick up. Good luck dealing with that. Langford can't trap it. Dodds back onto it. Jeray in the front half. Away to Liberatore. Kicks off the right peg. Inside 50. No mark. Hits the deck. Bontempelli soccers it out in front, almost stepped on it. West puts it in the back of the net. He got it there in the end. And the Bulldogs jump out to a new game high. It's a nine-point lead in this close tussle under the Friday night lights. Ten minutes into the second term. Riley West with his second. The Bulldogs 6 4 40. Essendon 5 1 31. Mick Moldhouse, Cameron Ling. Friday night footy on ABC Sport. Corbs, can I say that only because this is Marcus Bontempelli that he meant to do the little back heel flick to set Riley West up? <laughs> 
I think he almost stepped on it. Almost went flat. Put a puncture in it. Oh yeah, no, well, good, a good goal in the end. Good awareness by Riley West. Hey, you mentioned before about Sam Darcy starting to take over, and, and, and I know he hasn't kicked the goals yet, and he's had a couple of little 50-50 ones. So we had little signs. I loved it. He knew he had Mason Redmond down here, yeah. and he just had that look in, like the schoolyard. Just oh, kick it to me. Yeah, I'm I got, totally. I've got this guy covered. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I love that sort of belief so early in someone's career. Look at the tap, too. Biggest lead for the Bulldogs, nine points. They're winning it out of the centre as well. Sanders is getting involved. The youngster off to McRae. And the kick was a little bit wild. And it enabled Redmond to take it uncontested. So he goes short and wide. Bit of a pause now for the Bombers. How do they respond to this? Is it to Caldwell? Just outside the defensive arc. He delivers it long to the wing. Vandermeer off hands. West is a smother by Heppel. Vandermeer's got to go and get it again. And then his kick is smothered brilliantly by Gresham. So some good defensive hustle. Heppel goes and gets it. Gives it to Parrish. Parrish, 50-50 ball. Hobbs back to Heppel. Nice passage of play by the former skipper. And he settles it down with a short kick to Dersma. Dersma in front of the Bombers bench. Making Stringer really work for a kick to a two-on-one. Stringer had to beat a couple of uh, Bulldogs. Richards rolls it over the line, pretended to uh, sort of slip over the line, but was very happy to get it over. Yes, good call, Cole. He uh, certainly well found touch. Yes, it was very well disguised. Uh, stand off the SMS. The water is coming up through the grass and cannot evaporate evaporate quick enough due to the dew. Well, there you go. There's another theory, Lingy. There's a theory. If you're with us at quarter time, as Cameron Ling just... Surprised us all, not just a legend in the Geelong Hall of Fame, but he's also oh, very clued in when it comes to science and <laughs> why it's damp in an indoor stadium. As the dog's up on the wing, here's Bailey Williams, sells a bit of candy twice, now kicks long down to half forward. They come from all directions. Hugo Hagen got hands to it, no mark, falls to Kelly, hand pass to Redmond, back to Kelly, he's under pressure, and Waitman with the pressure forces the ball out of play, half forward for the Bulldogs. Well done, Vandermeer, and well done, Waitman. Yep. That's what you're there to do once the ball hits the ground. If you can't win it, just swarm after the opposition. They both did it. Forced this boundary throw in, so the ball's still in their area of the ground. They get another chance. Bulldogs have won nine of the last ten against the Bombers. But it was Essendon who led it quarter time. The Dogs on top now, having kicked the first two of this second quarter. And the boundary throw in west is drilled in the tackle by Dersma. Lost it, but it comes out the Dogs' way. McRae, hand pass to Williams, 52 metres out, kicks deep. Bontempelli in the one-on-one with Mackay, spills down towards Baker, slips the would-be tackle from Menzi. Redmond had a play on it, lost it. Bontempelli shoots in the pocket, it's smothered. Nice work from McGrath. Loose ball, top of the goal square, and Heppel trying to get it back to Martin. Very fortunately missed him, and Martin was able to scramble after the loose footy. It's through for a rush behind. The Bulldogs by 10 points. 14 go on second term, ABC Sport. Going to have to say that again, Corbs. That matchup was Bont and Pelly versus Mackay. 202 centimetre, over 100 kilo Mackay, and Bont had him. Mm. And Mackay had to work to make sure it got brought to ground. So Martin on the kick in gave it straight to Harrison Jones with a very long kick. He kicks to centre half forward. The umpire's blown his whistle, said come back, free kick to Hobbs in the marking contest with Ed Richards. Ben Hobbs. We'll have the Sharon inside the centre square just. Bombers' defence has been under siege in this second turn. Kelly runs off. Kelly's calling for it. He ignores Kelly, who was short, and goes longer but wider to Dersma, just inside that 50. Dersma's butchered the footy this quarter. Again, it is an important kick. Gresham's demanding it. But Dersma's pointed towards the goals and said, no. He's got the boot out, he's marked the grass, and he's going back to have a set shot. This is a run around, he has to do, if he's having a shot, he has to run around and use that stationary man on the mark to get the distance. Down to five, four seconds, so we better move it. He opens it up a little bit, he drives it long, he hangs it out, has that just squeezed through? I think it has! And Dersma whips out the bow and arrow. Not quite straight as an arrow. But it did enough. And Essendon hit back with their sixth goal of the game to be 6-1-37. The Doggies are 6-5-41.
And it's the Dogs with a lead of just four points. It's his second goal in black and red for Xavier Dersman. Downstairs, Tim Hodges. Uh, Kel, you made the call earlier that Zach Merritt pulled up short here. He's come to the bench. He waved off the physio. I'm just keeping note, uh, just underneath his sock, his right calf is very heavily strapped. So he's clearly come into this game with some sort of ailment with that right calf. Uh, so just keeping an eye on it, but he has waved the physio off, so I expect he'll come back on very shortly. Thanks, Hodge. I was watching him close after Kelly mentioned that too. He never got back to full speed when no. he was running, just sort of jogging up and down. He and... stopped suddenly, didn't he? Yep. Well, calves will do that for you. Oh. Mm. Keep a close eye on him. Bulldogs by four points on the back of the Durst McGull, but it's Essendon again going forward out of the middle. Durham hand past it. Draper kicks to the top of the goal square. Stringer got rid of his opponent. Rose hits a three for a goal. There's a return to send the package against the old team. He puts Essendon back in front. The Bombers 7-1-43. The Bulldogs 6 by 41 That is lead change number six. And we're only 16 minutes into the second turn. Mick Moldhouse, Cameron Lang, Friday night footy, ABC Sport. Three times they've gone inside the front 50 this quarter for two goals. One then out of the straight of the centre. They're the most difficult one. And as a key back, looking at um, Jonesy, just the panic of when that ball was not going to be marked. And once it hit the deck, he knew he was in trouble because we're not stringers like as far as recovery goes. But what, what it does tell you, if, if you can get the ball quickly near forward line, even though the dogs have dominated, really dominated this quarter in front of the, without scoring, they've gone from front half to the goal line seven or eight times. It, it's making the most of the opportunities. And Stringer there was able to capitalise. And the Bombers are going to win it out of the centre as, uh, as well. Draper down to Parrish. Parrish with the kick. Lands at centre half forward. Hobbs had it. He lost it. Stringer's in there and he's looking hungry. He's going to put a tackle on Johannesson. He gives it to English. Oh, what a tackle. That was brilliant by Merritt. No whistle. Don's fans aren't happy. As good as that was, it's the right call, though. Yeah. No yeah. prior opportunity. Ball's jarred free in the tackle, but what a tackle. So flicked up, and the Ruckman gives it down. A couple of quick handballs, and Merritt with the high kick. Top of the goal square, they're pressing again the Bombers. Just when it looked like the Bulldogs might crack open the real big opening in this contest, the first big opening in this contest, the Dons have hit back with the last two goals, and it's a ball up at the top of their goal square. Duray saw behind play. Goldstein clearly harms it. Richards hurries the kick and up and under, but Kelly Marks in front of Wakeman, the stronger player in the marking contest. Yeah, they're winning their one-on-ones and the other bombers, and, that, and that's what's bringing him back in the game. Even that, even that stoppage then, enough pressure was put on the, the dogs player not to be able to get that hand pass away and clear the area. So Jake Kelly's just got three career goals to his name, hasn't kicked one this year. He might have a shot from outside 50 here. In, no, he doesn't. He pulls it. He puts it at the top of the goal square where Goldstein is. Now where's the crummers? Gresham was involved. He was tackled by Trelaw. Oh, well done by Caldwell. Spins pirouette beautifully. And then the snap curls it across the face of goal through for a minor score. Yep. Out of bounds on the full. In fact, it missed everything. The Dogs race it back in. Liam Jones, hand pass away to... Jason Johannesson, the club's only Norm Smith medalist. Two bounces, kicks out of the defensive arc to Riley West. Second generation Bulldog. Son of a seven-time best and fairest winner, Scott West. Goes short to McRae in the team today. And starting after being the sub last week against the Cats. He goes long down the wing. Eugle Hagen gets rid of Mackay. No whistle on the play. Tugs the jumper of Menzi. He could be in trouble there. The ump says no. The ball rolls out of bounds. Actually, that's their cue, isn't it? The pull of the jumper. Yeah, it normally is. Come off the back, but... I was just watching Jack McRae, just seeing what the outcome is of his kicks. It's sometimes you get a bit confused with the percentages, but at the moment, he's, he's just not quite hitting those targets. Boundary throw in. Draper and English go at it. Draper wins it down. Menzi trying to fight through the tackle in the end. Disposed of it. There's a whistle on the play. It's a ball up. 55 metres out from the Bulldogs' goal. Kicking to the Coventry end in this second term. It's 20 minutes old. The Bombers by two. Martin goes to ground. Wants the free kick. Claims he didn't have it. And he's right. He's going to win it. Tackled by Gallagher. So Nick Martin's got it just inside that defensive 50. At the southern end. Bombers kicking to the left of your TV screen. Or the northern end in this second term. Short to merit. As, as always, in the architect... 
for Essendon. He goes long to the wing. Getting his hands to it there, but unable to take the mark was Harry Jones. And That ball got very close to John Menzies. He does not want to, anything to do with it. I reckon he's done his shoulder, his left shoulder. He's going to run back and play the winger role again. He's oh, so sore. Umpire's gone down and was trodden on just about, but he's quick to spring up to his feet as the Bulldogs hurry a kick. It'll land right on the arc. A free kick to the, um, Dyson Heppel in that two-on-two marking contest. Who was that winning? Jai Menzi on the oh, far right. wing got now. The physio's yep. getting to him, but yep. he wants to get as far away from the play as he possibly can. Heppel short to Caldwell. He's got it on the city wing. He goes to a one-on-one. -on -one. Stringer worked O'Donnell under the ball, but he couldn't take the mark, and the ball rolls over the boundary line. It'll be a boundary throw in on the outer side. And it's Essendon by two points. So Dogs kicked the first two of their second term, got out to a nine-point lead. Bombers kicked the last two, and there's just two points in it with five to play before half time. That left arm from Menzies is hanging low. It's already got strapping on it, but he's at this stoppage from the uh, boundary throw in. Comes down to Gresham of the Dons. Hand pass to Martin. Handball further afield to Parrish. Works it inside to Powerhouse Hobbs. He's kick smothered. Spills away towards Johannesson of the Bulldogs. Hand pass to Gallagher. Dogs win it back sent across the half back line. Jeray, hand pass retreats to Johannesson. That's a bullet straight onto the chest. Of English, hand pass out wide to Baker. Now the dogs transition. This is what the Bombers struggle to stop. Norton marks, away he goes. Three bounces, eventually comes back to him to finish his work. He misses near side. Oh. Release it earlier. Jamari Eagle Hagen takes a simple mark. It's a shot 10 metres out. Bombers by a point, 22 gone, second turn, Friday night footy on ABC Sport. Quick couple of kicks and Cox has got it on the uh, dockside wing. They've turned it over here, though. Richards is able to scoop up the ball, give it to Jones. Jones looking for Waitman. Beautiful. Marks on the chest. Surrounded by three bombers. Beautiful kick. Diamondsy coming to the bench. Get down to Hodgie very shortly. Waitman hasn't had too much of it this afternoon. Or tonight, I should say, rather. He's kicked straight to Heppel of the bombers. I'm not sure what was happening there. Just a moment of madness straight to the bombers. And then to Dersma, who's kicked backwards to Mackay in the defensive goal square. To Laverde, better get rid of it because Eugel Hagen was bearing down and now Merritt. Out wide, he goes with his kick. It's gone in slow motion again, isn't it? Called well. It's like everyone's sort of been running through. Um, yeah. Well, it's been fast, it's been furious, it's been free-flowing and there's four minutes to go before half-time, Mick. So I think it's fair to say they're um, buggered. Running through treacle. Yep. I don't use that sort of language. <laughs> Apologies <laughs> to the oldies that are listening. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> the hits keep coming, Cal. <laughs> well, well, you know, when the game slows down, here we go. Bit of action now in the centre of the ground because Parrish lost it for the Bombers and now the Doggies are away. Bramble has a bounce. Oh, his handball missed the target in Trelaw. Stealing it was Caldwell. Having a good game for the Bombers. Handballs to Gresham. Gresham kicks wider still on the city wing. Cox has got it. He's got Martin who can help him out, accepts the handball, spears the pass over the head of uh, a teammate in Langford and a little lucky because it's landed in the lap of Hobbs. Well, wow, it's just given the ball up. The, yep. uh, the dogs just absolutely slaughtered that last uh, entry inside. They had no one there, but if, it's, if there's no one there, you know, I'd just say torp it, put it out of bounds, do something, but don't kick it straight to the opposition. Uh, and it was, I mean, Essendon tried to give it up to the Bulldogs and said, yeah, exactly. Here, here's the corridor kick one. Then the dogs just gave it straight back, back to them. Yeah, yeah. So Ben Hobbs to extend the lead out to seven points. Toughish angle. Oh, it's been marked just inside the boundary by Langford. He beats in that marking contest Tim English and Bailey Williams. That would, that would make coaches very grumpy, I would imagine, Nick. Oh, you just can't believe it. So the kick for goal went right across the face and in the left forward pocket, Langford was able to work his way in front, take a pack mark, and he's going the snap. He's lining up for his second goal, and he's got it. They've got the last three, Essendon. Yep. It is quite an impressive surge from the Bombers, 8-1-49. A seven-point lead over the Dogs, 6-6-42. Six, six, Two minutes before half-time, Tim Hodges on the boundary. Uh, Kel, just an update on Jai Menzi from the Bombers. He came off the ground. Clearly that left shoulder was hanging low as Corbin called. Uh, he was almost arguing with the doctor to say he was fine when 
you know, you only had to look at him to know that he wasn't, and the doctor demanded he had to go down to the rooms. Nick Hind is up, he's with the physios right now, I think, he, after watching him come off, he, he thinks he's probably in this game because um, I just think it's impossible for Menzi to be coming back when his shoulder was in such a way to, to come off the ground. Third straight week, Nick Hind starts as the sub. It's a big turnaround in this game, momentum-wise. Yeah. It, oh, it is. Oh, it looks like by 10 points at one stage in this second term, and it felt like they were about to bust it open. The Bombers responding with the last three. Durham for the Bombers. Hand pass away to Merritt. Kicks to that outer wing. On the city side, Cox looks inside 50, but kick favours Jeray. It leads a couple of Bombers to the footy and marks for the Bulldogs at half-back. Pretty impressive, Jeray. Yeah. Two-time Premiership Hawk. He goes short to Johannesson. Got him to the half volley. Not a good kick. Hand pass back to Carver's down. Good tackle, Gresham. Advantage applied. Davey hands it back to Gresham. Kicks into the pocket. And Langford takes the sprawling mark. He kicked one from the left forward pocket. He's on the opposite side here. He's had a quiet night, Gresham, but that's the way you get yourself back into the game. Brilliant tackle. Followed. Bounced to his feet straight up, straight away. Followed up and a superb kick inside forward 50 to Langford. So now Langford's just got to take his time, think his way through this. Looks like he's lining up for a drop punt. Yeah. His, his right foot is against the fence. Well, maybe Banana. He's got... I might try a little check side here. Outside of the right boot. Langford misses far side. Behind. Essendon by eight, point. it's eight points. It's their biggest lead. Margin hasn't gone beyond 10 either way. We've had six lead changes. Essendon by eight. 27 gone second term. Friday night footy on ABC Sport. You're with Kelly Underwood. Johannesson kicks short on the kick into the Ruckman in English. Gives it back to Johannesson who kept running. Still looking to get it outside of 50. And now it does back to English. He can use Bailey Williams who's all by himself. Uh, hiding right next to the boundary line. At half back he's got it. He's going to kick backwards to Karmas. Final minute before half time. Karmas still in the defensive 50. O'Donnell. That's a sharp kick to Jurey. Got it on the city wing now, and Jurey couldn't quite hit his target in Gallagher, and now there's a turnover. Essendon pounce, quick hurry kick to Hobbs, who's marked it. Well, absolute lazy play by the Dogs. They, their forwards just deserted the kickers coming down. They wanted the easy one. They didn't make space, and they're paying a penalty. Hobbs down the line, and the mark is taken by Caldwell. And warm applause from Bombers fans. It's not the siren yet, Bombers fans, for the end of the game. We are at the halfway mark, but Essendon has got its nose in front. The Bombers lead by eight points, 8-2-50 to the Western Bulldogs, 6-6-42. Even though the Bulldogs got out to a nine-point lead early stages of that second term, Essendon kicked the last three. The goal kickers for the Bombers, Langford's got two, could have had three singles to Stringer. Dersma, David Jr., Martin, Caldwell and Goldstein. And for the Dogs, two each for Eugle, Hagen and West. Singles to Vandermeer and Norton. I mentioned at quarter time, Corbin, it was high scoring, it was entertaining, it was free flowing, it was a shootout. It's the footy we love. And this is what I love about this commentary box because Mick Moldhouse disagreed. He said there's not enough tackles. He likes low scoring slugfest. So whichever way you sit. Yep. We're enjoying the footy here tonight. These two teams, they've had some uh, memorable moments over the years. They actually played a final against each other in the not-too-distant past, the elimination final of 2021. There are 11 dogs remaining from that, 10 bombers. So over half the side changed over for both those teams in less than three full seasons. Uh, the bombers by eight points here at the half. Tim Hodges is with us on the boundary ahead of Mick Moldhouse and Cameron Ling. Hodgie. Uh, Corbin, just an update from the Bombers media department. We appreciate it from Jai Menzi, who went down to the rooms with that left shoulder. They're saying it was a stinger. The, the doctors are going to have a crack at restrapping the entire left shoulder, which was already heavily strapped, to try and get him back into this game. So they're not giving up on Menzi just yet. Expect him to feature in the third quarter. Thanks, Hodgie. Other memorable moments, round 21-2000, which we spoke about in the pre-game. <laughs> of course, the Bulldogs, the only team to, to beat the Bombers mm. that year. Yeah. Uh, the, the following year, Gary Moorcroft's mark. Yeah. Oh, yes. Three and one of the best of all time. So Check him, Bish. They've, uh, the same year, Tarrant took the best that year. Oh. They didn't give it to him. 
<laughs> I'm, not, I'm not bitter and twisted. There's no. some controversy. No. Uh, off the SMS from Gary says, Hi, this old bugger in Canberra really enjoying the call. And there you go, Gary. <laughs> have I just offended half our list? One for you. Go I'm just having a crack at you, Mick. You know, go you slow down. No, I said it last week, actually. I, I, was, no, I, I thought I might have got a message to say, don't come. F- I was f- sad, though. <laughs> I love old buggers, you know that. <laughs> Mick Moldhouse and Cameron Ling with their thoughts on that first half. The Bombers by eight points. A good response by the Bombers, Mick. Well, but I, uh, maybe I'm, and please tell me I'm going too negative on this. If the Dogs are going to be the team that I thought they could be this year, they don't let Essendon back into that when they had control of the game. Halfway through that second quarter, this was the Bulldogs game had it the way they wanted it to, and they could have just kept going and going and going and really broke it open, take it away from the Bombers. They they not only left the door ajar, they opened the door yeah. and said, come on in, guys. Yeah. Look, Lingy, I'll, I'll re-put myself on what I did last year. You could, you, you could predict that the dogs would have a shocking quarter. And all their good work goes down to Google. Then they have a fight on their last quarter. And they don't even necessarily win the last quarter and they lose the game. It's almost predictable again. We got This is round five. And we just know at some stage the dogs will stop. And I'm not going to repeat, this, repeat what you said. But it's exactly what I... You know, it's enough to say the opposition smell a little bit of um, complacency. Grab it. And then the dogs don't know how to stop it. And not only don't they know how to stop it, but... But they contest, what, what they base themselves on is this contested footy. Guess who won the contested football that quarter? Essendon, which, which is, if, if the dogs are winning contested football, generally they're up to it in their neck, but they cannot sustain it. 15 to 14 tackles that quarter. One, one uh, thing too, Mick, coming into this game, last week they would have looked at their game, Essendon, and said, we got destroyed in the centre bounce. Yeah. Connor Rosie, Butters, Horn Francis, Willem Drew, tore us to bits. Six to nineteen. Two with, goals with the centre clearances, at Port Adelaide's way. Ten to five. Essendon are winning the centre bounce clearance and two goals at half time and two goals from it. Yep. So Essendon have gone to work and credit to them that they yeah. fixed an area of the game they were really bad at last week. But then I look, I'm with you. I look at the Bulldogs and I think, hang on, that's Tom Liberatore, Marcus Ponson, yep. Pally. Yep. Uh, throw whoever else you want in there, but Jack McRae's going to go through there, whether it's Riley Sanders as a young player going through there, Tim English is a very fine ruckman going through there. We can't let Essendon get confidence in that area of the game because they were horrible at that last week. Let's take that away from them. At the very least, it's a break even. Don't let it turn into an Essendon strength and... That's what that's what's happened in that first half. And credit to the Bombers, they were able to fix it up from oh, yeah, one week yeah, to the yeah. next. Yeah. And at one stage there, Lingy, it was 7-1 to one inside 50s. And then the second one that went in there, they scored a goal. And the third one they went in, scored a goal. Then they started to eat into the... And, and put put the dogs under pressure. Uh, there's been some... I, I always like to think... And, and I, know it's, I know this mightn't sound much, but I used to say to my players, if I took a photograph of 10... 15 metres around the, around the ball and we outnumber the opposition, I'm happy. Yep. If, if we we're getting outnumbered, but more importantly, on a day like this, if I see my players run through that middle and look up and go, well, I don't know what I'd do with this football because Essendon have got three or four down here and my forwards have led to the other side of the ground because that's where it feels more comfortable, but they haven't run to me, so therefore I'm now made like an idiot. I just kick the football up under pressure Essendon take it and take it straight back, and they go, well, that's a, just a bad kick. No, have it running and making it easier for the kicker to run into his sight. Yeah, OK, there's other times when you've got a bit more time where you can do that, but Essen- well, look, I just think they're playing... The dogs are playing dopey football, lazy football, and an assumption football that it'll turn out that Pon- Bontempelli will get enough... Um, with McNaught. Now, look, Norton again. There we go. Yeah. Look, how good was he in the first quarter? Now, I can't. Was he on the ground in the second quarter? I, he could have been <laughs> sitting up with us for all I know. I don't know what he had. Yeah, he didn't have a lot of it. No, but where if he did, he uh, had two kicks. Yeah, well, I don't know where they were because, yep. let me tell you, they were a long way from uh, from our call. So the Bombers are up to this in the, you know, right up to it. 
Thomas. Don't look, the yeah. smile on your face, Corby, is just <laughs> unbelievable. It's fading and it's glowing. He says, uh, there hasn't been too much to smile about for 20 years as, uh, as an Essendon supporter. His uh, chin was hitting the floor last <laughs> Friday night. <laughs> Mick, was, I wanted to give you a cuddle as well. It was, it was pretty hard dragging that thing back from Adelaide. It was a tough dragging the, uh, the bottom lip all the way home. Um, just the first, the first time all year the Bombers have won a second quarter. In fact, in first half quarters, they were 1-7 and seven leading into the oh, night. Right? So uh, they win the first quarter by four points. They win the second quarter by the same margin. So... Uh, I'm no maths major, but you throw it together and it's Essendon by eight points at half time. Off the SMS, the Freo Cookster says, Corby, greetings from P-Town, which is Perth, by the way, uh, where it has, has, not, has not rained for months until today when 130 mils wow. fell in one hour in Clarkson. It's looking damp for James Taylor in Kings Park tonight. Uh, great call. Nice to hear from you. The Freo Cookster, the high ABC Sport Radio. Uh, what is the meaning of the armbands by the Essendon players? They're wearing it for a relative of one of the players, so that's why the Bombers have that on tonight. Uh, thanks for being with us. Obviously, marrying up the pitches at home, or perhaps you're in the ground, tuned in on ABC Radio. And from Anonymous, the Dogs will win by 15 goals. That's the same bloke that said this and got, haven't got a back line, I reckon. That's his third or fourth bottle. Amazing. Honestly, yep. after halftime, it's going to be a thrashing. So Anonymous doesn't have a lot of faith in the Bombers, <laughs> despite the fact they're up. By eight points at the half. More of your thoughts of the SMS 0437 774 774. Uh, there's a player that's been offered a one game sanction out of last night. There's also fresh injury concerns for Melbourne, uh, as there is for the Tigers. Uh, and meanwhile, out of uh, the North Melbourne Geelong game on Sunday, there are debutants for both teams. We'll tell you all about that in just a moment. And the third quarter isn't too far away. But first, let's get the latest from the ABC newsroom. <laughs> ABC News with Glenn Lauder. A person's been arrested in Sydney's west following the stabbing death of a teenage boy with police investigating possible youth gang connections. Alinia Chenery has the story. Police were called to a quiet suburban street in Duneside around 4 o'clock. Before they arrived, two teenage boys presented to Blacktown Police Station with multiple stab wounds. One boy died at the scene while another was taken to hospital in a serious condition. Authorities say the person in custody was located nearby the crime scene in Duneside. They also say they are looking for further suspects and have established crime scenes at both locations. Less than a fortnight after the death of an Australian aid worker in Gaza, another volunteer says they too have been attacked. Former journalist and UNICEF worker Tess Ingram says her convoy was hit by bullets while delivering fuel, nutrition and medical supplies to hospitals and health centres. It's unclear where the shots came from, but both parties of the Israel-Gaza conflict were made aware of the convoy's movements. Zomi Franken was among seven volunteers killed with the aid agency World Food Kitchen in an Israeli attack earlier this month, which Israel has since apologised for. The US has restricted travel for its embassy personnel in Israel amid continuing fears that Iran may retaliate for the destruction of its consulate in Damascus. Here's the BBC's James Landale. Israel today is very much in a holding pattern. Iran has promised to retaliate for the attack on the Iranian consulate in Damascus, the Syrian capital, last week. And as a result of that, there are now serious concerns, particularly in the United States, that Iran is serious when it says it will retaliate. And so the Americans and the Israelis are doing everything they can to try to deter that attack. There have been private diplomatic signals sent by the Americans through their allies in the Gulf to Tehran to say, look, there must be restraint. Energy experts are defending the long-term cost of renewables amid warnings that consumers will be receiving larger bills. Speaking at the National Press Club this week, CEO of Alinta Energy, Jeff Dimery, said Australians would have to pay more for energy in the future as coal-fired power is phased out and replaced by renewable sources. Associate Professor Roger Dargaville from the Monash Energy Institute says renewable energy is still cheaper in the long term. It's, it's an obvious point that wind and solar doesn't produce power when the wind isn't blowing or the sun isn't shining. So you need additional services like batteries, pumped hydro storage to keep the system going. And so they come with additional costs. But when you add them in, renewables are still cheaper than fossil fuels moving forward. There are fears letter delivery cutbacks by Australia Post could be among further cost-cutting measures. The changes, which will begin on Monday, will see 98% of locations 
have letter deliveries reduced to every second business day and delivery times for ordinary letters extended by a business day. Professor of Marketing at Charles Darwin University, Stephen Greenland, says consumers can also expect prices to increase. I think what you've got to put in perspective is this reduction in delivery is going to be one of a number of measures that are implemented to reduce the costs. So you'll see reduction in Ospost outlets, reduced collection services, and this will be in conjunction with probably price hikes. A Queensland Police Service employee accused of selling the details of an alleged domestic violence victim to a perpetrator has appeared in court. Here's Talissa Saganto. Carol Kellaway appeared in the Brisbane Magistrates Court this morning, charged with four counts of computer hacking and misuse and one count of unlawful stalking. It's alleged the 46-year-old improperly accessed the QPS database and then sold the information of a domestic violence victim to a respondent between 2021 to 2023. It's alleged the respondent then used the information to stalk the aggrieved. The staff member, who police said was a member of Road Policing and Regional Support Command, has been suspended and is currently on bail. The matter was adjourned to later this month. Updating sports news now and in the A-League men's competition, the Wellington Phoenix have temporarily returned to the top of the ladder after a dramatic win over Melbourne victory. Finn Sermon scored his first ever A-League goal in the fifth of six minutes of time added on to give his side a thrilling 1-0 win. The result has ended the victory's chances of winning the Premier's plate and Wellington can now finish the regular season no lower than second place. That's it for ABC News. So what makes us Australian? Just be whoever you want to be. And who's the obvious person to ask how that's transforming? Welcome to Broken Hill, Miriam. I'm on a quest to learn what it takes to change and adapt. Occupation. I'm actually an escort. Oh. An influencer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Miriam Margulies, Impossibly Australian. You are changing the world. Starts Tuesday, April 9 on ABC TV and always free, always entertaining on ABC iView. This is ABC Sports coverage of the 2024 AFL season. Every match on the ABC Listen app. Look for the AFL button. Latham Vanderveer to make the Bombers pay. He treads this through. And returns the Bulldogs to the front. Jeray in the front half. Away to Liberatore. Kicks off the right peg. Inside 50. No mark. Hits the deck. Bontepelli soccers it out in front. Almost stepped on it. West puts it in the back of the net. The Dursen has pointed towards the goals. He opens it up a little bit. He drives it long. He hangs it out. Has that just squeaked through? I think it has. And Dursma whips out the bow and arrow. Durham hand past it. Draper kicks to the top of the goal square. Stringer got rid of his opponent. Rose puts it through for a goal. There's a return to send the package against the old team. He puts Essendon back in front. In the left forward pocket, Langford was able to work his way in front. Take a pack mark. And he's going the snap. He's lining up for his second goal. And he's got it. The 2024 AFL Premiership season. On your radio. ABC Sport Digital. And on the ABC Listen app. It's Friday night footy on ABC Sport. Essendon by eight points at the half. They've kicked the last three goals of the game. It's been a back and forth affair. Six lead changes. The margin hasn't been beyond ten points either way. And at halftime, it's the Bombers with their nose in front. An eight-point advantage over the Bulldogs. Corbin Middlemass, Kelly Underwood calling the footy. Tim Hodges on the boundary. Uh, along with Mick Moldhouse, of course, the coaching icon, and Cameron Ling, who is soon to be inducted as a legend into the Geelong Football Club Hall of Fame. So uh, great to have you with us throughout the night. The SMS number 0437 774 774. We'll get to a few of those in just a moment. Uh, some NRL scores. So if you're interested in the rugby league tonight, the Melbourne Storm had a win, snuck home against the Canterbury Bulldogs, actually had to come from behind. Uh, scored a try and was able to convert that in the last six minutes. So the Storm uh, getting out of dodge there against the Bulldogs. So 16-14 full-time at Amy Park. Meanwhile, in the Battle of Brisbane, the third derby ever between the Broncos and the Dolphins. It is halftime and the Brisbane Broncos lead 6-4 to a two-point advantage and a low-scoring affair up in Brisbane. So you can catch that through the ABC Listen app. Just look out for the ABC Sport button. Uh, around the AFL world today, the fallout from last night, uh, the Brisbane Lions winners over Melbourne. Injury to add to that for the Demons. So Christian Salem did his hamstring. It looked a serious one. The club saying at least four weeks. 
So Christian Salem at least four weeks sideline with a hamstring injury. Clayton Oliver has had surgery on his troublesome finger today. So 12-day break between today and when they next play on Anzac Day Eve. That's the clash up against Richmond in round seven. So a bye next week for the Demons. They're hoping Oliver won't miss any footy, but he has had some clean-up surgery done today. And the news from the MRO is that Charlie Cameron has been offered a one-match ban. Uh, that charge coming back as a rough conduct charge. Careless beat him and high, and as a result, offered one match, which means he'll miss the game against Geelong unless he challenges. Uh, just some other quick other news around the competition. Tim Taranto is having surgery on his wrist. He won't play uh, on Sunday against the West Coast Eagles, so that's a growing injury list for the Tigers. And two guys are on debut. We learned about Conor O'Sullivan yesterday. He's going to wear Joel Selwood's old number, pick 11 in last year's national draft. And Tyler Sellers who wasn't even signed until the end of the preseason. He was playing Vaffa footy last year in the Amos. Made his way to North Melbourne to play in the reserves. Kicked six in a in the first game of the year in the VFL. And now he's debuting for North Melbourne to play up front on Sunday. That's a feel-good story if I've ever seen one. What a journey, hey? <laughs> That's uh, exciting. Um, tough challenge to go down to Cadinia Park <laughs> and, uh, and take on the Cats. But... Guess who he's playing on? Stuart. <laughs> yeah, do, a do a job for us. Um, cats are excited about Conor O'Sullivan, Corbs. Uh, very excited. Our own Brett Delidio is his uh, player manager yes. with Max Sport. So we hear lots of big things about Conor O'Sullivan. And uh, we actually called him in last year's Ovens and Murray Grand uh, Final, yes. where we, we made a little trip out to, uh, to Albury to call that for ABC Sport. But that they... I mean, big raps. I mean, Joel Selwood's just retired and they hand him the number 14. Yeah, great size. I think 200 centimetres or, or thereabouts and a good big motor. And from what I'm told, incredibly competitive. Wow. Almost, almost <laughs> aggressively and stubbornly competitive, which I love, love that it. trait. I That's brilliant. You, I knew you would. Uh, off the SMS, 0437 774 774. David from Brunswick's come to help us out. Dew forms when a surface cools down below the temperature at which water condenses out of the air. Exactly. Changing states of matter from gas to liquid. I hope you're still with me so far. It doesn't really matter if it's indoors or not like at Docklands. You see this on the beer taps at pubs, for example. Generally, though cooler air holds less water, which means dew forms more easily especially if it's a clear day and the temperature drops quickly at night from David. Well, that's enough. I reckon that's. I reckon he's nailed it. Right. Well, to me, that's just a series of words thrown together. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone from chemistry to physics. Now, <laughs> now, we're, now we're really well, 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 in trouble. Well, can I ask, I'm going to ask another question. Does Lingy pass? That, that guy there, he yep. will give him an answer. Thank you, David. You're going to have to hit us back up again. That's David from Brunswick off the SMS. Uh, from Riley, I'm sick to death of seeing players slip over 10 times per quarter. It's become a blight on all games. It needs to change, all due to one injury to Quainall. Are they talking about... Talking about this, that's a bit different. That was studs up. Or the, yeah, the studs that Sam Wicks wore. I think he had the metal studs oh, in, and then okay. it left a gash oh, on Quainall's okay. leg, and as a result, they changed the rule. They were metal long stops. studs, though. I think, I think you, so. You can still wear longer stops on your boot. They're, they're more moulded rather than screwing, but they can be a longer moulded yeah. than the what a lot of them wear. OK, here we go. Into the second half. This game is well and truly up for grabs. It's Essendon by eight points. Bounce in the centre. A couple of cracks at it. Trelaw on the bottom of the pack somehow gets it out to Liberatore. He gets his kick away while he's slung in a tackle. Ball hits the deck. Eugle Hagen's there. Straight through the legs of McRae. Puts his head down. Goes in hard. Trelaw. His handball out comes off the legs of Durham. Oh, crunching in there. Goldstein might have hurt himself. It was Liber one way, Goldstein the other. Well, and Liberatore, the ball of muscle, has poured Goldstein down. Well, they're both... Free kick, 50 mid. Well, I'm telling you right now, both players put their head down. One had to come down a lot further than the other one, but both were going for the ball. Both yeah. low, both bending over, both eyes for the ball. No free kick. No free if, kick whatsoever there. If we want to stop people getting hit in the head like that, we can't actually reward them. Oh, for technique where they've led with the head. Goldstein led with the head. Give him a shot his body. for goal. He's 55 out. It's going to fall short. Into the goal square it goes. English got hands to it. Here's a chance. Johannesson just grubbers it out to Liberatore. Handball 
off to Norton. Breaks a would-be tackler, steps around and then kicks long to a two oh, to Darcy. Oh, Sam Darcy. Exquisite in front. He's like a baby giraffe, but he knows how to mark. And now Bontempelli to a one-on-one. -on -one. It's Vandermeer v Kelly. Couldn't take it in the air. On the deck, both go to ground. Running away from goal. Umpire's picked out a free. It's going to the Bulldogs. You see what that was for, Lingy? Oh, was against Kelly. He signaled ground underneath him. Leg, didn't he? Yeah, he's, he's what a mark. He signaled leg, but I'd like to get another look at that. Yeah, so that's... Vandermeer's free kick within range, right up against the boundary line, though. Well, the exciting part about that was outside the contest was the mark of Darcy. Yeah. Was it wasn't absolutely. You had to reach behind his head to get that. So Vandermeer out of bounds and now crosses the 50 to the top of the goal square. Eugle Hagen couldn't quite grab it. Under pressure from the defenders and Durham with the kick away. Langford and Richards in a one on one. Richards with the spoil. Brambles there. Richards goes again. Breaks the tackle of Langford in hot pursuit. Ziggs then zags on his left. Eugel Hagen! Oh, it was a hanger! The umpire says play on. Eugel Hagen got up so high. Almost took it one handed. That was a spectacular hover in front of the Bulldogs cheer squad. Play on, says the umpire. Bulldogs have got it. Liberatore gives it to his captain. Off to Bondampelli, to Kamas. A high ball, and this time taking the mark is Goldstein over English. I think the doctor wants to get Goldstein off the ground to just check him out after that contact before. And he's just taking that grab. But what a, you know, they played Abler to mark like that some years ago. It was the <laughs> yeah. mark of the century. If he's got he's had a bigger hold of that. That was an unbelievable leap. The Bombers for the short kicking game out of defence. Nick Martin with it at the halfback. Essendon by eight points. I think everybody's looking around, looking for the replay of that uh, Jamara Hugo-Hagen leap. We're still waiting. Kicks down the wing. Cox marks, hands it back to Nick Martin as he sends another half volley further afield to Menzi. Collects, gives it back to Nick Martin. He's in trouble. Tried to break the tackle, holding the ball. Well, he's missed two kicks trying to come down the wing on the outside, Nick Martin, and then eventually sold a hot pass coming back. Tried to fight through the Williams tackle and lost it. You sound like you're saying Mick Martin when you say Nick Martin. Yeah. It takes me back to the old kangaroos days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very uh, aesthetically, it must be said, as Williams <laughs> goes long inside the forward 50, hands on it from Goldstein, no mark. Now he grabs the footy off the deck. He's tackled by English and taken to ground. We'll have a ball up half forward here for the Bulldogs. Well, here's our replay. Eugle Hagen. Oh, gee, he had a big piece. Oh, yeah, didn't he? Wow. Yeah, he almost... Almost grabbed it in a one-handed style motion. Mm. Forward 50 stoppage for the Bulldogs. Hand pass from Liberatore, but straight to Nick Martin, who kicks it <laughs> up the wing. Bouncing footy in front of Harry Jones. He just socks it 40 metres further afield. Buku Kamas leads the chase back. Ahead of Gresham. Kamas knocks it out in front once, twice. Gresham wants to keep it alive, and in the end, Richards forces it out. We'll have a boundary throw in half forward for the Bombers. Essendon by eight points. Early doors, third turn. Tim Hodges on the boundary. Uh, this is interesting. So the doctor did go out to Todd Goldstein after that head contact and Goldstein waved him away. The doctor came back, watched the vision again and he's gone straight back out to Goldstein. I think they want him off the ground and again he's waved him away. So this is a really uh, it's a really ugly sort of uh, scenario that the doctors have to face during a game when a player doesn't want to come off. From the boundary throw in Draper took it out of the air put it straight on his boot and taking the mark in, in front of his opponent was uh, Harry Jones Harrison Jones. This is a situation where there needs to be some mechanism where you can force him off. Almost the play stops. If that, they, Doc, uh, it's up for the umpire, really. It, sh yeah. it should be an emergency umpire runs out with the trainer and says, right, you've got to come off. So Jones marked in front of Jones. That is Jones the Bulldogs, the man on the mark, 45 out directly in front. Harrison Jones has got what it takes. And it's the biggest lead by Essendon for the night. It's 14 points. It's four in a row for Essendon. A surge that no one saw coming. 9-2-56. The Bulldogs 6-6-42 after the Bulldogs led by nine points halfway through that second term. What did you say, Kelf? Last four goals, did you say? Yeah. Last four goals. That's, it doesn't seem like Essendon have dominated, but, they've, but the scoreboard says that. Yeah. If you've kicked the last four, because the dogs have had enough of the football. What's let them down the first quarter? They scored so easily 
since then it's been a real it's all dried up there's been no one's marking the ball in close there's there's uh, the, the crumbing's gone to sleep it's really now you almost think that they're going to have to fluke a goal and they and they will have to get a goal quickly otherwise this game will, will go out of their reach just to Hodgie's point now Goldstein's rucking so we've had a goal and a stoppage and Goldstein staying out there won it down but to Bontempelli hand pass to Liver gives it to Trelaw floats a kick inside 50 Jamara claiming the mark up says yes he had enough of it there was a pack of four or five and Eugle Hagen will shoot just left of centre from 45 out well he's the, he's the most reliable forward down there outside of, and Darcy's missed two but Norton is just... He's, Norton's doing most of his damage up around the, up, up here. This, that's, I just can't understand why the dogs don't play him further up. Because he does win the ball and gets it in there. They need this one to go straight. Off that left boot from Jamara Hagen. Toe meets leather. The drop punt sails. Goldward. He's got three. It's one the dogs had to have. They've got it. They're going to check it though, Corps. Just in case it grazed the post, I reckon. It was very close to that left-hand goal post. The umpire says, yep, I think that's good, but let's have a look. So this is the scenario that's been spoken about all week, where the goal's been scored, the ball should come back to the middle. Yeah. They say they review every goal anyway. Instead, the umpire calls for the review. So everybody gathers, and instead of setting up for the restart, we do the review, then we walk back to the middle, and more time's lost. And, and if it's a point, yep. okay... Which, which, if the umpire's call point, you stay down there. If he's call goal, you go to the exactly. So, nothing on Snicko, that's all good. The goal will stand in Essendon's lead. You can shave six, six off that. So, from 14 up to now eight up, the Bulldogs with their seventh goal of the night. They move to 7 6 48. Essendon a 9 2 56. Eight minutes travelled in the third term. Eugle Hagen has three. Mick, you've been bang on about Norton. He kicked the first goal for the Bulldogs, and you said, and that'll be it until the last quarter and it has been really I mean he's pl playing further up the ground but for a player that came in with only four goals to his name and yeah. it's just out of the one yeah look and, and, and never I, I would like to look at the four goals he's kicked or the five goals he kicked yep. and when did he get them and I know that at least two have come in the first few minutes of the game and nothing else happened so Get him up the ground. Let him let him get involved up around the ground. This is where he can use his pace and his marking ability. I know I'm harping on it, but sometimes I just think well, there's, there's, a, stub it. Well, there's yeah. a stubbornness sometimes because you, you want things to happen, but they're not happening. Essendon by eight points. Goldstein in the ruck against English. English flicks it back towards Liberatore. Works it to Trelaw. Push in the back. Umpire says coming back. Oh, Eugle Hagen took the mark. Yeah, he, yeah. he was going to say play on advantage, and then he decided bring it back. So Libba's got it, and he gives it to Jeray. Little handball. Jeray goes long with the kick. Darcy got a hand to it, but he was out of position. West looks over the Essendon player at the bottom of that pack, and that is Durham. Ball up. Directly in front of the Bulldogs' goal. Norton is playing at full forward. He's in the goal square. Goldstein, too much experience for Sam Darcy. Ooh. He grabs it. He's tackled to the turf. And the umpire says, give it to me. Yeah, and he tried to ward, mm. ward them off. I, I mm. suspect that he's been very lucky there. This time, Darcy beats him to it. Straight down the throat of Liberatore to <laughs> Trelaw. Then to Baker. Wants to find a bit of space on his right boot. He's going for the goal square, Laverti. Fists it over the line. Jaden Laverde turns 28 today. He'd love to celebrate his birthday with an upset win. The Bombers are leading by seven points, led by four at quarter time and eight at half time. He's Andy McGrath, the club's only number one pick in history. Goes long for Essendon up to the wing, pumped away in the side. Uh, by the dogs in Liam Jones. Comes down to Cordwell, though. Hand pass to Hobbs. Kicks down to half forward. Clean balls Harry Jones and O'Donnell. The captain's onto it. Merritt against the boundary line. Kicks for Davey. Win a one-on-one -on -one there with Richards. They're wrestling for it. It'll sit for Richards. And in the end, he gets a little drop kick out. Number of players come to lend a hand. Bramble the weight towards Fonten Pally. Goes through traffic. What a tackle. Harry Jones runs down Richards. Trying to clear the defensive 50. And Harry Jones at full stretch has got him just as he tried to kick the ball. And Jones will shoot from centre-half forward. Oh, great play. 196 centimetre key forward with that sort of follow-up and tackle. Just superb play. He kicked a goal already in this quarter from a good mark and a set shot. 
after a tackle like that, if he can go back and nail this, this would really lift his teammates. As the Bulldogs have got a little bit of momentum and are surging back the other way just a touch. Superb defensive act. Chase down tackle in the forward 50 to finish off his work. Not quite. Misses out to the left. What's been an otherwise accurate night for the Bombers. They're 9-3. The Western Bulldogs are 7-7. The Dons by eight points. That's the Dons, D-O-N-S, as opposed to D-O-G-S. Eight-point lead for Essendon, 12 gone, third quarter. Dogs work it up towards Sam Darcy and Norton. Neither can take it in the air. Vandermeer right in front of those interchange gates. He's got West, who really has to pump those legs, and he does. That's a great kick. That, that is a really smart kick there. He didn't have much to kick the ball to his space to make the player run into it. West is going to poke it, looking for Norton, who popped out in the pocket. Got a step or two on Ben Mackay. Wow, that was... Watching Ben Mackay and Norton there, Mackay just played it so silly. He just cruised along. Norton was always going to give a little backlade into that bit of space, and Mackay just... No body. No, just assumed, oh, no, he'll be right. He'll just go and stand on the goal line and watch him have his set shot. He let it crash in him. There's no, no sin. So, Norton on the approach. The left footer in the left pocket. And it's too skinny. It's too narrow. It's missing to the near side. He kicked it like a player who's a little down on form. Margin seven. Bombers lead. Martin hits up Jake Kelly. And he goes short with the kick to Dersma. I'm still amused how sides are able to walk and waddle through the back 50 before pressure goes on them. Dersma high up and under the wing. Drake, I got a fair piece of it. No mark, but he's getting a free kick and his arms chopped by Liam Jones. It's good last week. Liam Jones played on Tom Hawkins, kept him goalless. Doesn't happen too often. Draper is going laterally across the ground to Dersma. Found that Port Adelaide, he played as like the offensive winger, Dersma. It hasn't been his... Spence most of his time in the back half, yeah, yeah. almost as the defensive of the two wingers. The wing back. Yes. Kicks long out to half forward, off hand, spills down to Darcy, looks in the middle of the ground for the Bulldogs, and Redmond takes the intercept mark. Shaved his locks in the off season for children's cancer as he kicks long inside the forward 50, pack forms, spills out the back. Uh, Bramble wants the safety of the boundary line, gets it. There's enough pressure there as it's knocked out of play and a boundary throw in. Left forward pocket for Essendon. The Bombers by seven points. They kick four in a row either side of half time. The Dogs got the last one. We're 14 minutes into the third term. This is Friday Night Footy on ABC Sport. Deep in the attacking end for the Bombers. Boundary throw in. Darcy reaches up above. Caldwell to Durham. Left, right, snap, bounce, misses. Misses everything after the bounce. So it'll be a boundary throw in. We'll get set for another stoppage. Strange kick. It's 6.6 by 2. It's 13 odd metres. <laughs> He's missed everything, but he was clear. I don't know if he just thought he was about to be under pressure. Right? Whirling ball out of the ruck. Durham snap. Uh, Durham. Rather the ruckman it was that had the quick snap and slipped over as he kicked it and missed it. Who was the ruckman for Draper? Uh, no, that was Sam Darcy. Just a young one. Yeah, he got moved to the ball. Uh, way too... Two days have oh. tied me up there, but... Dogs out of defence, few nervy moments for Bramble, but he's worked it out, kicks down the wing, and Fox takes the intercept mark. So he's got to go in quick. Win some territory battle here. They lock the footy in, can't get on his right side. Hand pass goes back to Redmond, measures his kick and finds Sammy Durham, who takes the mark. High half forward for Essendon. Now you slow it down. When Cox had the chance, it had to go in quick. Now just be a bit more patient with it. Crowded forward 50. Durham's just going to lay it up to the top of the goal square. Bottom Pelly puts his fist through it. Still doesn't reach the boundary line. McRae, hand pass to Baker. He's out of play, surely. See the boundary on Pice in the spot. He was standing on the people's toes in the front row, and the up says it's all OK. Long kick goes out of bounds off the foot of Baker anyway. And the Bombers will get it back. Right half forward, 70 metres out. Essendon by eight points. 16 gone in the third term. Jaden Laverde. Sharon's in his hands. Drives it long. He's looking for a mark. English almost juggles it. Draper steals it out of his hands. A little kick in the favour of Gresham. Goes back to Merritt. Merritt's kick is smothered. Now the dogs. Gallica spins. Tackle. Gone. Free kick Essendon just on the 50. And Nick Cox's ball. He's almost got the distance from yeah, me. He, he, he can go the distance. 
They haven't let up the Bombers all night. He doesn't go for the distance. He goes for Stringer, who's got an aura about him. He charged out in front of three Bulldogs, and he's taken the mark right on 50. And he's just crossed the boundary line. Actually dominating this last five minutes. Dogs are lucky to be hanging on. What, what are they kicking the last five minutes? Just a goal, is it? Yep, a, a goal apiece to start this third term. The dogs look like they had them early. But We're 16 minutes into the third. And this is for a 14-point lead for the Bombers. Stringer's got it. He crosses the boundary line. Right on the arc. He lets rip. It's got to come back, and it doesn't. Yeah, just just me misses. So Essendon won nine points. 9-5-59. The dogs, 7-8-5. 50. They have kicked four out of the last five goals, Essendon. And the last three scoring shots all behind, though. So the dog's hanging in here, and Essendon keeping them in the game as John, uh, Johannesson goes short to the back pocket. Oh, Gives it to Bramble, back yeah. to Johannesson. Dangerous handball, smothered. Kick smothered by Draper. Jammed it on the boot himself. He's kicked mowed down. McRae, hand pass away to Bramble. Kicks wide to Richards. And they can't get out of their back half at the moment. The Bulldogs, Richards, marks against the boundary line. Kicks up to the wing. Couple of one-on-ones. Mackay edges Norton under the foot. He takes the mark. So the Bombers again trap it in, win the territory battle. He goes back and across to Kelly. Tim Hodges is on the boundary. Hodgie. Uh, the sub has been made for the dog. So Bailey Dale comes in. The story is going to be Riley Sanders. And if the uh, TV cameras caught his reaction when he was told he was subbed out of the game, he threw his water bottle. He threw the towel. He had a, a, absolutely Ooh. threw the toys out of the cot. So Ooh. he was seething to be subbed out again so so much hype about Riley Sanders but he, yeah. is, he is out of this game so I'll be fascinated and you guys can see the coverage if this has been captured on camera it will be uh, some sort of story yeah we wouldn't play next week I'll give you the tip oh, picks. really no no way he's got to learn 19 year old right. yeah, that's exactly super why super competitive passionate loving it no. you, pick, want, you want him to be angry to be subbed out of the game pick 6 in last year's draft second time he's been subbed out in 5 weeks Turnover from the Bulldogs. Davey, middle of the ground, short kick to Gresham. Centre half forward, took too long. Drilled eventually in the tackle. He did at 360. And then all of a sudden was in the same spot. And Jura A came and got him, mowed him down, wins the footy back edge of the centre square. Essendon by nine points, 18 and a half gone, third turn. Take, take a deep breath. Oh, cooked four of his teammates. Yeah. Yeah. So Jeray uses Jones, Liam Jones by foot, then goes to Oscar Baker, who's had plenty of it tonight by foot. And now Bailey Dale coming on as he started for, after he started for the sub. He was looking for English. He's kicked him, hit the mark. Essendon with the turnover. Gresham stood his ground with McRae bearing down. Quick hands. Parrish is involved. Now it's flicked wide, the kick. It sits here for Harry Jones, doesn't take the mark. He's looking for Stringer. Stringer surrounded by five. Stringer, they all go to ground the Bulldogs players. The umpire says there's a free kick, and it's going the way of the Bombers a hold. So Stringer's got the free kick. He's beaten one, two, three, four, five Bulldogs in that contest. He was surrounded. Very poor play by the Dogs in, in, in a number of areas. Across the centre line here. Perhaps the kick to English started a bit stiff that he didn't get paid a free kick. The ball got rebounded, and they were just totally outnumbered. So many Bulldogs players were forward. Ball got turned over. They had five in the back half. Just watching the replay. So while they were arguing, Kyle Langford has casually just put the goals through, and the umpire says, you know what? That stands. Play on advantage. So yeah. Langford's actually just kicked his third goal for the night. Yeah, they caught advantage. Um, what on earth... Jake Stringer was desperate to get the handball off and everything. That's my free kick. I want to kick the goal. A terrible free kick to give away given they had three or four Trelaw. players. For law. Yeah. Really? That's a, mid that, a midfielder who spends no time back there, completely panicking and not understanding. We had it covered. Back in the middle, Goldstein palms it down to Gresham. Hurried kick inside the forward 50. All of a sudden, key point in the game, this. Picked up by Langford. Gets rid of Karmas. Kicks for Stringer in the pocket. Leaps up. Tries to juggle Markham. Says play on. Hits the deck. They all miss it. Trelaw goes back. Collects for the Bulldogs. They're under the pump here. The Dogs midway through the third. Through Jaray, then Baker. Hand pass out to Vandermeer. Back flank. Kicks down the wing and finds Waitman, who's been quiet. It's Essendon by a game high. 15 points. And the Bulldogs are under the pump big time here as we tick into time on in this third term. Momentum with the Bombers. 
This is a huge final five minutes in this third quarter for the Bulldogs as Waitman looked down the line. So he's been quiet tonight. He tried to hit up uh, Norton and the spoil from behind. So a boundary throw in on the city side wing. Well, it, it dominated early. It hardly had the ball inside the front 50, and that methodology at the moment is so slow taking the ball forward. Flick back in it, missed both ruck. Martin's there to mop up. Handballs to McGrath, takes off, has a bounce, hits the bullseye, drives it long, looking for Stringers there. It's a two-on-two. -two. Langford's there as well. V. Jones and Karmas. And Jones and Karmas team up to see it over and breathe a big sigh of relief. Bulldogs fans, they are sitting, applauding on the edge of their seat. They have enjoyed this contest to date. It was Essendon by four at quarter time, by eight at half time, and they lead it by 15. Approaching three-quarter time. Back it goes. Goldstein. Parrish picks it up. Missed the handball. His teammate slipped over. And now Baker gets it and he's dragged down. Play on, says the umpire. Caldwell's got it. Sends it inside 50 in English marks. That's got to come back. The player's just jamming the ball on his boot. When in right close to the crowd where he can't hear the whistle. The teammate's got a free kick. He can't call advantage there. English back to Liam Jones, marks in the defensive goal square, short to the pocket for Bramble. Essendon well set up, the Dogs hemmed in. And Bramble goes short to Jaray, he marks against the boundary line at halfback. Davies coming to get him, affects the kick. Ball slides away to McRae, falls to ground, there's a free for a push. It was a push from Davey in the chase down tackle effort. Into the back of Jaray, so it's coming back to yeah, the Premiership Hawk. Yeah, he's pushing it back. They get, they're just bogged, they're, they're feeding him. All they're doing now at the moment is getting the hammer up and the nails in the coffin. This they're is just not working hard enough. Something that Dons haven't been good at trying to lock teams into the defensive half. Jones goes the short way home. Jeray kicks straight down the pipe. Picks off Waitman, middle of the ground. Quick transition now to the top of the goal square. Chase on back for the footy. But Laverde is the first one there. Gets around Jamara, kicks to a two-on-one. That didn't favour the Bombers at all. Darcy with the intercept mark. They're queuing up in the corridor and Waitman jumps in front of Trelaw to take it for the Bulldogs. And Cody Waitman will shoot from right on 50, centre-half forward. <laughs> Fans have got a long memory, haven't they? That's, those boos are from when Waitman in staged Tassie? for a few free yeah. kicks in Tassie. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. I couldn't work it out. I thought the only thing was Tassie. That was years ago. <laughs> Most of these fans would have been watching at home in their living rooms during <laughs> lockdown and weren't even at the game, but lives in the memory for that day, Cody Waitman, and a lot of them direct results from free kicks. Yep. He's got the shooter's sleeve on. Does he have the shooter's boots on? Right footer, drop punt, sails, goalward. No. Out to the left of the hole. Oh, they needed that one. 10-5 to 7-9. It's Essendon by 14 points. 25 gone in the third. The Bombers... Just feels like they're clinging on by their fingernails, aren't they? doesn't it? Yeah. Well, they need one before three-quarter time. This could... This will be really hard in the last quarter for them. Martin on the kicking goes long. Jeray with the sick. Got up high, but nowhere near the Sharon. English mops it up. Handballs to Waitman. Gives it back to Jeray. Throws it on that left boot. It's going to land in the left forward pocket. Fist was good from Laverde over the boundary. Ben Cameron's all over the numbers for you, Mick. So Aaron Norton's five goals this year. Yep. Three of them have come in the first quarter of games. Yep. The other two, one in Q2, one in Q3. Right, there he is. So he hasn't kicked one in the final term at all, all year. Yeah. And the first, so out of the five, three in the first quarter. And I'll guarantee they come in the first few minutes. Boundary throw in deep inside the Bulldogs' territory. But it's all Essendon. Zach Merrick gets the clearing kick. Skies it. No one can take the mark. Bramble at ground level. Breaks the tackle. Wheels around in front of the Bulldogs' bench and then kicks out of bounds on the full. Over the head of his teammate. And it was Gallagher. And Parrish will take it. I did his game against Melbourne. He kicked the first goal of the game in the opening minute. Yeah. And his one tonight was three minutes in. Yep. I'll see if I, I'll get the other one for you. Sorry, it was in Ballarat. As Parrish sends it down the wing, coming from the back, Harry Jones. Couldn't take the mark. Ball hits the deck. Hobbs, clean pickup, and then shakes the would-be tackle from Liberatore. There's a glimpse of what he could become as he kicks a high ball to the wing. G. Richards, he's back of his head at the roof. Didn't come down with the foot. He spills to Durham. Hurry, kick forwards out on the full. Wow, there's been some potential screamers. 
That was the Richards leap. He was up on Menzies' back and just slipped through his fingers. The crazy ball. Richards has got it again here. Half back for the Bulldogs. Essendon by 14 points late in the third term. Friday what? night footy on ABC Sport. Blaming the Jew, are we? We could have seen Mark of the Year from Richards and Eugle Hagen, but we're blaming that Jew. Richards runs around the man on the mark, tries to get a bit more space. No mark taken. Jones slung as he got his kick away. Hobbs was there. Hobbs to a one-on-one. Karmas from behind. Player in front was Langford. Karmas does well. Richards comes in to help out. Langford still fighting and scrapping. Toad off the deck and Toad straight into the lap of Waitman. He's got it at the halfback. There's less than a minute to play before three-quarter time. Essendon by 14 points. We've got all the vibes, all the feelings, the jeers, the boos for Waitman. The celebrations of Essendon's 10 goals after they fought back from that disastrous loss to Port Adelaide last week. But we've still got a long way to go. Bulldogs sharing it around, slow and steady. Liberatore's got it in front of the Essendon bench. He goes long. Norton came in from the side. Jamara came the other side. And the meat in the sandwich was Mackay, who's down. And he's sore. But Essendon's got it. Running away with it is McGrath. Have they got time for another goal here? He kicks for his teammate. Karmas with the spoil. Couldn't quite hit up Menzi. Hurry kick inside 50. Difficult for Davy Jr. to get. And now McRae should be able to clear it. Liberatore as siren sounds for three-quarter time. And the atmosphere is crackling under the closed roof here at Docklands. Neither fans are going anywhere. Essendon by 14 points, 10-5-65. The Bulldogs, 7-9-51. It was two goals to one in that third term as the goals dried up. The goal kickers, Kyle Langford, has three singles, two. Harry Jones, Stringer, Dersmer, Davey Jr., Martin, Caldwell and Goldstein. And for the Dogs... Two, two each for Eugle Hagen and West. And Vandermeer and Norton with one each. Let's get down to Tim Hodges with the latest. There was a sub made in that third term. Hodgie, tell us all that and any injury concerns. Yeah, so that was Riley Sanders subbed out of the game for Bailey Dale. Controversially, Riley Sanders not at all happy. Just watching the Essendon doctor, the players were lining up to speak to him. Ben Mackay crunched uh, back his lower back, very sore and stiff, but he's okay. Then it was Nick Martin right behind him there to see the doctor. He's got a cut above his right eye. They're just trying to patch it up right in front of me, right in front of the interchange gates here. Um, so that'll take place across the three-quarter time break. They just can't stop the blood at the moment, so they're bringing him over to the bench to sit down. Interesting, Nick Hines still hasn't been activated, so he's doing a full warm-up at the moment. Uh, any advice, Mick, of who you, you might be sending out of this game if you're, you're Brad Scott and you've got a fresh player to come on for the last 30 minutes? Well, I would certainly be waiting. I, I don't think you have to panic. You know, there's no necessity when you've, when you've, you've got hold of the game. Yeah, they're in control of it all. Yeah, it's too right. So there's no need to panic on this. And just getting back to the to the young Fusgray yeah. or the Western Bulldog player, that... that, that he doesn't set the right message if you go and pamper to him and then have to make a you know a special effort all oh, you know it's bad luck you know you know you're disappointed no this is a, this is this is where we used to have 20 then we had 21 22 now we've got 23 and, and this is part of being a, in part of a team you're someone you're talking comes about off, so, riley sanders the yes, 19 year old sanders. pick six from last someone, year i don't care it, look he could be number 106 it makes no difference where he could be last year's brownlow middles you have got to be part of a team and cop what you cop from the coach and and no matter how disappointed you are walk off and then go to your teammates pat them on the back and become part of the bench to help your teammates not be a part of a problem on the bench. So you, if, if it was mid-game like this, you would just ignore him if you were Luke Beveridge? Ignore him? I'd think him. I'd kick his backside that out, his toenails would curl up, and he wouldn't play next week. Before the end of the game? If you're down there? Bloody three... oath I would. Because he's got, to, he's got to get the message loud and clear that this is, this is called a team sport. Yep. How good is I thought the alternative of going over and making sure he was okay him was ignoring him. But Mick's got a third option for me, which I hadn't considered. And, he's, and that's this spray. He's still got that steel. Hasn't he? Hasn't he? Has me. It's <laughs> oh, the living daylights out of me. He's in for <laughs> Mick Moldhouse, the coaching icon, the thoughts of Mick and Cameron Lynn coming up in just a moment. Essendon by 14 points. It's three-quarter time. Friday night footy on ABC Sport. Hey, 
Want to hear something really funny? Well, of course. The Melbourne International Comedy Festival is back. You ready for a big night of comedy, yeah? With the All Stars Super Show on the ABC, Wednesday night, April 3rd. And if you miss the hilarious gala, catch it right now on ABC iView. Put that marinate there for a second. The Melbourne International Comedy Festival. Have a great festival, everybody. With the All Stars Super Show, Wednesday night, April 3rd on ABC TV and streaming on ABC iView. This is ABC Sports coverage of the 2024 AFL season. Every match on the ABC Listen app. Look for the AFL button. Harrison Jones has got what it takes. And it's the biggest lead by Essendon for the night. It's 14 points. Does it seem like Essendon have dominated? The scoreboard says that. Yeah. They've skipped, kicked the last four because the dogs have had enough of the football. What's let them down the first quarter? They scored so easily. Since then, it's been a real, it's all dried up, really. Now, you almost think that they're going to have to fluke a goal. And they, and they will have to get a goal quickly, otherwise this game will, will go out of their reach. Gives it to Trelaw, floats a kick inside 50. Jamara claiming the mark, up says, yes, he had enough of it. There was a pack of four or five, and Eugle Hagen will shoot just left of centre from 45 out. They need this one to go straight off that left boot from Jamara Eugle Hagen. Toe meets leather, the drop punt sails. Goal word, he's got three. It's what the dogs had to have. They've got it. The 2024 AFL Premiership season. On your radio. ABC Sport Digital. And on the ABC Listen app. Six lead changes in the first half. The Bombers have been playing from in front thereafter. They lead by 14 points. Game still live at three-quarter time. Essendon 10-5-65. The Western Bulldogs 7-9-51. Mick Moldhouse, Cameron Ling, ABC Sport. Mick, you were just asked by Hodgie about Nick Hind and uh, whether or not you'd make a move there. Given the fact that Essendon are, just to expand on it a little bit, they are in control of the game. I know the lead's only 14 points. They can turn around quickly. But now it's it's more, oh, sorry, less tactical. Yep. And it's more about if there's an injury that's yep. going to impact you. So hold, holding him back. Well, yeah, actually, we're just seeing down here Nick Hind might have... Hodgie, just go down here quickly on the boundary. Yeah, There's a Lingy, bit of movement with Nick Hind. Uh, Lingy, Jai Menzi has been fired out of this oh, game. Right. He had okay. the left uh, left shoulder issues in the second quarter. I still don't think he was quite right in that third quarter. So, yeah, the decision has been made to take him out of this match. And Nick Holman... Uh, Nick Hind, Nick Holman. Nick Hind comes into the game. So, fresh legs for the final 30 minutes for the Bombers. Well, that makes, that makes sense, doesn't it, with oh, that injury worry with the, the left shoulder to Jai Menzi. He'll be disappointed. He was trying to push through, which the coach would appreciate, but you've got to make that change. The Dogs, if they're going to win it, Mick, what are they got to do? You know exactly what they're going to do. <laughs> and it's got to be the man in the middle, the captain, and his little little uh, wingman. And and if Dale has come onto the ground, they've got to get the run out of the back line, not just, just kick it up the line, because English, as good as he is, is getting thrashed in the ruck, and around the ground they're taking care of him, so therefore move the ball into a forward line where the ball is either marked or on the ground and fought for. Only four teams all year have come from behind at three-quarter time. The Dogs hoping to make it five. It's Essendon by 14 points. As Bontempelli tackled in the middle, he threw it. On the way out, Durham, the tackler, rewarded, doing the one for centre again. Gives it off to Merritt, kicks to the top of the goal square. Liam Jones knocks it away. Karmas has to rush it through just before Hobbs got there. First score of the final term is an Essendon behind. The Bombers by a game high, 15 points, 24 seconds into the final quarter. Friday night footy on ABC Sport. Bramble doesn't waste any time bringing it back into play. I wonder what the message was from the coach, Luke Beveridge. So much at stake for both these sides, two and two. Gives it to Joe Anderson. Off to Richards, back to Joe Anderson, who drives it long down the line. Darcy does well, and then he loses it. It was stolen away by Caldwell, wheels around, and kicks that out of bounds on the fall. Bramble and Joe Hannison just showed what the message was. Exactly, it's exactly, a run. Exactly as Mick said it would Don't. be. Run, take it on, break the line. Because this is not great at defending a moving football. They can handle in the air because they can just punch it back. Duray to the pack, 55 out. Off hands it goes. Eugel Hagen kicks it. And he kicks it long and strong and missing. He's kicked one from there before up against the boundary line on his left and this time it wasn't a goal so Essendon 14 points. Uh, the Bulldogs have kicked one goal since the 11 minute mark of 
the second term went out early in the last as McGrath goes long up to the wing, hand on it from Draper, but it spills down to Karmas. Hand pass to Eugle Hagen. Handball out wide to Dale, who started as the sub. Gives it to Jure on the wing. Kicks inside 50 for the Bulldogs. Norton up. Can't catch it on the way down. Spills to Laverty. He's tackled. Pumps his ball up. 30 metres out from the Bulldogs goal. Dogs coming home, by the way, to the Coventry end, which is the southern end of the stadium here at Docklands. Whatever that's worth is Goldstein. Palms it down. Pack forms. You, mean, you do well to remember which end's which because yeah. the signs still aren't there. Still haven't come back. Yeah. Another ball up, same spot, half forward for the Bulldogs. Getting thrashed in the ruck, Dogs. Absolutely. And it's the All-Australian Ruckman. Karmas with the turnover. Can they get it back inside 50? Trelaw is tackled over the boundary line. It stays in. Draper had it. He gave it to Bailey Dale for the Dogs. Dale gave it to Jurae. And then Jurae, perfect placement to allow Eugle Hagen to run and take it right at its point. Over his head, he's taken the mark, and he'll go back directly in front from 25 metres out to see if he can make it an eight-point contest. And can I just add, I'm going to add on here. Because he's so dominant, what you don't want is Norton man being able to come over and be third man up. So that's why Norton's got to play up the ground and take that other defender away from that play. They've kicked one goal since half-time, and it was Eugel Hagen on his left, Casual in the approach, directly in front, and misses across the face. All oh, that hurts. Yeah, it does. Were these misses come back to haunt them? Essendon by 13. 3 2 for Mara tonight in game number 50 as Redmond goes on a stroll on the kick out and chips it short to La Verde. Probably an excuse for the first one in the set last quarter, that last one. You just got to nail those. That's, your teammates need you to do that. Laverty turning 28 today. Happy birthday to him. Goes short to McGrath. Kicks long down the wing and Liam Jones punches it out of bounds. A throw in right on halfway. Three and a half minutes into the final term. The Bombers by 13. Essendon led by 15 points late in that third quarter. In fact, led by 15 points early in this final term. We had six lead changes in the first half. And the Bulldogs led by as many as 10 back the other way halfway through the second quarter. For the boundary throw in. Dale's hand pass ends up with Cox. Hand pass away towards a Merritt. Hooks a kick forward for the Bombers. A Stringer and Karmas both involved. There's a whistle on the play. There's a free kick. Carl Langford's ball. Langford, a legal shepherd? Yes, yep, correct. Yep. Yep. A marking contest. So miles off the ball. Langford can send Essen an inside 50. In fact, he decides to send them wide by hand to McGrath. Hand pass to Cordwell. 70 out. Low trajectory kick inside 50. Tough one for Hind to control. Jure had it. Lost it in the tackle. Hobbs out wide. Hooks a kick to the pocket. Jones. Harry Jones takes the sprawling mark. Right forward pocket. Two metres in from the boundary line. It's only early stages of his career, but one really good attribute he's got is he reads where the ball is going to land so quickly. He was just half a second, fraction of a second ahead of the Bulldogs defenders there. Slid onto the mark. But he does that often. He knows where the ball is going to drop. I hope he's going to spearhead this forward line for the next decade, Harry Jones. He's approaching here on the drop punt. Tight angle. Jones has got it. And Essendon are out by 19 points. New game high for the Bombers. Early in the final term, Essendon 11 6 72. The Bulldogs 7 11 53. It comes through their blue chipper, Harry Jones. The Bombers by 19 points. Friday night footy on ABC Sport. I'm just trying to work out when you, where the drive's going to come from. We, you know, we spoke about it just before they, they commenced this quarter. And we thought it had to be Bond and Valley and Libertoria. Libertoria will get all that grunt football. But somewhere along the line, They've got to get players who are running off that centre line, whether it be wingers or whatever, and either having pings themselves or finding those 25 to 30 metre players out. At the moment, it's very one-paced. There yep. just doesn't seem to be any... There's, there's no connection between half-back to mid, mid to half-forward, and that, that's where the dogs are losing. Conversely, Essendon are finding those targets. Biggest lead, 19 points. Bombers, have they got this one in control? They've certainly got the game on their terms at the moment. Parrish, Merrick can't pick it up. Trelaw does. Charging out of the centre. He delivers in a one-on-one -on -one looking for West. His player in front, oh. Redmond, took it. And then there was a big hit on Vandermeer in a tussle with and McGrath. 50. Yeah, it was so McGrath picked the ball up after Redmond. 
had been paid the free kick. He went to stop. Vandermeer went through with the tackle and just dumped him. And Redmond charging through the centre of the ground, wants to go. This could just about be it here for the Bombers. Jones was there, couldn't take the mark. Rolling around on all fours was uh, Goldstein, tried to flick it out, and then a tangle of arms and legs in that right forward pocket. Yeah, just watching the replay here, McGrath went to stop, knew it was a free kick, got dumped, wasn't happy. So his head hit, didn't hit the ground, so I think there won't be anything during the week about that one. Draper wins the hit out, Gresham against the boundary line, a hand pass goes back to Hind, high bomb inside the forward pocket, Karma's back with the flight. Takes the intercept mark for the Bulldogs. Interesting stage of the night, seven gone final term, Bombers by a game high 19. And all of a sudden, desperation belongs to the Bulldogs. Short kick wide to Trelaw. He goes short to Bramble. Hand pass back to Adam Trelaw. Running out of defence. Kicks a high ball up to the wing. They need someone to mark it. They don't need that man to. Ben McKay with the intercept mark on the logo for the Bombers. So predictable. Right up. The Essendon just dominating in the air uh, because they're, they're set up. Essendon trying to switch play back to Redmond. His kick missed Liberty. He's in trouble. Shakes a would-be tackle from West once. Ooh, West hunts yeah. down the, uh, the kick a second time. Unkind bounce for Redmond, who started this uh, passage of errors for Essendon. Gets a hand pass away to Mackay. Goes back by hand to Dersmer, and he's going to mop it up short to Merritt. And he says, just pop the brakes, everyone. We got this. As Merritt kicks to the wing, finds Goldstein, who marks, lays off a hand pass, and the Bombers through the middle through Martin. Up goes Langford, off hands Davey. Davey from 50 out, he's looking for Jones. Harry Jones couldn't get there in time. Gresham takes it, Gresham snaps. Gresham at the finishing touches. Oh, it's a long way back now for the Bulldogs. Essendon by 25 points, 12-6-78. The Doggies 7-11-53. There's still 14 minutes to play in this ball game, but it's hard to see where, where they're going to spark a comeback now. Yeah, they just slice through the middle there, and then Owen Davy Jr. being doing what he needs to be doing, front and square. I almost thought he'd taken the wrong option. Harry Jones' spoil. I just saw the replay on that one to create the crumb for Gresham. May have been... Oh, no, that's a good spoil. That's a great contest. Gee, that's what you want from your young forward. He was out of position, and he created that crumb. I thought it might have been too high, but well done, Jones. So when West kicked a goal halfway through that second turn, the Dogs led by nine points. Essendon's kicked seven of the next eight goals. And they're going forward again at the middle. Stringer gets a centre bounce, attendance and a clearance out towards the wing. Leaping up, Hind got his fist on it. Pack forms behind him, though. Uh, Cox has it, lost it in the tackle. Cox gets a second go. Hand pass out to Durham. He's locked up in the tackle. Um, says ball up between wing and half forward for the Bombers. Well, it, 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 you can't keep the ball in the air, the Dogs, because they're just getting out marked, so it, it gets down to run. 35-point turnaround in the game. The Dogs from 10 up midway through the second to now 25 down. As uh, Trelaw from the stoppage kicks down the wing, but Essendon trapping in their front half. Redmond to Martin, hand pass to Cordwell, took on the tackle court. Holding the ball, the Bulldogs back the other way. Jure, hand pass to McRae, gives it to Baker, kicks down the wing and sat on the top of the head of uh, Norton. And Betty McKay just whacks it out of bounds. Boundary throw in on the city wing. Yeah. Kick the ball to someone's top of their head. Yeah. There's only one result. It's yeah. going to get smashed away. We've been... Critical of Norton's ability to finish off games, but it doesn't help when they're oh. sitting on his head like no, that. No, But he's got no support up there. Every yeah. time he... There's 1v2, 1v3. Look at what the dogs are doing. Ten minutes go, gone in the fourth quarter. Luke Beveridge's seat's getting hotter by the minute. It's the Bombers by 25 points. Ty, uh, Bulldogs have got it here through. Trelaw goes inside 50. Big pack. McKay's gone down behind plays, taking a heavy hit. Oh, how easy is this for Dersma? Just wheels around these dogs forwards to Kelly and then out wide when Morris uh, Jones rather has taken the mark. Harry Jones, future cult figure. You can think if he can stay fit, he delivers beautifully down the line to um, Davy Jr. One of two changes this week. Ten point pass to Caldwell. Merritt's had a 25. McGrath 21. Nick Martin, 19 for the Bombers. Caldwell's up there. Goes inside 50. Draper gets his hands to it. Stringer 
takes Karmas to ground. Durham picks it up. Durham snaps. Oh! Durham with the goal. Get off our back, says the red and black. They're going to claim the four precious premiership points here tonight and go three and two after the first five rounds. Essendon by 31, 13, 684. The Dogs, 7 11, 53. While all that was happening, Mick and I were just watching. Ben Mackay, you called the big contest at centre forward for the Bulldogs. Hodgie, we might go down to you on this one as Ben Mackay came to the bench. He went straight down the race. What's the problem there? No, it's um, he, he lost a contact in that in that contact. Ah. Uh, so <laughs> the doctors ran after him and he ran back and said, "No, it's just my eye. I've got to go down and get my my contact kit." Um, it, yeah, it's his left side, so it just popped straight out. So that's why he was running down the race to to the rooms. Sammy Durham missed last week with concussion. Adds another one for the Dons. They've kicked eight of the last nine in the game. It's out the 31 points Essendon's way. They go forward again out the middle, but Baker chops it off. Hand pass away to Richards. Took on Gresham. He got past him. Hand pass picked off, though. He's Cordwell. Steals it for Essendon. Hooks another kick goalward to the top of the square. Liam Jones spoils. Can't get it past Stringer, though, in the pocket. And Joe Hannison helps him out of bounds. This has been overwhelming. From 10 points up, the Bulldogs... They are 31 down. They've kicked one goal since the 11-minute mark of the second term. We're now 13 minutes into the last. Essendon by 31, Friday night 40, ABC Sport. And they've got it right at the teeth of goal as well as Libertore gets a kick away. Oh! So he was tackled down there. Was that Stringer? Yes, it is. And then Libertore swung the right elbow. I'm not sure if it made contact with Stringer's head. But there's a bit of push and shove. Libertore's now down sore. So, a little bit of a verbal exchange, but just have a look at the replay here. It was a boundary throw in, Darcy down to Liberatore. As he got the kick away, we saw Stringer absolutely tackled him to the turf. And I saw with my naked eye the swinging elbow and arm of Liberatore. I'm not sure whether it connected to the head of Stringer, but in the meantime, a free kick. And Dersma's got it to add more pain to the Bulldogs. 45 degree angle, 45 metres out. Get the bow and arrow out, Dersma. Bang! Dersma's got two. The Dogs have got 13. And the place is rocking for the red and black at the moment. The review's gone up. Was it touched on the line, maybe? No, it was not. We've got the... That goal will stand. Jones leaping up, touches the fingers, but clearly over the line, Cameron Ling. Certainly was, Cal. Clear goal, quick review, great goal by Dersma. Great pressure by Jake Stringer. That was a nasty tackle on Libba. Big tackle. Yeah, Libba was sore. And I say nasty in a good way. It wasn't a, uh, well, just, it wasn't a dumping one. It wasn't no, a um, hit. fling one. It was just that opportunity where you've got an opposition player hot under the ball and you've got him lined up and he nailed him with it and caused the turnover. Go to the Bombers. Marcus Bontempelli is spending his prime in the midfield for this football team that won a grand final when he was a young man and the uh, best and fairest player that year at 20. And he looks filthy of his fellow midfielders as he just gave them an absolute spray in the middle of the ground. Well, English can't win the ruck work. He's, he's good at following up, but he's been slaughtered all night by two aggressive ruckmen, Goldstein and uh, Draper. Nothing's changed. Five in a row for Essendon, nine of the last ten. They're going forward again out the middle. Goldstein down to Durham, kicks inside 50, Stringer takes the mark, leading out of the goal square. And he'll go back to try and pile on more pain for the Bulldogs. Well, let's see a repeat story. They certainly went to work on their centre bounce work after getting destroyed last week, the Bombers. Actually, they've been excellent. Yeah, they entered that game, I think, number one in the comp for centre bounce clearances and then had six for the night. I think Horn yeah. Francis had more than them. Six to 19 it was last week. The two good ruckmen, Bombers. How sweet this would be for Jake Stringer against his old pals. Yes! The Bombers bust this game wide open. 
A 43 point lead for Essendon. They've kicked 10 of the last 11 in the game. From 10 down to 43 points up. 16 and a half gone in the final term. Jake Stringer with a couple. Where's the fight? There's, yeah. There is just no fight. No. Halfway through, remember, we, we sort of call that first quarter when it looked like the dogs were dominating, then Essendon were able to swing around and, and actually get the nose in front. But halfway through that next quarter, the dogs, had just there's just no bark, no run. Where's it going to come from? They're trying where, something where, where's, Well, like, it's not going to come. West in the middle. It's not going to come because they, they're getting slaughtered in the ruck and they can't get their hands on the ball from the ruck duel. Wow. And that's against Tim English, the reigning All-Australian ruck. Pelly's gone to the bench. And we were highly critical of Essendon for not giving any fight last week. Yeah. yeah. Dogs have been the same in this last quarter. Not seeing any at all. Goldstein again wins it in the air. Hobbs forced to tackle Liberatore. It spills clear. West is there. Johannesson. Baker. To a one-on-one. And McCray reads it better than... Martin. He's been moved to a half forward line, so they've taken him away from the middle. He takes off. He's looking for Norton over Norton's head. Laverde's there, mops up, drives it long back towards Johannesson and that wing. But it's all lesson and they've got some run about them now. Over to Martin. Martin's kick. Looking for Stringer. Karmas, look out. You're going to get crunched by Jake. And that's exactly what happens. That centre bounce, last centre bounce, the messaging was very clear to people like Jack McRae. If you can't get the job done, I'm going to put West and Waitman and those types of players in there mm. and let them have a crack at it. English down to Gresham. He's locked up by Waitman and a ball up. Well, the bonds off too. Yeah. Yeah. So they've, they've just changed. Well, they had to do something because I'm just getting slaughtered. Just saw a shot to of Luke Beveridge in the coach's box. We spoke, spoke about Jew earlier. Just perspiring a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I maybe need a little bit of AC in that, uh, that box for Luke Beveridge. Jeez. Third stoppage, same spot on the ground. Goldstein wins it down, Parrish hand pass inboard, Nick Martin. Handball under pressure to McGrath, feeds it back to Hobbs. Hobbs running in the wrong direction, dishes it off to Merritt. And Merritt's going to kick across the ground. The Bombers by 43 points. Finds McGrath, goes back to Mackay, dangerous kick, switching play. They come from all directions and Laverty marks just in front of Dale. Avoids contact, kicks to half forward. And Dersma takes the juggle mark on his chest. Looks inside 50. Kick goes out wide. And Nick Hine hangs on to it. He's got Stringer in the pocket. He slides through and takes the mark. Yeah, quick movement. Now, there's, there's really... I hate saying this, but the dogs have just... Although I think they've given up. They're, they're, they're second to the ball. They're not thinking about blocking up space. They're not taking the shoulder of, the, of their direct opponent. They're just, they're just watching the game develop around them without them being involved. They've kicked the last six in the game, Essendon. Ten of the last 11. Stringer from out wide in front of the race. In the end, he just kicks it across the goal face. Hands on it from Goldstein. No mark. Slips out of play. Boundary throw in right forward pocket for the Dons. 20 minutes into this final term. Essendon by 43 points. 15-6-96. The Bulldogs 7-11-53. Corbin Middlemass, Kelly Underwood, Mick Moldhouse, Cameron Ling and Tim Hodges. It's Friday night footy right here on ABC Sport. Twirling ball back in. Goldstein right in front to West, who's going nowhere. Parrish tackles him. Now it's a loose ball. Inside 50. Trelaw's got it. Can get it out of that defensive 50 area. Handballs to McRae. The underball, underground handball to Baker. Forced to kick hurriedly. Vandermeer takes the mark. They keep going. McRae kept running. He accepts the handball. He kicks to a one-on-one and Hugel Hagen outmarks Kelly. He wants to go back. He wants to have a set shot. It'll be too little too late for Eugel Hagen, who's already kicked two in his 50th game, but they trail by 43 points. A lot of empty spots, a lot of empty seats as we... The eyes dart around under the closed roof here at Docklands. Eugel Hagen on his left, 45-degree angle, misses. Is that two threes at Corbin for the night? Three, three. Three, three. Three, three. Three three for Jamara. And two really gettable. Yeah. One one was it? Oh. Oh, here's a chance. Chief Merritt slipped over trying to mark the kick out from Martin, so invites the dogs back in. Half forward. Jeray handball away to Trelaw, gives it to Vandermeer, kicks to the top of the goal square. Darcy trying to take the juggle. Mark gems it on the boot. That'll work. He's got one back. It's a bit like 
polishing the brass in the Titanic at the moment for the Bulldogs. I think they'll check this with the score review. We are. The soft signal is a goal. And we're going to check whether this is a goal or not for Sam Darcy. He kicked three of them last week, nominated for the Rising Star against the Cats. Yeah, that's true. Yep, it's a goal. You can usually tell by the reactions. No Essendon players tried to argue it. 15-6-96, the Bombers. The Bulldogs move to 8-12-60. It is a 36-point lead for Essendon. 22 gone final turn. All the players know it. They're all going back to the centre. <laughs> so that puts a stop of, what was it, six straight yep. for the Bombers. Why is it taking so long? We're, we're worse than the American football now. we are stop for everything. And if this, this would be, we're told this is reviewed anyway after every goal. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's really no... Look at these angles. We can see a gap between the ball and the Essendon defenders at all times. Decision on the scoreboard. Is there a two-minute delay? Yeah, I'm telling you, so. Or oh, three minutes. He gets his first of the night, Sam Darcy. It's the seventh of the year for him. And as I said, the Bombers by 36 points. Time on final turn. It's a forgettable night for the Bulldogs. Just the body language out there with... But we've got seven to play. It looks like they just want the ground to open up and swallow them, really. Yeah. Who have they got next week, the Dodge? Saints, Thursday night. Mm. Yep. So they've had... Yeah. So Back. their wins have been against the Suns and the West Coast Eagles. They've had losses now to Melbourne, the Cats and Essendon with the Saints to come. Back here, Kel? Uh, Thursday night, yes. Jim, so with those two teams? Yes. When does the Saints play it? Uh, they play tomorrow against the Giants in Canberra, and yes, it is back here uh, at Docklands on Thursday night. Well. The Heat will be on Luke Beveridge. We missed the finals last year, and it hasn't been the best start, particularly tonight's result. I think most tipsters would have been with the Bulldogs. Well done by Durham. He's a good player for them. Gets it to Caldwell, who's been great tonight as well, and then flicks it wide by foot. It's amazing when you're winning games of football, you just you, you constantly look like you've got more players. Yes, yeah, true, doesn't it? Dersma, and then a kick to Martin. Mark's in front of the interchange bench, and he just turns around, has a casual chat to the Bombers bench, and now he's going to go backwards to Mackay and then back to Martin. I think that move of Durham into the midfield after, was after last week saying... We need people who can spread and can run away and work hard both ways from the contest. That's where they were destroyed last week. <laughs> Martin kicked down the line. Three big players went hard fast. And Draper, the biggest of them all, just stood still and took the mark on his chest. Interesting looking kick inside 50 in the stringer direction. It hits the deck. Gresham is looking to pounce. Hobbs piles on O'Donnell. Free kick against Hobbs. He, he's everything the Bombers haven't had in recent times. He's Durham. Blue collar, get the work. Yep. He runs hard both ways. O'Donnell to Bramble. Now they've got it out on the uh, city wing. Williams brings it back into Gallagher. Gallagher wants to use the corridor. He's got Johannesson. Short, sharp kicks. Liam Jones up near the centre circle. Wills looks. Thomas has got a bit of space at a half forward. Takes an uncontested mark. Goes out wide to Baker. Baker uses Trelaw by hand. He's right in against the boundary line. The centering kick. Who's there? Bontempelli flies from the side. Sam Darcy's handball. Ricochets down to Martin. Martin hacks the kick. It's going to go towards the boundary line. This could be deliberate unless they get there in time. Johannesson gets there, but he's tackled to the turf. And the handball from Johannesson was desperate towards the boundary line, and it goes out of bounds. Four lead changes in the first quarter. Essendon by five. Had a couple of lead changes in the second. Essendon led by eight at halftime. By 14 at three-quarter time. And they've piled on five goals to one to lead by 36 points in this final term with five to play. From the boundary throwing, Goldstein wins it down, but straight to Williams. Kicks a high up and under to the teeth of goal. Falls to McRae. Taps it down. Is Aaron Norton. Chucks it on the left boot and he kicks it through for a goal. Norton with his second of the night. They've come a long way apart. He kicked his first in the opening three minutes and he hits the scoreboard here. 26 gone final term. Essendon's lead cut to 30 points. The Bombers 15-6-96.
Footscray 912 66. Mick Moldhouse, Cameron Lang, Friday Night Footy on ABC Sport. There you go, Mick. That's his first goal in the fourth quarter for the year. Yeah, it is. It is. The game's uh, over. But... Well, I was going to say there's six goals down, so. <laughs> well, I, I don't want to be too harsh on him because I, I still think he, he tries hard, he puts himself in and about. But I'm just wondering whether he could be one of the most dominating. Well, look, where does Cameron get his goals from? He doesn't sit. 20 metres out from goal. He comes up to the wing. He goes to the half forward line. He goes into the goal square. He's all over the place. So he's a hard man to counter. So as, as a player like Norton, if you make him a harder man to counter, then he's going to get a lot more possessions. 30 points the margin. Essendon's hungry for more. They win the centre clearance. Karmas comes out, hits it hard, breaks the tackle, handballs to Trelaw. Trelaw gives it off to Williams, back to Trelaw. They're working in a tight little space along the boundary line on the city wing. And then the kick marked by Liberatore. Gives it back to Trelaw, who kept running, and his kick just reaching out with those long arms. Darcy takes a mark right on the boundary line, about 45 metres out. Yeah, Adam Trelaw's done a power of running in this last quarter, but it does, he, he needed to be doing it in the first half, first Con- three quarters. Congested yeah. 50, isn't it? So Sam Darcy just says... I'm going to try and go for home, and it is touched right over the line. A minor score for the Western Bulldogs. Essendon by 20 points, four minutes to play. The other thing that's probably stood out uh, early in the young season, given North Melbourne's struggles down back in the key post position, has been Ben Mackay. Yeah, it is. His early season form that he's had, he kept Dixon quiet last week, even though the rest of the team was able to get hold of them. But on Norton for large periods tonight, he's had a, a sneaky good start for Essendon in, uh, in a team which has been up and down to start the young season. Long kick out towards half-back. The Bombers win it through Merritt. Hand pass goes back to Dersma. Sweeps a hand pass to Caldwell. Kicks along the boundary line. Too much on it for Harry Jones. And Buku Kamas collects behind the interchange gates. And goes short across the ground to Bramble. Arches the back. Burns off Langford. Ugly handball. Doesn't quite sit for Jeray. The Bulldogs able to win it back through. Johannesson gave it to Jeray, flicks it in the middle of the ground. Here's Trelaw, outer edge of the centre square, high up and under. Sitting underneath it, no mark, spills back inboard. Liberatore has put his head over it. What a hard foot, as he so often does. Handball well weighted for Vandermeer. Shoots goalward, Jamara slips over and the ball hits the behind post. It's out on the fall and a free kick for the Bombers. Last line of defence, Essendon by 29 points. The Dogs have kicked the last two, though, to put a better face on it. 29 gone, final quarter, Friday night footy on ABC Sport. Essendon with possession. So most of the Doggies fans here tonight, it was a huge crowd in for this one, not too many spare seats, but you can't see much blue in the crowd. It's just all red and black that's left to enjoy this final two minutes. And they'll enjoy a nice mark taken by Nick Cox on the outer side. Interesting to see what sort of Essendon side we have over the next month. That This will be the test to see... I think they play Anzac Day for a start off. I don't know who they're playing next week, but Anzac Day's coming. Adelaide, Adelaide, is it Adelaide? Adelaide, Adelaide away, and then, yep. then Anzac Day. Yeah, Adelaide yeah. Friday night at Adelaide Oval, yeah, yeah. and Anzac Day. Because yep. if, if, you've got, if you compare last week this week, their poles apart, have they learned enough from last week? Kick goes to right on the arc. Cox has got it. Nick Cox grubbers the kick, stolen by Jeray. Gives it off to Trelaw, back to Liberatore. All of this is rushed. Nothing's clean and easy still for the Bulldogs. Bounces off the chest of Dale. Quick hands in there by Essendon. Mackay to Hine, to Parrish, who took a bounce back to Hine through the centre. They've got away with it. Davy Jr., Parrish kept going. Now over the top to Kelly. He's a little slow to make his decision, and then he squares the kick, and it's taken by Harry Jones. He's kicked a couple, and he's going to put his hand up, so I'm going for it. He's inside the centre square. No, he changes his mind. He just flirts with the perimeter, skirts the perimeter, and gets the kick to Caldwell, who marks uncontested. Just a little closer, but he'll need to kick it from 52. He'll be hoping that... So is that... No, he's going to go back. I was going to say, he has to work... Clock there. work yeah, work that ball inside the forward line. Goes back to Mackay, back to Caldwell. They've conceded some ground. But they're eating into the clock. Happily share it around before the high ball. Draper sits, sets, Hind tries to grub at the kick. In the right place at the right time was Jeray to Williams to Bramble. Takes on Alwyn Jr. He's got a bit of speed as well. 
And the kick from Bramble to Eugle Hagen, a long way from home. Norton's found a bit of space at half forward, takes the uncontested mark, wheels around on the left. He's looking for Waitman who will set himself and fly. Oh, Darcy almost crunched. He was crunched in that pack as Waitman flew over the top. And the hurry kick out of there. McRae should be able to scoop up and send them back inside 50 for the Dogs. Margin is 29 points. Williams takes the mark. He goes short to Richards. Richards looks inside the forward 50. English the target. He leaps up and takes the mark. He's going to have a set shot here at left half forward as the seconds tick down. And time is certainly the enemy for the Dogs. So Thursday night short week, six day breaks and Kilda back here at Docklands. As we said, Friday night footy for the Bombers against Adelaide. Tim English, the All-Australian Ruck, and what has been a dirty night for the Dogs. The last kick of the game misses the whole set. And that about sums it up. As a sharper performance from the Bombers. Did they rediscover the edge? Well, the Dogs didn't give much of a yelp. Essendon by 29. Our boys who play this grand old game are always striving for glory and fame. See the Bombers fly up, up. The other teams, they don't fear. They all try their best, but they can't get near as the Bombers fly up. Few and far between against a Luke Beveridge coach Bulldogs team. It's just the second time that he's lost to Essendon. Brad Scott's men able to get there tonight. So Beveridge now 9-2 and two against the Bulldogs. The story of the night, Essendon led by four points at quarter time, eight points at the half. There were six lead changes in the first half of 40 before the Bombers pulled away. They led by 14 at three-quarter time and finished all over the top to win by 29. Our boys who play this grand old game are always striving for glory and fame. See the farmers fly up, up, the other teams they don't fear. They all try their best, but they can't get near as the farmers fly up. 29 points, the final margin, Essendon moved to 3-2 and two, while the Bulldogs fall the wrong side of the ledger, they go to 2-3 and three. a 29 point win for the Dons, they led by as many as 43 points midway through that final term, the goal kickers Cole Langford kick 3, 2 each for Harry Jones Jake Stringer and Xavier Dersma and then singles for Cordwell, Gresham Goldstein, Nick Martin Durham and Davey Jr while for the Western Bulldogs Jamari Eagle Hagen kick 3, he then added 3 behinds after starting 3 straight, two for West, two for Norton, one each for Darcy and for Vandermeer. 29 points at full time, Essendon in front of 50,144 under the Friday night lights. It said a bit about Essendon, I think it said a fair bit about the Dogs too, and there's a whole lot to pull apart on ABC Sport, Cameron Ling and Mick Malthouse. Well, it was a pretty impressive response by the Bombers after last week's horror showing. They fixed up their centre bounce work. They got a great result out of that. Some terrific clearances. They kicked goals from their centre clearances. Their midfielders, who were badly beaten and would have taken a, a fair whacking throughout the week. Uh, Zach Merritt again led the way excellently well, but the others went with him this time. Uh, and the ruck combination of Draper and Goldstein certainly worked well, Mick. And the Bombers played really well and deserved a really good win on a Friday night and exactly what their fans wanted out of a response to last week but can't help but be a little bit just disappointed and, and quite negative about the Bulldogs when halfway through the second quarter they had the game completely on their terms and looked pretty comfortable and were going okay and from that moment onwards gave not a hell of a lot at all. Take, just forget about the last 12, 15 minutes of that quarter. Mm. That, that meant nothing. The fact Adam Trillor ran around and got 13 touches in the last quarter, who cares? He got destroyed as well as so many other of those Bulldogs players. They didn't do the work when they needed to do the work. No, and 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 this this is really... When you look at Bonds and Pally, he, they cannot keep relying on him being best on the ground. No, exactly right. And, this, and Libertura and and Libertore getting every hard ball get. They've, they've all got to get their hands dirty. So 
at some stage those players are going to have a down or all get taken out of the game and they get you can be taken out of the game in um, in, a, in a lot of measures and one of them the, the worry tonight the way I see it was always going to be that we know English is a good around the ground player he's got speed he's got a he's smart I think uh, if, if I'm reading this right he grew late so therefore he had a lot of midfield stuff as a, as a young player so therefore he still had those qualities but he's not a good ruckman he's not a good ruckman he doesn't get his hands to football enough against quality ruckman he, he can beat the mid- the smaller, you know, the, the average players, I'll just wait for you. Uh, uh, EJ Witten Cup has just been presented. Here's Zach Merritt, the captain of the Bombers. Amazing game. EJ Witten, such a big, big name, not only with the Bulldogs, but with the AFL and VFL history. So thank you for all the crowd, Bulldogs, the Essendon supporters, for coming out and putting on a great show. All the best. Cheers. There's Zach Merritt. We'll hear more from the Bombers in their winner's room shortly when uh, Tim Hodges catches up with a couple of the boys and we'll hear the song so uh, a 29 point win for Essendon over the Western Bulldogs the EJ Witten Cup's long been presented uh, for a regular season game between the Bombers and the Bulldogs and so it is tonight the Bombers by 29 points having won every quarter sorry Mick and Lingy as uh, you continue your wrap up of this game a, a tough night for the Bulldogs well that's some good news from you Corby if yes stop the season right now you'd be in the finals Oh. <laughs> High enough up eighth. to win a final, or is it? Well, you're eighth, <laughs> and you're, if you're in the finals, you've got a chance. Yes. So uh, if we stopped it right now, Kel, yeah. there it is. There's the answer. So getting back to what I said about the ruckman, so Draper, Draper has become a nuisance in the forward line mm. because he competes, and if he's not marking it, which he does, he's not going to kick a lot of goals. He's going to compete, and what he's going to do, he's going to make one of the backline players have to compete with him. So Goldstein, I know, I know what I said before the game. I couldn't understand why if they if they thought that they were going to play in Forest. Perhaps, perhaps Brad thinks that they're further advanced and therefore that's what we've got. The other thing I suppose with, with Goldstein is there was no guarantee that Drape was going to come back from that injury he had, which was a hip complaint. He had to get right through uh, the summer training to prove that he was, was it hip or groin. It was one or the other to, to actually right. come groin. So, but th- they dominated the ruck. So they gave their, their midfields first choice of an armchair right in many respects so no wonder you know the hard work that Libertoria had to do underneath and then Bond and Pelly started well but then he just drifted right of the game and and let's be not we don't want to be over the top on him because he's been heart and soul of this football club the the Draper Goldstein combo and Draper being forward too he's just I suppose buying time too to get Peter Wright back into yeah, the well, that's, line that's it, yeah. as, as they bring him back after his suspension yeah. um, and, and it's working well sorry it worked effectively tonight it certainly didn't work effectively last week but again I think if you're an Essendon fan you saw the little glimpses of what you want it to become Durham's game was, yep. uh, was excellent uh, Harry Jones up forward when, mm. when the game really had to be nailed in the third quarter he, he was very good um you know, it's okay, Archie Perkins doesn't play tonight, but you know Archie Perkins is going to be a good player. You've got a wonderful leader and a consistent midfielder who's very, very good in Zach Merritt. So there's those elements. Ben Mackay was your big signing in the off-season because they needed a big body key defender. They lose Zerk Thatcher, who was never the big, could play on the real monsters. So you get Mackay in and you think, okay, I can see that. He can hold up that defence for us as a, as a key back for a long time. Jordan Ridley still to come back into this yeah, team and is a oh, crucial he's one of the, player. One of the best back, he, he, backs in the yeah. league. Recurrence of the quad, so still four to six weeks oh, away. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, we saw little moments, I thought, tonight from Ben Hobbs. Where I, I think you might have been calling one of them, Cobbs, where he, he just took the ball cleanly and spun and mm. bought himself some time. That's what Hobbs is maybe going to become. So there, there's those little things. Uh, unfortunately, frustration is inconsistency. How can we play like we did last week? And then play like we did tonight. Now challenge is go and beat Adelaide. Yep. Really go and smack Adelaide and head into Anzac Day with some momentum under your belt. Adelaide, Collingwood, West Coast. So it's a fascinating three weeks ahead oh, for the Essendon Football Club. Chance uh, winning the three of them too, Corby. Yeah. A chance. Yep. I mean, you know, they play, do play the pies. If they're a bit more like that version tonight. Uh, 15-6-96 over the Bulldogs, 9-13-67. Tim Hodges is in the winner's rooms. Hodgie. Uh, Corbin, I'm not sure whether Mick would have loved this. The rooms are absolutely chockers, so it's heaving in here as the Bombers walk in now. Dyson Heppel and Jake Stringer, I think, are the last of the Bombers. Jake Stringer over to his family, gives the kids a hug. And uh, for the third time this year, the Bombers all belt the song out. 
Asian flag. Woo! Now boys who play this great old game Woo! are always striving for glory and fame. Woo! See the bombers fly up, up. The other teams that don't fit. They all try the best, but they can't give in as the bombers fly up. Uh, very happy rooms. We'll have Nick Martin very shortly for you guys. Ooh, look forward to that. Thanks, uh, Hodgie. Uh, I mentioned this earlier. So they'd won just one of their previous 10 encounters with the Western Bulldogs, Essendon, and that was a 13-point victory back in 2020. In an empty... Uh, 2021, rather, in an empty stadium during the pandemic. Uh, so wins have been few and far between for Essendon against the Western Bulldogs during that stretch in which Luke Beveridge has been coaching the Bulldogs. And they get a rare win over the Dogs tonight, a 29-point victory. And as the song says, the glory and fame, it was a little closer to that tonight for, uh, for Essendon than what it was last week against the Power. 29-point victory. They won every quarter by four points at quarter time. Essendon, eight at the half, 14 at three-quarter time, and 29 points in the finish. Corbin Middlemass alongside Kelly Underwood, Mick Malthouse, and Cameron Ling. Tim Hodges is in the winners' rooms. Your thoughts off the SMS. Marcus in South Melbourne. Mick, he's calling for you to take over as coach of the Bulldogs this year. Says, honestly... Uh, hasn't been Bebo's here. Has he lost the players? Jesus, scathing feedback coming in from Bulldogs fans. We'll get to them in just a moment. But should be about the winners. The Bombers by 29 points back into their rooms with Tim Hodges. Hodgy. Uh, Corbin, Nick Martin has been good enough to come straight out to join us. Um, what, what's the, what's the, is it relief, the emotion right now, just after the week you've lived? I wouldn't say relief. I think, um, obviously, it was a tough loss and tough performance last week, and we wanted to respond, and I think we did that tonight. So, really pleased, and, um, yeah, we go again. It's pretty impressive, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, especially that second half. Obviously, it was a bit of a dogfight early in the first half and um, heavily contested, close game, but I think the way we came out in the second half especially and then the back end of that uh, last quarter was really impressive. How enjoyable was that half an hour of patch of football? It was it was electric, wasn't it? Yeah, it's great footy, um, especially in Marvel, you know, big crowd. Um, the atmosphere was great and um, it's really great as a backman when the ball doesn't really come out. So we hold the ball in our 50 and I'm pretty pleased with that. I'll send you upstairs, but before I do, I can't stop looking at your eyebrow. That, how many stitches do you think that will need? It's it's a slice straight open. We saw it at three quarter time. Them trying to patch you up, they couldn't stop the bleeding. It, it is a it is a decent old gash. Yeah, apparently it looks all right, but my mom my mom marking contest for the uh, for the game and I slipped my eyebrow up, so I reckon I'll be staying on the deck. It's all, it's awesome. I'm going to get a photo of that and send it upstairs to Ben and Corbin. <laughs> uh, I'll send you upstairs, Mick Malthouse and Cameron Ling. Mick, well done on the win. Terrific game. Um, Centre bounces last week were not pretty, um, fair to say. What what were you able to fix up in there to get such a great result tonight and uh, not only got clearances but kicked goals from those centre clearances? Yeah, it was really pleasing, um, especially as a backman when I think last week um, Port were just running the ball at us flat out. So um, we, an area we wanted to work on and an area where you can get um, good really quickly. So I think Parrish, um, Durham and Zach especially really brought the heat in the centre bounce and really got the ball going our, going our way early. So it was great. It was a pleasure to see, especially as a backman. Can you tell us about Sam Durham? Um, he, I thought he was terrific tonight. He appears from up here to be a really hard running both ways, two-way midfielder. Um, what, what's his athletic profile? What's he like to, to be able to have a game like that? Yeah, he's exceptional. Um, as you touched on, his defensive work, but his offensive work as well. Obviously a wingman last year, but um, moved inside, which has been really great for his development. And um, he's, he's one of those guys you really want to go to battle with because you, you know what you're going to get from him. He gives it your absolute all. And um, I thought he had a really great game today. Nick, congratulations. Just just on, a, on uh, your thoughts on a couple of players that have come to your football club. Uh, Todd Goldstein, how's he settled in and what's he brought to you, do you think? Yeah, I think Toddy's really um, fitted in seamless, seamlessly. Um, obviously a veteran of the game, probably a legend, to be honest, as a ruckman. Um, he's brought a wealth of experience to our game, and um, I think he's partnering up with Sam really well. And uh, Ben McKay? Yeah, Ben's absolute pleasure to play with down back. Um, it rarely gets beaten, um, a big body, um, and just plays plays for the jumper and gives his absolute all in. And what um, about... Oh, sorry. Sorry, you go. Yeah, no, I was about to say Dersmer as well. So. Yeah, Similar, just really great characters. That's what I'm really pleased with. Um, obviously, really good footballers, but great characters as well. And Des is a wonderful wingman. Yeah. So, so just on the side, I know, I know, Lingy's already asked you the question. But if you if you go back one year and you come back, say, the last week, and you and what you've got in front of you, I, I just want to call me up here. You're actually in the eight as we speak, but you know, it's a long way from home. But the the, the side looks different in, in regard to its movement. Is is uh, is Brad? 
Well, it looks like it's less possessions but more ground. Would that be fair to say? Look, in your case, 500 metres tonight, which is which is very commendable. Are, are you? Um, is there is a less fiddle around with it and, and a more direct approach? Yeah, I think so. I think especially in the contest, um, we don't really want to feed back or. Um, flick the hands around. We just want to drive our legs forward and get the ball moving forward. So I think that's a fair statement, and um, I thought we executed that well tonight. Yeah, Nick Nick Martin with us on ABC Sport. Nick, it's Corbin Middlemass here. Uh, do you have moments where you sort of pinch yourself and you go, "Wow, this is what I'm doing." No, you've basically come out of fame. Waffle footy in Perth. Uh, get the opportunity to train on. I think you were training on with the Eagles. Overlook there. Get come to the Bombers. Get picked up. Start on debut. And now you're the most regular bomber. Uh, that he's playing in this team. This is your 48th consecutive game. You are an absolute mainstay. Uh, do, do you have any moments where you think, wow, this is, uh, this ex- this is extraordinary what I've been able to do in a relatively short period of time? Um, yeah, pretty much every day. I pinch myself, get to go to work and um, play for the Bombers and put on the red sash every week. So I really love this club and they've given me an opportunity. I'm just trying to repay that to them. So um, it's an absolute pleasure to play with them and these guys are so great to play with as well. And your role's obviously changed a fair bit since you first got there, now across the, the half-back line. How are you finding the, the new role? Yeah, obviously an adjustment for me. Um, typically played front half footy um, for majority, you know, back at Subiaco as well. So um, working closely with Benny Jacobs, our defensive coach, and just trying to get that into my game. So that versatility, um, I think, is an asset of mine, and I'm just trying to bring that every week. Uh, and the consistency, I know the boys have alluded to it. It's the thing that's probably frustrated a lot of Essendon fans. How do you make sure that the Essendon team of tonight is the team that rolls up next week and the week after and so on and so forth? Yeah, that's the thing. We want to put our best foot forward every week. Um, we want to stick to our process, stick to our guns, and we know what we can do each week. So obviously the challenge is to bring that every single week and the consistency, but I have a really strong faith in Brad and this group to bring that every week. Uh, you're flying, Nick. Uh, congratulations on the win tonight. Uh, appreciate your time and all the best for uh, for next Friday night. We'll see you in Adelaide. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Nick Martin. Uh, I didn't mean that, by the way, that it's a surprise that he's an AFL footballer. He certainly looks right at home. I mean, oh, he certainly does. He's but... basically gone from playing State League footy. I think it was a SSP, so picked up in the, as a pre-season pick. Uh, played round one, yeah. kicked five goals on debut, and hasn't been out of the team oh, since. I love it. I love all those stories. Yeah. I, you know, I know... And, and the majority of our wonderful players who play it, they do come through the draft and do come through as their 18-year-old year and um, from all of those wonderful, you know, as, as a colleague of mine says, footy factories that pump yes. them out. Sure. But then we have these other terrific stories that, you know, a, a Tom Stewart, who's now a five-time All-Australian, comes from a, a local GFL club. Nick Martin is, a, is just a great story. And, mm. and it goes to show... And, and I even say it to my kids, I love telling them the stories of a particular player. I'm like, oh, hey, did you know that guy did this? Or this guy, you know, Tom Atkins played in yeah. for five years or whatever it was in the Geelong VFL and just forced Stephen Wells to draft him eventually. Um, just almost so that message to the, the kids out there who want to have that dream of going and playing AFL footy, it doesn't all have to be perfect in that one year as an 18-year-old where... It's draft or bust. Mm. You can still be building your football career. Uh, this is Friday Night Footy on ABC Sport. Corbin Middlemass, Kelly Underwood, Mick Moldhouse, Cameron Ling in the box. Uh, there is some breaking news unfolding everywhere, so we'll bring you up to date with it. We'll get some reaction from the Bulldogs room. Uh, there'll be a lot of fallout for the Dogs' loss tonight. They lost by 29 points, but they were 43 down in the last and at one stage conceded 10 out of 11 goals. Now, there is footage in the last quarter of Tom Liberatore collapsing for no reason, so he was running and basically fell to the ground. Darcy Parrish has run by him and helped pick him back up. Uh, He then went to run off the ground. The dog's doctors are across that something has happened there, so whether it's a delayed effects of a concussion or some kind of incident, but uh, a scary moment nevertheless. He he bounced back to his feet, he's conscious and continued on, but he he did collapse uh, running by himself at uh, at one stage, so um, Tim Hodges will be in the dog's room, so we'll hopefully have an update on that shortly, but uh, that is that's always a a scary moment. I mean, I, I I probably shouldn't even start guessing, but it may related to that, that tackle, hit. the the Jake Stringer one, where he was wide open and internal. Crunched him, it, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Well, completely fair by Stringer. Yeah. Mind you, did have a, he had a really big hit with Goldstein. Remember, they both put their heads yeah, down. Their heads down. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah. So, I mean, these things could happen for a number of reasons a number of times during a game of football, so we just hope for the best there. But, um, Not good. Not good. Can I talk about next week? Let's do it. I know there's a few more games to go this round, but for the first time, I'm confident to say next round is 
absolutely the most attractive round for some time. Oh, yep. So this this so, week I think we have we have two four and zero teams playing two zero and four teams. I think Geelong and North and Carlton Adelaide. This round, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but I'll just go through them. Saints and Bulldogs. That that is just going to be incredible. What happens there? Adelaide and Essendon. We'll see whether the Bombers can add on because they're going to be close to the eight right now and and Adelaide haven't won a game. So the likelihood is that Adelaide may still remain uh, winless. Yep. Carlton tomorrow. Colling- yeah. Collingwood Port. That'll t- we'll see. And that, that's over here. Carlton GWS. Yes. So you, we've, we've, we're talking some big, big uh, on, yeah, on form. Probably the two best teams in it right now. Yep. Yeah, but add on this with the form of the weekend, Brisbane Geelong. Geelong undefeated at the up, up, at Gabba. up at Gabba. Um, the blockbuster, West Coast and Fremantle. Don't laugh, Corby. Western Derby's always, always a yes, bit. Yeah. Uh, even the next game. I reckon this this will be a real test for both sides. Sydney Gold Coast. Yep. Yeah, because if if we think that Hardwick has made a lot of changes for a for a reason of blooding some players to bring them through slowly. Okay, the last game. What about the last game, Mick? Pump oh. that one up. Well, North Melbourne well there's gonna be a winner. <laughs> North Melbourne Hawthorne. There's gonna at the moment we've got four sides that haven't won a game. That's pretty evenly matched that, that whole round of When football. you have a look at that, good yeah. luck trying to pick Jeez. even half the winners. I've got one game next weekend. Guess which one it is? Oh, I'd say you have you. They would. They, I reckon without a doubt they give you North Melbourne Hawthorne. Done. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can bring some life to it. Uh, that no, I'm is, looking forward to it. That's the slate. <laughs> that's, that's the slate for next week. We still have uh, five games to come this weekend. Yeah, tomorrow, yeah. No, four, uh, six games to come this weekend. Uh, of course, starting tomorrow afternoon with GWS and St Kilda. Uh, then the Twilight Games, Carlton and Adelaide tomorrow night. We've got a double header: Port Adelaide versus Fremantle and uh, Gold Coast and Hawthorne. And then on Sunday, first up, it'll be Geelong versus North Melbourne at Kidinya Park. And to cap it all off, West Coast and Richmond. Um, news that broke during the game: uh, the Melbourne Grand Prix has been announced for March 16. 2025. So that's earlier. So March 16, the Melbourne Grand Prix 2025. Obviously raises questions as to what it means for footy. We'll, uh, we'll have the 0 0 layer. Yeah, and by <laughs> next year, I'd say Minus we'll, one. we'll yeah, be but... starting that 0 0 round about Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> yeah, maybe Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Why, 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 why exclude Christmas? You know, we play on, on Easter, on Good Friday, Easter Sunday. So, so the, the, the Richmond game didn't draw against it. So Richmond played Port. I think there was only about 30,000 there. Yeah. Uh, but there is the knock-on effect of footy gains from having the Grand Prix in town. So people that are here on the Thursday and Friday, generally well supported on those, so, those uh, dates. But wasn't it talked about that the AFL would hold their round on the long weekend in March? And oh. next year, that is um, the 10th of March, which would oh. be the weekend before. Right. So start, so, start again. Ooh. Yep. 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 So take, us, take advantage us. of the long weekend. Yeah, because it was the 7th of March this year, wasn't yep. it? It was the Thursday night, I'm pretty yes. sure. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yep. yep. And so I would imagine we'd be starting on the Thursday night. Monday's March 10, so it's about the 7th again. And what, well, play the front half of the round in in the northern states? Uh, yes. And then play... Um, an MCG blockbuster at some point, maybe Sunday night. On the holiday weekend. Yep. yep. Maybe even take advantage of the Monday. Maybe. Depends on TV yeah. ratings. Yep. I don't think... It's not a national public holiday. I think it's here in South Australia. It's oh, certainly not in WA. No, I reckon in SA it's in October. Oh, right. So yeah. it's not there either. Yep. yep. So you wouldn't play it on a Monday if that's the case. So Sunday yeah. night? Yep. Yeah. That's... And then you'd have the Grand Prix the following weekend. Mm. And I, then knock straight into that. That's an early start. I, I love Shorts football. T-shirts. I absolutely love football. But am I alone in saying this has felt strangely... Disjointed the oh, opening to this very. season. Total, I can't keep total. track of how many teams have played, how many games, yep. and are they if they are they four and one or are they three and? Well, well, where, where where played six but does it does it yeah. add to it or are you oh, just no. no? No, well, Mick, oh. you're a creature of habit and you like your routine, and so it's you know this sets terrible. up. Really? Yes, like you've talked to most people. There's, there's one the, the MCG. Yeah, we had a game last night. That's it. That's it. Yeah. No more. It's a national game, Mick. It's a national game. I understand that, but it's not a, it's not called foot, it's not f- f- called, uh, what do I say, cricket, I'm trying to divide cricket and football together. We are playing cricket ball in, in 
Yeah. A cricket season. <laughs> we, what happened to March? March used to be. Yeah. Hey, hey, try and do the women's game where you got the grand final on the first weekend in December. A six-month game has suddenly become a ten-month game with eight weeks off, and the AFL absolutely loves it. Yeah, because they, they want the headlines. They someone loves but, it, but they want that's it. They want to own the the headlines, own absolutely. the news. They want to as, dominate all year round, all year. except yeah. for basically Christmas January. Eve yeah. to about Australia Day. That's right. They're, they're happy to jump out for a little bit there. Yep, but. I don't think I personally don't think it's good for AFLW to have that type of season. I agree. Window, um, and and I think AFL, you talk about Mick being creature of habit. I, I still have a a rhythm to a season, Absolutely. and and the mid year buys is when I'm happy to be thrown out of whack a little bit and go, okay, yeah, they haven't had their buy yet. They've, yep. They're one down there that, but we're already doing it now, and yeah. I'm trying to marry up. Well, it um, cre- creates form lines intrigue, and... though. It's different. Okay. People hate different. Sure. Hey, I'm not saying I'm for it. I'm just saying we can't all be creatures of habit and things do have to change. Things do develop. I, I think the game is trending towards big moments, big um, uh, sort of big sporting moments is what they're trying to create. So they've created it with Gather Round. They've got yep. rivalry round there, starting with the Northern States. Um, I, I love that if you, have, rugby. if you have too many of those, they can risk diluting the big moment and just like, oh, one moment to another moment yep. to another moment. Yeah, of course. Uh, the and, and I suppose they're getting what they want. They're, they're, they're getting this um, almost crazy, hard-to-pick form line. Mm. Essendon, as I said, I said pre-match, I said if you go purely on last week's form line, dogs are going to smash them. Absolutely. And I think most people agreed with you. But you, you then go, okay, maybe Essendon can get, they can, they can have this really great effort and they knock off the dogs tonight, but then what's it mean for next week they play the Crows and then they've got a short week until they play against Collingwood. So they're kind of next. Well, St Kilda's got four games in 20 days. Well, see, how fair, how fair is that then? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. Uh, we're just getting vision on our monitors here of, uh, of Tom Libertore's incident where he was running uh, by and basically just uh, unaided, just collapsed. So uh, he was helped back up by Darcy Parrish, who signalled to the Medico, but looked like some kind of a, a delayed concussion incident. Corbin Middlemans, Kelly Underwood, Mick Moldhouse, Cameron Ling. Uh, just on the, the, the dogs, and we'll get some uh, reaction from Tim Hodges in the, the Bulldogs rooms in just a moment. Essendon by 29 points, by the way, full-time over the Western Bulldogs. Uh, the dogs were not good tonight. At one stage, they conceded 10 out of 11 goals. So we asked some questions pre-game, given the fact the team sheet came through and Bailey Dale was the sub. You were actually uh, quite supportive of Luke Beveridge making the necessary changes that he needed to to this team, or at least trying to find something different that takes them from a middle-of-the-road team to a top-four contender. We saw Caleb Daniel play in the reserves. We saw Rory Lobb play in the reserves. We saw Bailey Dahl as the sub. That is, that is a lot of your salary cap. So somewhere in the club through their list management and yeah, the, the way they construct their group, they've identified that these guys are worthy of a certain portion of the salary cap and yet at match committee, five rounds into the season, they've decided, hey, we're going to play two million bucks short of every other team and we're going to have them run around in the Magoos. Whoever decided that Rory Lobb should get any part of your salary cap was always <laughs> beyond me. Mm. I am not saying that with hindsight. I said it at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think everyone did. It, yeah. it was always going to be a flop. Well, he, he also wasn't what they needed. No. So it, was, it didn't really fit. No. No, and required. it wasn't. But... The other one is um, Caleb Daniel and Bailey Dale, and at different times this season, Jack McRae. And, and, yeah. They surely make them better here and now. Well, what, what I would love to know is how, how does it create a bit of disharmony in the group? Mm. Because how do those players react to it? And then what's the flow and effect with the teammates? It's a good question. It's a good question. It's one that is hard to answer not knowing the intimate locker room dynamics yep. of who there's quite influential people in the locker room there's there's the funny guy there's the quiet one they just love to hang around with there's the confidant who they yep. can talk to now if one of those happened to be um that and they're down and struggling themselves it has a flow and effect to other people in the locker and room and then you're seeing the young young punk come through and, and crack it today when he was told riley sanders that he had to go to the bench yeah and I, I, have a bit of a tantrum so I, there's this there's got to be issues in there. We heard over all summer long. I mean, there was a six-week review into how they ran their football operations and that there was reports of a um, uh, disharmony between Chris Grant and Luke Beveridge, which is why they brought your former teammate in Matthew Egan in. Yeah, who's a great operator who will have 
And he is, if you we'll go out and watch really training, he is eyes and ears everywhere. Yeah. He is running the show. Mm. So, so Selection has always been the one thing with Beveridge, though, that has been questioned from the outside, where people think, oh, I think he's a really good player and he's not playing, and guys come in and out all the time. Talk us through the push and pull of it, Mick, where you know, the list management, for example, so when you decide, hey, we're going to allocate our resources in this area, how much say does the senior coach get? And I understand that you need to have separate people in charge because you need to look after the long-term health of the club and not necessarily the yeah, here yeah, and now. Yeah. But it, it just seems bizarre well, it, for me that there would be that many resources where you essentially, you're not lockstep as a club and a footy department as to deciding you know, who needs the, the resources and why. Look, look Wiley, um, sorry, uh, what have we got here? We've got Daniel and Dale, are both 27, going 28 this year. So they're, they're young men yep. and they've got plenty of football. Jack McRae's 30. The way he's looked after himself, probably got three or four more years. He could play to 34 if he can hold form. So, yeah, Corby, you're, you're spot on. Coaches, you've got to be very careful about letting the coach have a lot of say because he's going to, he's one, he wants to win. Um, I've, I've, you know, look, it's hard. To, you don't want to push yourself up, but I always thought, I always looked at the what's in front of us. Mm. What do we need? Look, look, go back, way, way back. Drew Benfield. Went, Why would you get Drew Benfield? I got him because Dwayne Lamb was going to retire over the, over a two or three years. I needed a um, midfielder that could play for 10 years. Whether yep. I'm there or I'm not going to be there. So you go and get that player. He pl ends up being best and fairest and, and plays in two grand finals or two premierships. But you, you, you've got to have that. But you've also got to have someone who's got probably just one out, one back and can look over your shoulder and go, look, th this is where we're going to go. And Because I'll, I'll just feed you a picture. You put your side up that's there and... I always had the ages next to these players. And then you'd say, well, okay, where are we going to be next year? Well, he's gone, he's gone. Oh, there are holes there. We've, where's our seconds that they fill? So straight away you know that, you've, that somewhere along the line two years ago, you haven't filled those gaps. You, ideally, you should go, I can take him out, him out, and him out. And you know what? I've got a couple of players that are coming up underneath. They've already played 25 to 50 games. They take those spots. So you don't lose... The traction you've got. So if you can if you can be a, a senior coach and come away and go, I'm quite satisfied that no matter what player retires over the next five years, we've got him covered, or we've got the potential to get get them covered. It might have been say Dacos and Dacos being father son, do some work on them, make sure they do come to you because we needed to replace Pendlebury and and uh, side bottom at some stage over the, over the. So they've done that. We need a fullback, Darcy Moore. So when you look at the dogs, you've got to be saying, well. You know, when they when they got Darcy, why would we get Lob? Mm. Yeah. Why would we, why would we get that? So so to me, whatever money they've spent there, it's it's. I wouldn't be too harsh on Lob here because it's not his fault. Yep. But Lingy said, why did they get him? I say, I just can't believe they got him. Yeah. Because there was always going to be a takeover by Darcy. We knew it was father son. At some stage, you put up for, for 12 months because this kid's going to be here for 15 years. It's a zero-sum game too, so the money you spend on him, you can't spend on someone else. That's so it. It's That's not it. just that it's a list spot and he's, he's playing in the reserves. But let's go back to these two blokes, Dale yep. and, um, and, and Daniels. What, what you've got there is players that have been all Australian, part of your best side. They, they're not old. They're young. Mm. They've got swung around a little bit in their positions. Clearly, Luke has looked at it and gone... You know what? This, they're only going to get us to ninth. Mm. Who goes? But but who's he? Who's he brought in instead of them? So well, when Ed, Caleb Ed, Daniel was playing down back, I mean, he's brought in a. They Lockie. brought him in the middle last year, though. Yeah, so but they've got Lockie, the half back line. So I don't know what... a couple of battlers in Oscar Baker and Lockie Bramble are in no, the side. No, I, I reckon it's more who you're giving key that key, like almost. I hesitate to use it because um, I know our listeners don't like it, but almost your quarterback at halfback. Oh, yeah. You're almost handing the ball to him. That's now Ed Richards. Yeah. Okay, it, right. It was Caleb Daniel or Bailey Dale. It's like, here, you're the beautiful kickers of the ball. Yep. We'll, we'll give it to you as often as we can and you use it. Now they're giving it to Did they go off Ed the ball Richards. so quick? Have they gone off the ball? Those Dale really, has he dropped his 
output from two years ago to this year, or from, uh, say, last year to this year? No, Bailey Dale's one tonight was a, a shock for me. I could see Caleb Daniels one just... He was just coming off the boil a little bit. I still think he's got lots of but good footage. But is that because in. he was moved from half-back to mid, though? Because yep, he went from half-back setting play up to mid and yep. become a pea shooter. He, and, and I, he, and I, as a midfielder, uh, I think he accumulated possessions. That, that's where I'm coming yeah, from. Yeah. That's where I'm coming from. Um, so I reckon he was... So he was he was taken away from a, a strength and popped into yep. a position where he just chased spots. So I guess it's positions. the other thing, like you're saying, Lingy, if you if you want to give the key role to someone else, then the question is, what roles can those other guys play? That's and right. that's basically what he hasn't had an answer to at the moment. Is he doesn't know what to do with Caleb Daniel if he can't play him. Yeah. In that in that old position. No, that's right. And and I think if you go into the midfield, you well, Bonton Pally and Libra have got two of the spots locked up. Yep. Smith got injured. And, and Bailey Smith would be one he'd love to have. Sanders has taken a spot in there. Well, he wants games in the Sanders. Yeah, he, of he course. Goes, if I can, if I can, this is about trying to get back up to the top. Yeah. Um, not just being happy with, oh, maybe we sneak into eighth. He needs 17, 18 games in Sanders this year, another 18 to 20 in him next year, and then away we go with Sanders and, and we're working towards him having big impacts on games. Um. I even watching a little bit Riley um, Riley West spent some time in the centre bounces. Now part of that was messaging, I reckon. You guys aren't getting the job done. Mm. I'm going to give a guy who's probably been know, knowing with Scotty too being the dad, banging on Bevo's door all the time. When can I play midfield? I want to play midfield. Let me let me in the midfield. He goes, well, there you go. They they're not doing it. I'll give you a chance in there. And Cody Waitman's probably said, give me little runs in there. Yeah. So they gave him one. So th- that's what he's trying to do. Mm. A lot of Bulldogs fans listening to me right now would be saying, yeah, but yep. surely Bailey Dale, Caleb Daniel and Jack McRae playing traditional midfield makes us better now. And then... But the murders. Them, yeah, them all playing better football. Let's get the growth from Sam Darcy up forward. Maybe oh, I like the idea of Norton playing centre-half back now while Darcy's up forward. Let's get the improvement round them mm. and we're back in the mix again. Give us a shot at it. So that's a fair enough argument by the Dogs fans when they're in this position, dropping a game like they did tonight. Uh, from a coaching aspect, Mick, a lot of the conversation around Luke Beveridge, so he's been there since 2015 now, is that he's a funky coach. That There's often sort of puzzle. Do you see that in his coaching? I mean, that they've never been, even when they played in the two grand finals, they came from the lower end of the yeah, eight yeah, to make yeah, it. Yeah. They've never finished I, top I, I'm not a... I'm not a coach. I try not to be a coach knocker because I know how difficult it is. And the other thing is he knows more about his team than I'll ever know because I, I'm outside sitting sitting right outside looking in and, and I don't see him train. I don't see the personalities. You watch them play and you think, well, oh, you know, I've made, I said tonight, you know, I'd play Norton certainly further up the ground, which creates more opportunity for him and perhaps open, whatever, whatever. Mm. So I'm, I'm loath to ever knock a coach because we don't know. But... On match day, uh, but I do, I, I, there's th- certain things I do know without having to be in a, in a club. If you make some changes that are unpopular, you've really got to back it up with either victory or someone comes in and, and they go, oh, that's why. Because you, the, the, it's the chemistry that wins you games of football. It's the chemistries, the chemistry mix that gets you enough wins and then you go forward and you win a premiership because everyone gels together. Now, if there's a little bit of suspicion, if uh, players are dropped for a reason that you're not quite sure about and hasn't been explained properly and he's been around for a long time, you start to get, you start to go into a bit of a shell. I don't say you get narky, but you go into a bit of a shell thinking, wow, I'm not sure now, you know, if they've dropped him and dropped him and dropped him, what was the criteria? But they've kept that bloke in and kept him in um, and they're not playing any better, so... There becomes a disillusionment, if you like, within the, within the club itself. And when you've mm. got second guessing, guess what? You don't play your best footy. Mick, I, question for you as, as a coach. How hard is it to, to, to not get stuck in, oh, we are so close? So at the halfway through the third quarter of the 2021 grand final, the yeah. B- Bulldogs are winning that flag yeah. and then just got blown out of the water by some of the best football you'll see mm. by the Demons. Has it taken from that moment to almost just at this start of this season for Luke Beveridge to finally say, oh, actually, I can't 
go with those players then. He, he would have been telling himself, we were that close. Yeah. Oh, I can just, uh, we can get there. We can get there. Uh, we can head inside uh, the Bulldogs rooms. Uh, we mentioned that the Tom Libertore incident. Uh, he's going to join us right here on ABC Sports. So the uh, Bombers have won by 29 points over the Dogs. Tom Libertore is in the Bulldogs rooms with our own Tim Hodges. Hodgey. Corbin, Tom Libertore has been good enough to join us down in the rooms. Uh, Tom, can we just ask about you first? There was a scary moment in the last few minutes with your health. Uh, everything OK? No, nah, everything's good. Um, yeah, I just sort of came up and, and uh, lost balance in my ankle. So I tweaked my ankle about... Uh, about just started last quarter, so then that sort of relayed when I got up, I fell back down, but it's, yeah, all good. The TV camera's captured, I think everyone's quite worried about no, it. No, no, yeah, but no, all good. No, no, all fine. No uh, sign, no symptoms and full recollection everything, so all good. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty nice of Darcy Parrish, who sort of grabbed you in the end and, and straightened you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Might have, might have saved me a week or two. Tell us about the meeting with Bevo. How was it? It was a, a really disappointing night. Yeah, it was. Um... Yeah, we are. Just didn't did massive pressure. We yeah, big missed opportunity. I think. Um, yeah, we sort of played in their hands. We didn't do the basic stuff right, and um, I mean, we didn't take a chance to a degree. But yeah, the game was too far gone. How was the coach? Uh, no, he was fine. He was um, yeah, just disappointed, yeah, um, frustrated, and disappointed. So. And you and Bont and all the leaders look just. There was it sort of seemed like real anger on the bench in that last quarter. Uh, no, it wasn't too bad. It was, yeah, it was just just frustration around um, how we didn't we didn't start the game well enough. So we just needed to, um, yeah, start on a um, with a bit more physicality, I think, and and that sort of yeah hurt us in the long run. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Thank you, Corbett. Thanks, Hodges. Uh, Tim Hodges in the rooms with Tom Libertore. Oh, oh. I'm surprised we got to speak to him, to be honest. Well, that's, uh, that's him with. Uh, we're just with looking at the replay now. Tim where he, he that's, that's clearly, not an ankle. That's not an ankle. He's away from the footy. He's in the centre of the ground, and he loses balance. Balance and maybe consciousness for yeah. a, for a split second. And he f- he's hunched over, and he falls and sort of headbutts the turf. Mm. And Parrish comes along and grabs his jumper to pull him up and call for immediate help. So so talk us through that vision. So he says, "I tweaked my ankle, Darcy, no. help me up." Yeah. So he's he's had a hit there. Yep. He's had a hit with Goldstein. And he's been crunched in a tackle with Stringer. And off the ball, he's hunched over. And he loses his balance and he falls to the turf yep. as if he just blacks out momentarily before yeah. Parrish just pulls him back up and then he's with it. So he's concussed. I've, I've, he shouldn't be talking to the media. <laughs> uh, it's extraordinary. Knowing Libba, he would want to be just deflecting. deflecting Absolutely. That's, that's what he's doing. And he, he's such a... just a. He, Quiet guy, doesn't like talking much and just wants to compete and get on with things. Um, Maybe the doctors aren't aware of that yet. Oh, they'll be aware of that. Surely. He's passed out behind play. There's no way knowing he'll play next week. No. It doesn't look good at all. That that vision looks quite scary. Uh, It also, even... I must add to it the way Anson said when you asked about Darcy Parrish... Sorry, Hodgie asked about Darcy Parrish that he said, I might have saved me one or two weeks... That was an answer of someone who's got that in their mind. Yeah, yeah, and and trying to deflect from I don't want to be classed as concussed because um, I, I want to play, and Liber always wants to play. Um, I would assume, knowing football clubs, that well, I hope he will be monitored uh, very, very closely over oh, the next sure twelve will. hours. Yeah, yeah. I don't think the dogs doctors are. Generally, all over. Most most clubs are. That you know, that's we've had the issue with um, the two lads from Port Adelaide, which was a probably the the indicator to all and sundry that 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 can't take place. And that's why this he will come. Under, it'll be under massive scrutiny, regardless of what he says about his ankle. Um, it, it's, it's it's about the health of the player. And it, I don't know if you've ever been in a position like that, where you have these little moment, little you know, blank spots that you don't. And you think, you know, I've just hit the deck or whatever the case may be. You really don't remember what took place. You, you, you sort of get up and you think, you know, what happened? I, you know, I, I know I got cleaned up with a teammate. We both smashed heads together. And you think, oh, you got up and you, and you played. And you think, but then someone tells you, oh, you know, the game was stopped. You were on the ground for, you know, minutes and this sort of stuff. You can't remember that. No. And, and then you try to play, which we did in those days. You got up and you, you played on, yeah. Yeah. Which, which was 
quite ridiculous, but that's what that's what took place. So we, we are net, we've come a long way from that, and what we want to do is protect the player. Uh, the quote from Tom Liberatore, everything is good. I sort of came up and lost balance of my ankle. I tweaked my ankle just at the start of the last quarter. So, you know, uh, I relayed when I got up and fell back. I'm all fine, no symptoms and full recollection. He missed games last year because of a concussion. Well, see, why would he say that about an ankle? What, mm. You forget that you've twisted an ankle, do you? Well, so, yeah. so, so he's really, he's, he's, he's put the whole, he's put his whole lot into... You, I know what you guys think. I've got concussion. So he's trying to protect that. And, and it's admirable, but the simple fact is we would be neg- himself, negligent yeah. if we do not have medical people or the league saying, listen, we're here to protect you, mate. The, you know, life's Cause I, I a long been, life in front of you. I also immediately worried about any internal injuries from that Big tack- tackle from Stringer yeah, too. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, it's uh, he will be closely monitored. Obviously, we'll find out more from the from the club, hopefully tomorrow. It was Essendon's night. They won by 29 points. The game was still live at three-quarter time when they led by 14, and then an explosion from the Bombers, uh, really in a... Uh, a 11-minute period where they kicked five unanswered goals and really burnt the game from that point on. At one stage, they kicked 10 out of 11 goals in the match. The votes in the ABC Footballer of the Year, Cameron Ling. These were quite hard to give, I must admit, because I thought it was a true team effort and they, they took them apart. So I don't know if it'll, uh, you guys will necessarily completely agree with me on this one. Mm, okay. But uh, I'm going to give one vote to Zach Merritt just for the consistency of his performance, had the 27 disposals and just worked really hard. Again, the leadership throughout the game. Only one clearance. Up. Yeah, which yeah, a little which bit under. Unusual. I gave two votes to, to Kyle Langford as a bit of a different one. Kicked the three goals, but I thought at times his work in the air to compete and create was just excellent. Uh, and earlier, he, he kicked the three goals in the in oh, two in the first half and then one in the third quarter when the game was there to be won. Um, so I thought he was very good. And I'm going to go three votes. To and I, I know a favourite of one one particular person in this commentary box, Sam Durham, kicked a goal, found a heap of the footy, and just what he added to that midfield. And I reckon he played on Marcus Bont and Pally for chunks of time. Yeah. And the Bont had seventeen touches and had no influence he on the game. He had six clearances too. Yeah. So I thought. And I'd he give went him over three. and shook um, Bont and Pally's hand right at the start before the first bounce, which was a nice sign. And then he takes the points. Three votes for the crowd. 50,144 here tonight at Docklands. Wow. First AFL crowd of 50,000 at this venue since 2013. Oh, uh, it's a great note in which to finish. Three for Durham, two for Langford, one for Merritt. It was all Essendon by 29 points. Mick, I'll see you on AFL Saturday tomorrow. Looking forward to it, Corby. we got a bit to discuss. Brad Scott is our special guest. Uh, AFL Saturday and the rest of the AFL coverage on the ABC Sport Network tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your night. The Bombers by 29. Here's my top footy tip for the season. You can get your games live and ad-free on the ABC Listen app. I know, right? AFL, NRL, men's, women's. Whatever footy you're after, we've got you covered. Every goal, try, mark and tackle. Called by ABC Sports expert commentary team. This season on the home of 100% pure footy. The ABC Listen app. ABC Sport Digital Radio. Your home of cricket. ABC Listen. Podcasts, radio, news, music and more. Up until a couple of days ago, I didn't know that this was happening. Just to kind of just go over the result. Uh, in conclusion, uh, Ipe has been stealing money from...